Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew and Atari Age Day 2022 Fall Edition, day number two. <laughs> Welcome back to everybody uh, who was here yesterday. And if you weren't here yesterday, um, it's on Twitch and it'll be on YouTube tomorrow. If you missed day one, we talked with a whole bunch of developers. 12 of them, in fact. Yes. Well, not 12 of them. We did 12 games. Some of them had multiple games, That's just true. like it's how it's going to be today. We're going to be mm -hmm. talking with more developers. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And playing more games. And playing more games. Games, games, games. Specifically, Tanya's going to be playing more games. <laughs> I'll be talking to the developers, so she gets the fun job. I do. I get a fun job, too. You, you get a fun job, but it does uh, affect your voice after a while. Yeah, it's. I think it's fully restored again. Is it? Is yeah, it, it yeah, sounds yeah, pretty strong. Okay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Six hours isn't too bad. <laughs> yeah. When it's 12 times two days or like all day, um, it gets a bit much. Yes. Yes. But yes. Uh, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of people. We're going to talk to a whole bunch of games uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got games for the 2600. We've got 7800 games and we've got Jaguar games today that we're going to be looking I'm at so and excited. playing. And I've got a whole bunch of questions for people. Mm -hmm. And we've got the cats here. Hi, cats. There's one black cat crying. There's one behind him? us. Yeah, he's he crying for no reason, as for per usual. Close-up. <laughs> yeah, approximately 12 hours total. So <laughs> thank you for everybody for sticking with this. Hopefully oh it's entertaining. God. Cat. Catnip. Oh, we got something for Christmas for these cats. Oh, we did. Don't tell them. Yeah. But it's related to catnip, and yeah. uh, hopefully they're excited about it. Um, we don't have catnip with us, unfortunately. No. So those those buttons. We won't do have work. treats. We do have treats. You we should could, give them some treats right we give now. Them, we'll we'll give them some tr some treats. I shortly. Would, yeah, I would. Um, well, you do finish your intro first. Yeah, it's kind of finished. Uh, <laughs> we'll give them treats. Maybe we'll just point it to the floor because they were yeah. having trouble getting the concept of hitting the bell on the table. They didn't. They were. They, they were very very confused. They didn't quite understand it, no. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but I do have. Check I, check check. Hold on. There I will go. grab the bell and. Um, yeah, you're gonna. Don't ring it. They'll go nuts. No, no. Oh, it's right there. Okay, right that's here. good. So we'll put it meow, on the floor pet next me, to meow. there. Okay. And then and then can you? Oh, right now. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And then you can point the camera at them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't even like figured out. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Um, that's a messy looking. You can thing. hold it just for the time being. Yep. It is a messy room. You can now see. Hit the bell, cat. How about that? Yeah, sure. Let's get that in focus. Um, I'm gonna have to, that's Struggling not... Struggling to focus. Oh, Cat, what? ring the bell. There you go. I'll just hold it. They're very confused. Oh, <laughs> Oh, good I heard kitty. one. One second, I'm gonna switch over to it. Uh, there we go. I don't know why it's out of focus so much. He already knocked it under a table. Good job, Cat. <laughs> well, gotta feed him another one. Yeah, hold on. What is happening with the focus? <laughs> Come on. Jumbling around too much. Okay, I'm gonna cross in front here. Okay, kittens, here. One for you. There, now it's in focus, finally. Oh yeah, my don't, God, the black cat don't throw them over them. there. Or do you take over them over? Here. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Ring the bell, cat. Good kitty. There you go. Great cat, do you want one? You seem left out. Yeah, there, you eat that one. That's too far for the camera. No, no, I know. I'm just making sure he gets one. The black cat's... <laughs> nothing but floof. Yeah, nothing but the black cat right now. Day's now complete. <laughs> well, for the cats it is anyway. Yeah. They're they're happy. They're like, yeah, I'm done. Well, we don't want them uh, interfering because no. if we don't feed them right now, they're going to definitely be interfering. Okay. Yesterday we had some uh, earpiece problems, um, but today we're wired up at the... Uh, at the suggestion, it's one right there. At the suggestion of one of the viewers, so that we don't run out of uh, yeah. run out of batteries and there's no issues. Hopefully, yeah, there won't be any issues. Six hours is a long stream for a Bluetooth headset. There you go. One Giant minute. cat attack. <laughs> there's one more. You gonna get a black kitten? Good kitty. Good oh, cat. Poor Atari. Didn't oh, get I'll give, I, I gave Atari a couple. 
Okay, good. He just, it's its too tight a spot, I think, for both of them. And the black cat is irate, so. <laughs> irate? Irate. He's like, give me, give me all the treats. All the treats. I'm going to give you a few more, okay? Not Let me you. get the oh, webcam set gracious. back up. How did I cut this? Oh, I know. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. Okay, so. Let's uh, get started. This is already being <laughs> the a problem. The cat's been placated. I don't know what's up with that camera. This is already being a problem. I know. Uh, okay. Before we've even started. It'll figure it out. There we go. <laughs> so the first uh, person that we're going to be talking to is Dionoid, Dion yes. Olsthorn with Load Runner. And in honor of that, I am uh, wearing a Load Runner T-shirt, and I remember I bought this in like 2020 mm. in anticipation of Load Runner. Nice. And then I couldn't wear it for two years on the show <laughs> because uh, it hadn't been uh, kind of revealed yeah. fully yet. Um, but I was fully prepared when oh. we first debuted it on the show. Clearly, very excited about uh, uh, about yeah. this game. Oh yeah, Load Runner, um, amazing. Dion, I think he's. He, He's all he good. He us recently, so hopefully we can connect with him. Excellent. Let's do that. Right. <clears throat> oh. Okay. The laptop is... Trouble? Frozen? Frozen, but I okay, will get that... Okay, hold on a sec. <laughs> get that uh, restarted. There yeah. we go. There we go. Excellent. Hello, Dion. Hey, hey, hello. Hey. Hey, we're yeah, good. Working. Excellent. Good. Anybody, if anybody, uh, if you can hear him echo, let me know and I will fix that just in case it's echoing. How are you doing today, Dion? Yeah, doing fine. Thank you. Excellent. Thank How are you, you doing? for coming on. It was a long, oh, long really show good. yesterday, we're refreshed. right? We're refreshed again, I okay. think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, mostly. We're ready for another six hours six of interviews hours, and right. gaming. Uh -huh. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's get Load Runner out of the box here and check it out. Let me switch over to the webcam here. Nice. Get that centered. Get that up a bit. Oh, over. Come on. There we there go. There we go. Okay, let's open this up. Uh, so tell us a bit about the... Uh, the artwork and the cover and um, just the look of it. It's its quite a striking cover. Right. And uh, quite menacing and uh, mm -hmm. really conveys the, the feel of the game and the urgency to run away from the attacking people. And I never envisioned them to look like that uh, yeah. from the game. They don't quite, quite look as menacing in the game as they do there, but it really does reflect like the urgency of like, oh my God, they're coming for us. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's really nice. Uh, by the way, this is the first Land time I'm seeing the box in real life, like real oh, physical wow. form. Wow. Oh, great. Excellent. So let's uh, check out the back then. It's got some screenshots yes. of some of the uh, beautiful levels. The eagle, the circle. Circle is a hard level. Right. Oh my god. Yeah. So uh, all the all while. the artwork is done by by David Exton, um, and he did an excellent job on on this one. Um, oh, he did. Yeah. And I, I I remember we had some some discussions on on um, what, what kind of uh, theme we're looking for. Like it's it's load runner, so you know you have the load runner guy, and they're like the right. the robots. Um, and, and David basically had an idea of, of putting, he, he wanted to do, do something a bit different than putting like the hero in front and then the, the enemies right. or the robots behind it. Um, so he, he kind of switched it around saying, okay, let's, let's do the bad guys on the front or, uh, and, and then the, the hero just, just behind that. Which makes it even so, more more threatening or more more dark. Ooh. So the robots um, have they been de depicted like that uh, in any other media or like the red color and uh, the mechanical look to them, or was this kind of a creation? Yeah, it, it's. I, I remember I have the 
maybe I can show it even. Um, oh no, I have the the uh, the MSX version, um, and of course in the the original uh, Apple II version of Load Runner, the 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 guards or the robots are red. Um, okay, so that does stem from another uh, another Load Runner game. Right. So. Yeah. So let's take a look at the manual here. And it's got uh, the same cover and you get actually a little bit extended, a little bit more of the robot on the uh, on the manual there. You can see kind of the legs coming out. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you really get a, a good sense of the environment that uh, the hero is playing in. It's kind of a futuristic, constructed, uh, concrete area and you can see where it's kind of fallen away almost or or not finished there yeah yeah so cool. i i really like that for you know back in the 80s when you were playing these games and you got either on the side of the cabinets yeah the artwork or on the boxes and you got more of a sense of what the game was really uh supposed to represent and uh, in our minds, this is what the game looked like back then. We we're like, oh my God, the graphics and uh, on the system. Um, so it really helped you envision what the game, uh, what, what the game is supposed to look like, right? Right, right. Yeah, and, and, and by the way, what you're seeing, th this is all something that, that David come, came up with. And um, one of the first things you read in the, in the manual is that this is about the, the bungling uh, empire basically which is like an evil empire uh, of some of the early uh, protobond games and right. what David did is really uh, dig into that whole story because there, there are different uh, multiple games from uh, the old age which uh, has have, have a, the theme of the, the bungling empire uh, so one of the other games was choplifter where right and okay. it has it had a story also about that evil, the same evil empire. Um, and when I look at the front of the artwork, I can see like the the big constructions you have in uh, in Choplifter, like the big the big buildings where all the, the the people are. You have to rescue. It kind of reminds me of those buildings. So he he kind of tied things together there, which is which I think is a, a nice touch. Oh yeah, and. Uh, I, I saw somebody mention like the the game Raid on Bungling Bay as well. Is that tied into this at all? It's 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 one of the stories from the the Broderbond, Broderbond games, which all tie in that that same evil empire. Yeah. Oh, look at the back of the manual. There's the um, cool. <clears throat> yeah. Box of gold with the Atari Age symbol on it. That <laughs> is gorgeous. Yes. That is excellent. That looks really really nice. And there's also something else that comes with the game because the artwork is so gorgeous you get a poster with it let's see oh. If I can... oh that's not gonna work uh let's try and get this in full i think you've shifted the camera there a little. oh the cats the cats are all over it cats get the hell out of there <laughs> bad cats oh let's shift this up okay there that's really wow. cats are... really nice yeah okay that, that's even a surprise trouble. to me basically oh my I didn't know that there was like get a out of here post cats <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry the cats are all uh, one of the treats got under the under the table and now the cats are c continuously <laughs> trying to get it out and they keep moving the uh, the camera cord yeah it looks really really good so you did this was a surprise to you you didn't know that there no, was going to be no a i didn't know that oh it's gorgeous really yeah, really me, nice yeah. beautifully beautiful artwork um David does a, a beautiful job of representing the games. And I remember um, Robot City, I think he did as well, uh, for Thomas Yench's game. Yeah, I just yeah, loved yeah. The, the the foreboding sparseness of that cover, and, and it really works well with Load Runner as well. There we right. go. Yeah, yeah and, and okay. David also worked on Robotron. Uh, yes. Um, so he worked on, on, I think, quite a uh, quite a few games. Oh, I gotta find that treat. Oh my god, I can't find it. They can smell it. <laughs> yeah, he worked on quite a few uh, covers for games, and yeah, I really love his artwork. It's it's really gorgeous. Um, 
What was, oh, Thrust asked, which, which game was first with the logo incorporated? That's a very good question. Um, probably one that David, probably one that David <laughs> did, Al says. Yeah. Well, you'd have to trace that back then. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get to the game. Let's start it up. Yes. Ready. And it's got a nice uh, uh, Atari Age tune there and Tozai Games. And we get the full version now. Excellent. So you released a demo of this game online so people can check out what it's about, how it plays. Uh, three level demo, is yep. that correct? Yeah, it is. Three yep. levels, like randomly picked from, from the game. Well, actually, the, right. the, the final level of the demo is an, an uh, additional level that's not in the, in the full game. Um, oh, but, that's a nice yeah, bonus. That's a nice <laughs> bonus. But in, in this game, you have like 150 like original levels. Um, yep. They were the original from, 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 from the original game, right. you mean, yep. right? Yeah. Um, so uh, getting the IP rights to port a game can sometimes be uh, challenging, but sometimes it's possible to make it happen, like Boulder Dash and now your new game, Load Runner. Yep, yep. Um, you obviously have an excellent history of making quality games and Load Runners, no exception, of course. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, so when you approach Tozai with Load Runner, how long... How far along in the development were you with the game? Yeah, so I approached um, uh, Tozai, who, who are the IP owners of, of Loadrunner, um, when I had like a kind of a, a, a playable demo, I would say. Um, so not all the levels were there, and there were still some, some rough edges here and there, uh, which I know didn't quite work, but. Um, I, I contacted them in 2020, I think early 2020, or, or no, I think it was in, in not early, like June 2020. Um, right. And um, um, it, it, it took some time to uh, uh, basically uh, uh, convince them that this was an, 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 a game which going to be like a good port on the, on the Atari. Um, so initially right. they, they were like a, a bit hesitant saying, okay, we, we don't, it's like an old system. Of course, Tosai is still, uh, they're, they're really good in, in uh, getting load run on all, all the, the modern systems, like it's running on, on uh, um, a Switch and, and, and Xbox and, right. and PlayStation. Um, so they're very active in keeping right. the load runner right. name going. And they're, they're yeah. protective of, or, of their IP, which makes all sense and they're doing it quite well so uh, uh good job on on, the, on them um <laughs> so I, I think this was a bit of a surprise for them like okay what system is it atari <laughs> does it exist anymore um <laughs> right yeah and and uh what i also did is is uh, uh, uh well uh, sometime later i included some videos and some screenshots and I think that that got them convinced that it's going to be a game, a game that that looks good on the Atari. Um, right. Because at first, when you mention the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, people are saying, "Okay, that's that's an old system. You can play Pong and and tanks." <laughs> um, <laughs> right. That that's not going to work for Load Runner. But um, yeah, because people, uh, a lot of people, really do associate uh, the Twenty Six Hundred of. Outside of the community, of course, yeah, um, yeah. with with the older games and the original run of games, and especially the the earlier games that come out. So, uh, just approaching somebody with the name Atari Twenty Six Hundred, uh, you need to really kind of pr prove that. Oh my goodness, this can is more than capable of doing a lot of amazing things. Right, right. Um, so, I, I I would expect that um, showing this version of the game is uh more than able to convince them because this this looks g wonderful and right. is comparable to any of the uh 8-bit versions that were released back in the day yeah and 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 i have to say i i was kind of lucky to um because i was was playing with the idea of building load runner for the atari 2600 like uh, a couple of months uh in in before i i met uh, uh, John Champau at the, the uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Um, right. And I, I just, I, I was working on, on getting some, some kernels done to just to display the game, and it wasn't yeah. working for me. It, I, I had to make so much concessions that the game wasn't playable right. anymore. 
Um, oh, right. And and the good thing is, I, I met John Champo, and he, he kind of said, well, okay, I've, we, we've got 50 minutes, just uh, we go and sit down. <laughs> I He had this laptop with, with him. He opened his laptop and said, okay, I'm going to show you how um, uh, working <laughs> with, with the ARM development, how it works, where, where, the, right. where the magic is, basically. Uh, right, because there's a lot going on on each line here. There is, um, and, and the good thing with is the, it's, with it's the playfield and the multiple it's still characters. A, a real Atari game, I feel like, because it's 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 still limited by the the TIA. If you want to draw stuff, uh, the yeah. the uh, 6502 still has to do all the communication with the TIA to get to get stuff on the screen. Um, so yep, I'm yep. I'm really happy with the result and and the way I could well get this game working on the Atari. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and if anybody has any questions in the chat, just put question in all capital letters and uh, we'll be alerted to it. Yeah, you can't dig at the bottom of ladders. Yeah, <laughs> you found that out pretty quick. Um, so before I beta tested your port of Load Runner, I found the game to be quite challenging, probably because I didn't fully understand it. Um, and I always ended up forced into a corner, trapped by the enemies every time I played it, unfortunately. So this is one of the games where the more I played it, the more I enjoyed it. Can you talk a little bit about your history with Load Runner and which system you first yeah. played it on? Yeah, yeah. So Load Runner is, is one of my favorite games from my youth. Basically, when I was young, I had the Commodore 64 and... Which, yeah. which I think was the system you also had when you were young. And, and exactly, Load Runner yeah. was one of the early games, um, yeah. but it was one of the really nice games. Uh, I immediately uh, loved the game because it was like a, a clever combination of puzzling and, and, and still uh, some arcade yeah. action where you have to uh, outrun your enemies and stuff like that. Um, yes, yeah, it's a good mix of <laughs> right into the hole. <laughs> a good mix of oh, yeah. of puzzle and action. Like um, I think Tanya enjoys the puzzle aspect of it, and I enjoy the puzzle and action yeah. aspect of it because you really have to figure out how to manipulate uh -huh. the enemies exactly. more than anything else. That's the biggest factor. It, to, to playing the game and understanding the game is understanding how to make them go up and down the ladders, make them come towards you, make them go away from you. Right. Uh, especially in the more complex levels. Yeah, one of the cool things is the, the AI in this game. Um, and I, right, I, yes. And I was really lucky that um, in, in the 1980s there was a book um, about learning the, the C language with the source code of Load Runner. And they used the actual right. source code of the actual Load Runner game in that book. Um, Do you know where they got that source code? Was it like directly from yeah. the developer? Yeah, yeah, it was like the official code for the game. If it, it was like oh, licensed nice. by uh, Brodobond, Brodobond uh, in that days. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so that and, and so, that, so you played it on the C64. I'm using the, the actual AI code, the original <laughs> code. The, Oh, and that's and that's great. And obviously, there's no problem with that because you have an official version of this game. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's th yeah. Because I I know there's uh, maybe some people want to recreate the games from scratch so that yeah. there's no original code used. But that's obviously not even a concern uh, right. with this game. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how you designed the levels in the game? Uh, do you have a full-on level designer, or did you code them more something closer to like a text editor? Right. No, I I do I do use like an an open source uh, uh, tile map editor. Um, okay. So basically, what I did is uh, I took the original levels and kind of migrated them or, or adapted them to the, uh, the the limited size of the uh, uh, the game I was using. Like the 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 map is just a little bit. I think it's it's really a bit smaller and and something shorter, and I use like right. an, an open source uh, level editor just to get all the levels in. Um, yeah. And what what I do that I, I have some utilities to uh, read those levels and translate them and uh, basically compact them and, and make them really small into a like a, a, a byte arrays, uh, and that's that's how the the game is stored in the cartridge. 
Um, right. So you had to you had to compress the levels not only vertically but also horizontally as right. well. Correct. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and I got I got a lot of help from uh, Thomas Jens on on that one. Um, right. I think Thomas is kind of the, the guy you go to when you have a lot of data in your <laughs> game or a lot of uh, uh, levels which you want to uh, uh, compress. Um, right. He's a lot of uh, he has got a lot of experience with that. So it went a lot of back and forth with all kind of ideas we had with run length encoding and Hoffman encoding and. Um, he, he yes. came with something that's called conical Hoffman encoding. I didn't know about it, um, but I found it <laughs> yeah. really um, easy to, to decompress levels that way and compress it. And that really helped. Um, right. And and I I mean, you went into it a bit in our interview at PRGE, but uh, the con conical um, encoding is not, you know, straight across, then the next line, then the next line. Um, because of the way these levels yes. are designed, they're both a lot of repetition vertically, but also horizontally. So it's a combination, uh, the encoding and compression is a combination of both, right. where it's going around the uh, display in a, almost a circular pattern, right. right? Yeah, yeah, and that's that's one of the things for, for the, the run length encoding, basically, where you uh, kind of instead of uh, uh, encoding every tile on the map, you say, well, horizontally, I have like five, uh, uh, a ladder, which is not, not a ladder, but uh, like a, a rope, which is five long. Then you can say, instead of five times the rope, you can say, do rope five times. So you, you spend yeah. less bytes that way. Um, and, and for example, say on this level, you can see on the left hand side, there's a ladder that goes almost from the top to the bottom. Right. And that can be stored in, you know, let's say two bytes or whatever. One byte for the number of ladder pieces and then the, the, the ladder indicator itself. Exactly. And exactly so, that. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, looking at this level, the way I encode it is like spiral going from the outside. So you can see the, the bottom line and, and the letter on the left is indeed um, just with, with a few bytes, I, I, I could encode that. Um, yeah, and and people are probably going to be very also impressed with the screen the screen wipe as well. So maybe just talk briefly about the uh, how you did the screen wipe, and it looks like a a circular wipe yeah. going in and out. Yeah, I I think they call it like iris in, iris out in the yeah. in the film in industry, and that's what the iris original wipe, game yeah. also has. Um, so that, yeah. that was one of the things that I really wanted to have in the game. Like the original had the the, the, the iris wipe, and I wanted exactly the same thing. Um, yeah, yeah. And and I kind of did it by uh, by real uh, life calculations of of a somewhat uh, uh, spiral. <laughs> it's, it's not really uh, uh, correct calculations, but if you uh, just just play it quickly, you can see it. It's not a real circle. But it's, it's right. pretty is, is it hard is it hard coded like in a in a, a table the the white no no it's not hard coded it's actually real calculated. Time. yeah wow yeah that's really really impressive actually right yeah <laughs> and somebody asked uh, how responsive are the controls on load runner what's the input lag um, it's probably instant because the 2600 is one of those systems where it's just like yeah you have to draw Meryl every Bay frame as it comes Meryl in yeah, there, there's no, no th lag, or um, I, I think there could be like uh, one sixty of a second maybe be, uh, between like the input of the joystick and drawing it on the screen. Uh, that, that's it. Yeah. Um, and any lag people might see between what, what you're hearing Tanya moving the joystick and what you see on the screen is probably the setup, and it might be like just yeah. a a fraction because we're broadcasting at 60 frames a second and that's you know and i have to time it almost visually <laughs> so any input lag you might perceive it you, it's not in the game right that's for sure yeah yeah that's one of the uh, things when you play like a modern system on a modern television or and an, uh, you always yeah. get some lag uh, it, it never gets as as good as the old ways where you have like a CR, yeah. crt monitor and um yeah, this because there's there's a lot of processing in between on modern systems. Right. Like it's yeah. not a 
drawing it as it gets it. It's not this analog thing anymore. There's a lot of processes in between. And uh, retro gamers like myself go to great length and expense to minimize that lag as much as possible with yeah. very, very fast upscalers and you've got to turn off all the effects on your TV right, so that like it's not that. doing yeah. any extra processing. And yeah, so um, yeah, it's a very different environment now. But if, if you try, uh, if you look into it, you can minimize the lag as much as possible. But if you want to go old school, just RF into a CRT and you're good to go. And just just a question in between. Where do you get your T-shirt? It's really cool. Oh, um, I would have to research that. Okay. Um, it's it's kind of difficult online because there's a lot of T-shirts that aren't licensed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they're not. A lot of uh, companies don't really like. They don't put in the effort to to put out uh, licensed stuff because it's like, oh, how many people are going to buy it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, so you kind of have to look for like Running Man T-shirt. It's labeled as it won't it won't be labeled as Load Runner. Yeah. Um, just like any kind of Atari things are not labeled with the word Atari. So it's kind of kind of difficult because some of, some of the T-shirts I find uh, the the non licensed ones are like so much better designed than the actual licensed ones. But I would have to look it up in my uh, email okay, history okay. of where exactly I got this. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But I, but I did specifically buy it because of this game because I knew you're coming out. With this game i'm like okay i'm gonna buy it for the reveal and we and i wore it on the reveal for the for on zero page when we showed it off yeah 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 you, you had to wait a couple of years to be able to wear it or, or show it on, on camera of course yeah. exactly it sat on the shelf for a long time gathering dust yeah. to shake it out <laughs> um so there's certainly enough levels in this version of load runner you said 150 levels from right. the original game yeah and they span from fairly straightforward and simple to very difficult so yeah there's enough to keep anyone yeah, busy and, and for and a good long thing time is I, I kind of uh i, I changed the I, i'm i kind of changed the gameplay of the game i made it more okay. modern like back in the old days you had something like lives uh where you had like if you started yes. the game of load runner you started with five lives um and then you playing along the levels you kind of lose your lives and then you end up with maybe level 10 or something um which yeah. is i i think i remember i always stopped at level six when i was young and playing this game <laughs> i i just yeah yeah because then why my lives were just just i had one la <laughs> life entering that level and it just died and that was it um yeah so i really wanted people to see more of the game so i decided to take a more modern approach and and just get rid of the the lives things and there's also nothing yeah. like if you die it's there's no game over uh, if you don't finish a level or you you die in a level you can try it again try it again and um yeah. as soon as you manage to to solve the level solve the puzzle basically you unlock yeah. the next level so um you can just try as many times as you like basically Yeah, and I think we uh, discussed this yesterday with another game. So you can you can still play it like the old school way if you want. You can just keep track of your lives and then start from level one again if you want. Yeah. Um, so you give the option of people to play it with a modern sensibility of uh, infinite continues. And I and and again I, I appreciate that fully because it is difficult to play this whole game all the way through with, you know, X lives, you right. know, five yeah. or three, especially when you get to a hard level and you're like, okay, my lives are gone and now I'm going to have to run through 25 levels again to get to level 26. Right. Yeah, and that was the reason. I, I didn't want people to get, like, stuck on a level or, or frustrated that, that, that you got just two less lives to, to, to try to, to solve the, the puzzle. Um, yes. Yeah. But, exactly. But it's still very, it's still very challenging. So. Um, oh my God! Yeah, a lot look, of like Tanya's gone through like is, I don't know, ten, ten lives now on this one, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can kind of. And um, somebody asked in the chat. Um, this is a very general question, but uh, you might 
be able to answer it or speak for most developers about how how many hours does it take to uh, to make a game? I mean, this is a port, so it's uh, it's porting uh, materials over from another game, so you don't have to create them from scratch. Right. But just a rough, rough estimate of how many hours this took to for you to make it. Right. I, I think this one, um, I, I, when, when comparing to other games I, I've written like Amoeba Jump, did this one I, I probably spent the most time on. Um, and I yeah. think it, it, it's probably like, um, if, if, I'm, if you see it like a 40 hour work week, I, I probably have, have spent like half a year on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's a long time. Uh, it is a very long time, right. and and as we've said before, everything we do in the homebrew community is a labor of love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because none of us even make minimum wage doing anything we do. Talking to uh, Tozai, doing negotiations, yes. talking to the testers, which actually the tester did an did an excellent job on this one. Like all the 150 levels uh, were tested, like also by you. Uh, many times over by multiple people yeah. to make sure that they were all playable and finishable right. as well because and, and looking for glitches as, as well like oh i get stuck here and i can't continue or whatever or, yeah so, yeah so some me, of them are really really to, hard to all the testers they really they did an excellent job um Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It was it was well organized as well. You had a big layout. Here's all the levels. How did you have any problems? Yeah, yeah. And these people finished it. And you know, some people couldn't finish all of them. They're really hard. Some of these right. levels. So yeah. it's good you had some expert players uh, on there to to get through all the difficult levels. Yeah, I made a big Excel sheet with all the levels in it and all the <laughs> feedback for the levels and and uh, took quite some time, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like the end result. The levels are good, and, and I know they're all playable now. Yeah. So there are 150 levels in this, but have you thought of creating like another set of levels uh, for Load Runner and creating maybe like Load Runner 2, the sequel, um, and even taking like uh, contributions from from players who want to contribute their their own level. Yeah, well, that actually that's you're, you're tapping into something because my my, <laughs> my initial plan and and I still have that plan is to make um, to make like an editor available uh, where people can create their own level. Um, yeah. And the editor is not on the twenty six hundred. It's like an, an uh, a standalone editor, something you can download. Uh, right, a where modern you can system. Create a level and play it on a real Atari if you like. Um, oh, nice! So you get like a like ROM it would spit out a, a bin file, right? right? Just with that single level. Yeah, and it would be really cool to get it out in the, into the community and have people design their own level, and then maybe yeah. collect some of the cool levels. It's it's actually something that was done yeah. uh, back in the day, also, uh, where where they. Right. they Initially released uh, a load runner, and then uh, uh, Douglas Smith just just uh, showed the editors to a lot of people and collected all the cool levels, <laughs> and then yep. th that finally became a load runner championship. Uh, ah, okay. Well, there's you know you can use that name or right. a, a yeah. load runner two or load runner the expert edition because right. I can I can see people coming up with torturous levels for load runner for sure because yeah. you know anybody who is going to be making a, a level for load runner has uh, an extreme love for the game and they're going to be like okay you want some levels i'll, I'll create some difficult levels for you yeah and there's so, some cool Mirror tricks to use. like sometimes you really have to use the ai of the of the guards which are Sometimes they're they're yes. very smart in tracking you down, and sometimes uh, they're like really stupid. Or uh, <laughs> yeah, they're like you're right weird. next to them, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's like why aren't you going straight for me? Well, there's rules to these right. guards, and yeah. you know they have to follow them. Yeah, like what Tanya just did. She just barely went down the the ladder or up the ladder, and they turn around. They're all right. they're like, yeah, like five yeah. pixels away from her, and they're like, oh no, I got to go the other way. <laughs> oh, she's almost done this level. How many yes. are, what level you this on? Is Five? Be a challenge. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so, uh, besides uh, a possible 
um, fan edit of, of the levels for Load Runner 2, let's say. Are there any other um, games you have in mind that you um, are able to talk? Oh, you ran right over. Smart, oh, smart idea. Any, any other... Uh, that was this a clever a move. <laughs> was a, yeah. Uh, any other games you have on the go that you can talk about or uh, any anything else you'd like to add about Load Runner that we didn't cover? Uh, um, yeah, I, I, about next game, I, I don't. I'm not working on on new games at the moment. I, I do have a few ideas, but they're they're not even coded out yet. So it's more like some drawings are made or of, of some new right. games. Maybe I'm thinking about creating like uh, more of an original game this time, like uh, something new, right. not a port. Uh, That's true. Your past three Tower of Rubble, a Load Runner. Yeah. Um, Amoeba Jump were all based on on other games, some modern games, but right. uh, yeah. this one is an older one. So, oh, that's very they're very cool that yeah. uh, you might be working on an original one. Yeah, and like I said, hopefully we can do something with the community on on designing levels and and getting these levels together in 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 a new game. But that's oh yeah, that's still somewhere in the future but because uh... because i i know i had a lot of fun creating levels for um draconian uh, oh, yeah. spicewares yeah. game and and he was able to include them in the original game which was kind of cool so looking looking forward to uh, a sequel with some fan-made levels cool so thank you so much dion for joining us today yeah. and congratulations on load runner i can't wait to see people's reaction when they play the full game and see who makes it through all the levels first <laughs> yeah and, and thank you for for playing the game and and doing these shows i really love it really like it it's oh, it's a long well, show thank but you. i i love every minute of it um and it's it's cool to see all the developers like uh yeah yes, hear their voices also, see their faces Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed, and and hopefully other people are enjoying it as well. Because I I really love giving the opportunity to developers to speak directly to all the people out there that play their games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Thanks. So yeah. thank you so much, Dion, uh, for joining us, and uh, we will see you online. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. There we go. Okay, so um, make sure you move the mouse out of his face next time. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, the old uh, teacher thing where you leave the mouse on like the... Oh, on the line. On, on the well, line. Well, you could have you let me know. I would oh, have adjusted. I was talking. <laughs> okay, so that's awesome. Oh, I can't wait to uh, play this in an after dark and run through all the load runner levels. How did, did you have a lot of fun playing it? Oh yeah, it's, it's just such a fun game. <laughs> Addicting. Yeah, uh, it's the perfect I mix of it, action and 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 puzzle. It seemed to in, imply there were 150 levels. Yes. Yeah. So um, you made it to six. I can see us uh, having <laughs> an seven. after dark on that and seeing how far we get. The nice thing is probably we're more than code. one. Yes, so we can back continue. Once you've passed the level, yep. so you can continue, which is fantastic. I love it when games do that. Yes. Instead of having to constantly repeat the early levels, if you kind of already know how to get through them. So. Yeah, and um, we just scratched the surface on the uh, yeah on all the things that happen in the game and unlocking things. You need Atari, to yeah, one sitting. A one fifty one sitting. I can tell you from beta testing this game that one sitting would be we'd have to go to sleep. I we mean. Would just, <laughs> We'd be passed out. That would be another like that would be like a twelve hour stream. We'd have to be like Yeah. Yeah. We would have to have <laughs> something else happening at the same time while Maybe. that's kinda of going on in the background. Maybe that's a twenty four hour marathon where yes. one person just plays the load runner the whole time. <laughs> and then everyone else plays, you know, group oh my God. games. You wanna yeah. put that under there? Yes. Please? Thank you very much. Great game. Very, oh my god. Entertaining, wonderful, yeah. like puzzle games. When we were beta like testing I do, it, I was so. like, oh, I can't wait for this to come out. Yeah. Oh my god. Neo, Neo, uh, Neo Media says, I want Load Runner badly. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, for our next uh, guest yes. developer, it's uh, Silvio Mongo, Mogno, Mogno. Silvio Mogno, yeah. uh, with Ruby Q. So let's. Get out Ruby Q in anticipation. And let's see. Oh, I didn't put this in there. Can you put that on top of the load runner box, please? 
That's a little poster. Yep, don't, don't lose that. That would, be, that would see, seem so long after dark that it would loop into before dark. <laughs> the sun would rise, sun would set, and the sun would rise. <laughs> um, oh, somebody was on. Good. Is that full screen? Yeah. Uh, no. No, it's not. No, hold on. Hello. One Hello. second, Silvio. Let us get you on there. Do you hear me? Excellent. Yes, we Hello. do. Welcome <laughs> to the show, Silvio. How are you doing? Nice. Thanks. Uh, first of all, I have to say only one thing that my English is not so good because I'm Italian. <laughs> so it's oh, Italian no problem. English. I'm so sorry for this. <laughs> I, whenever I hear somebody say sorry for my English, they're always very well spoken. <laughs> yeah. I can understand them completely. <laughs> um, if they're at that level where uh, they're apologizing for their English, you know they're just fine. <laughs> so, yeah, no problem. Thank you so much for coming on and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and talking about your brand new game Ruby Q. I'm very excited about this. Thank you. It you. is a really great port of Qbert and really takes it to the next level. And I think anybody who's a fan of Qbert is going to just, this is going to blow their mind how, how good this is. Thank you very much. So let's, let's take a look at the uh, packaging here. Maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, who did the pack who did the artwork and uh, what went into making the, uh, uh, the box and the manual uh, for, for Ruby Q. Thank you to Vladimir Zuniga. Did ah, yes, Vladimir did the artwork for this, who, who does all his own artwork for his own games. He yes. has a great, distinct style. Great work. Great, really yeah. great work. <laughs> so how did you uh, get in touch with Vladimir? Did he approach you after he saw your game was being developed, or did you reach out to him? He proposed to me to do the artwork, and uh, I did. I said to him, uh, "Do what you want, because I like uh, uh, his uh, design skills." So I did it all. I say only yes. It's okay for me. <laughs> it's really okay. It's really a really nice work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, really like his artwork, both in game and his covers. It really has a, a beautiful style to his yes. Uh, yes. his his artwork and games. We're going to be speaking with him later on today. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's gorgeous and really striking colors on there yes. as well. It looks really, really good. So I, I I don't blame you for saying yeah, VHC, go for it. You, <laughs> no problems with anything you do. <laughs> I love this uh, yellow um, background. It's uh, really, really good for me. Oh yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. Very graphic. I like the hat. Yeah, the yeah, cute the hat Q. with the Q on it. <laughs> nice idea. Standing for nice idea. Ruby Q. Yeah. <laughs> Let's flip through the manual here. So did you write out uh, all the instructions for the manual? Did you do all the text for it? I write the instruction, but uh, then uh, Albert uh, did uh, review the instruction because uh, I did some errors with my English, uh, but uh, more right. or less uh, is uh, my, my work, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Albert reviews all the manuals and all the text, mm -hmm. no matter who sends it in, because... <laughs> I, I can understand him going, oh my god, there was an error in there after I released it and... Go back to the Qbert. Oh, okay. Sorry, Bud Page. I, the Qbert with the little the little tuft of hair, too, is adorable. Oh, that's so cute. That is very cute. Sorry. <laughs> I had to point that yeah, out. Yeah, that is. So you can see him without his hat there. That's so that's nice. That's really great. Yeah. Very stylized. I like it a lot. So he did all the artwork inside the manual as well. Oh, look at there. That's my name. <laughs> Thank you for thanking me. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So these are all people that uh, that helped out with the game in one way or the other, yeah. uh, like testing or or playing it for you and beta testing. Mm, I didn't. I didn't understand. Sorry. 
Oh, okay. Through. The 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 this list of uh, people here in the back of your manual that you thank. Oh, okay. um, those are some people who helped you uh, test the game. Uh, yes, there uh, there was a uh, uh, Jürgen Olser uh, and uh, John Shampoo. They uh, tested for me the game, and uh, I also tested the game. But uh, as a, as I as a programmer, I was uh, testing uh, every time the single uh, features. A third person can test uh, other other problems that uh, I cannot see. Right, right. No, that's backwards. Oh, don't, don't. No, 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 I'm just, uh, I'm just having a little trouble getting the cartridge into the... Uh... Oh, it's good? Yeah. Okay, there we yeah, go. Tanya helped out. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at the game. Yes. And boot it up. Love these intros people are doing. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, it was... <laughs> I had some space left, uh, so I did uh, this intro. And there are voices in the game. We've got the Atari Vox hooked up. Yes, and uh, random <laughs> voices when uh, Ruby Q uh, dies. <laughs> very nice. Very, very nice. So, can you talk a little bit about your history with Qbert? Um, was it a game that you played in the arcade or at home a lot? Uh, I had the 2600 version, version that I liked a lot. Despite uh, this, uh, only a 4K, 4 kilobytes um, um, card. It's a really, really a good game. So. Um, it's good, but uh, it has a, as a feeling as a, you you are playing playing with a, a game and watch because you had no animations. Right. The graphic uh, is asymmetrical, but uh, despite these flaws, uh, in my, in my opinion, is a really, really fun game for the two six. So I was thinking about uh, doing the game because, uh, better than the official release. And uh, one day I didn't uh, work. I started thinking uh, how can the the still better. Then my first attempt was uh, to render the pyramid in a uh, plain sand without this uh, asymmetry. So um, I worked some hours. Uh, figuring out uh, uh, if uh, it was possible to render me the, in a better way, and I saw that uh, it uh, was working. So then I, st I stopped it because I had uh, too much work to do. But after some uh, months, I saw the a uh, collector three demo from Spice uh, Spiceware. Three side, and I tried to to figure figure out uh, how it worked. And uh, at that time, uh, my project really started because it started from that code. <laughs> Uh, adding uh, my code, uh, my graphics, uh, and uh, the game uh, went on on this base. So uh, very nice. I took uh, the collect three demo code uh, and uh, I start adding uh, all my stuff, uh, changing uh, what I needed, 
And after uh, more or less one year, the team was finished. That's that's pretty good. It was a, a Sunday afternoon work because I was working the, only on Sunday afternoon <laughs> in the winter because in the winter I didn't know I didn't know what to do in the afternoon so I <laughs> <laughs> this work. Yeah, I always wonder how. Uh, developers find the the time to be able to code their games as well as you know having a life and having a job and and it's always astounding the the quality of work that they're able to turn out with in so so little time or seemingly so little time when, it's, it's, uh, when you have a passion um, in my case uh, with uh, the DCS put uh, your effort uh, in this passion and uh, the result uh, you see the result is <laughs> no not uh, um, the system for the game and uh, for the community yeah, so, yeah. so uh, can you talk a little bit about um, like the the original Qbert? On the 2600 is fine. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's it's lacking a few things, yeah. but uh, but it's very very playable and it, it's fine. Yeah. Um. But what are some of the enhancements you added into your version of of uh, Ruby Q over top of the original release of the the 2600 version? Because there there's quite a few upgrades uh, in your version yes because uh, when i finished the, the basic game i saw there was a lot of um, space on the card so i started thinking uh, how well. feature, what feature can, could i, I add so I started uh, the first of all, I added animation to the character because uh, yeah. in the original they are stat static, like, like lots. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't even like move from from yes. square to square. It just appears, appears, appears. But yes. you know, they they're under time constraints back then, and and you know, the knowledge wasn't as as widespread as it is now and available to do certain things. Uh, could, uh, uh, could, uh, could be not possible without uh, the harm in enhancement because. Uh, uh, Without this, uh, it's uh, technically not possible to do animation to have uh, a symmetrical uh, pyramid. Right, right. Yeah, it's it takes up a lot of time to re recode or put in the new information for the. Uh, yes, for the... you have the you have to have it... the data ready because the beam races on the pixel. <laughs> Especially yeah. in the last uh, it was a, a very hard, hard challenge to code perfectly the, the graphics. And, yeah. uh, well, after the adding animation, I was thinking about new enemies. Uh, right. I added the flashing uh, long key, copying from the uh, prototype uh, uh, faster, harder, more challenging Qbert. Yes, yes. He has, uh, he has a character like this. And, uh, uh, and I, wa I was thinking uh, adding adding uh, other characters. Uh, uh, are the icy? Uh, there is icy and uh, yep. the stormy one. Uh, and uh, after adding uh, add characters, I was thinking about uh, a two-player game 
because uh, I think there is no Cubert game with a two-player cooperative game. <laughs> yes, yes. That for me is uh, really, really nice. And yeah, I love when developers add in two-player options, uh, and I, I'm seeing it more and more. And, and I've been mentioning it through throughout the the broadcast yesterday, and probably mention again today. Of uh, yeah, and obviously when we do the show, there's two people. So thank you so much for adding in, um, you know, competitive and co-op. Thank you to you for enjoying it, enjoying it. <laughs> And uh, that uh, uh, I copied uh, the bonus round uh, also from uh, the Qbert prototype. And uh, when uh, you were it in the show, you were standing on the pyramid top, uh, waiting from the enemies to to fall on you. So yeah. oh, it, you did meet, uh, you did uh, have the idea to have the um, anti tampering feature. So you, if you <laughs> spend uh, too much on the cube, uh, your character goes uh, uh, so randomly. <laughs> probably fa fa falling uh, down from the pyramid. A very smart, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, the 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 cube underneath of you starts flashing and goes, "Hey, you better start moving. Yeah, yeah you're gonna be in trouble." And uh, 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 another feature that I like, but uh, it makes me crazy playing, is the teleporting cubes. Because uh, oh my god, yeah, that's <laughs> oh my god, that makes it so challenging, but it, uh, uh, very fun. It's very fun, and uh, you have some patterns when because they are placed uh, randomly. Sometimes there are, there are patterns uh, when uh, the enemies uh, try to reach you, but he, he, he jump in a cube that teleports uh, it down so it uh, can go on uh, indefin indefinitely <laughs> <laughs> it's right like right this. and um, uh, oh, more. Um, another thing well. that i had it was i didn't i didn't remember <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, and somebody asked in the chat about the controls. I mean, somebody said, we're going to need to give Tanya treats for solder uh, soldiering through the <laughs> isometric game. She has a lot of trouble with isometric I games. I do, I do. <laughs> um, but somebody asked, are the controls set up to use diagonals or to use the cardinal directions with the joystick rotated 45 degrees? You so, like, uh, both options? for the players with the, the difficulties uh, switch and Great. Uh, it was a, suggest a suggestion from, from uh, your show. <laughs> uh, oh, that's great, because I'm, I'm sure Tanya appreciates the availability of both different schemes, because I think it's set right now to move in the direction that you are pointing, like if you move it forward. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's down going to the on, right. on the on angles. Yeah, which can be, you know, depending on the joystick, too, one scheme might be easier for you than the other. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I, so that's great. More options, the better. <laughs> personally, I prefer the 45 degrees uh, rotation because uh, I played uh, the original game uh, for a joystick. So the yeah. diagonals uh, weren't uh, no, so easy to reach. <laughs> yeah. But the original joystick is a very, very stiff joystick. So yeah, it, the 45 degrees might be very yeah. d challenging there. But if uh, someone, someone has uh, a nice joystick, uh, they can use the other option. And uh, right. uh, finally, I would like to talk a bit about the turbo speed because uh, I really like this mode but uh, I cannot bring it to the joystick because it's really really too fast. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, it's uh, very fast. In animation with a PC, I can do three or four screens uh, really on the fast crazy mode. Crazy game. Yeah. But uh, I used uh, uh, this uh, mode. Uh, uh, was born when uh, I was uh, finding a, finding a, a bug that uh, uh, was uh, expecting uh, not uh, uh, after a few minutes or a few seconds, but after a really long time. So I speeded up the game to find uh, what I uh, was uh, expecting. And uh, then I saw that, that uh, the speed uh, was uh, really uh, cool that uh, then I added this uh, option to my game and I think uh, this is cool to play it is a cool and uh, very uh, when you are stressed you play it uh, is very relaxing for me <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's relaxing for Tanya but <laughs> I, I yeah, I, I, I like Qbert. I like getting into the zone of Qbert and just I, I have a certain pattern to finish each level if, if I can, if, if the, the creatures don't get in the way of me. But um, I, I, I find the normal mode very relaxing. Boom, boom, boom. And you get into a rhythm of movement and, and you, you find a way to boom, boom, boom and move your way through it. So I, I, I can find it relaxing as well. <laughs> I, th I think uh, the, uh, that uh, this game is uh, one of the two six hundred games uh, that uh, if you play uh, a long time, uh, you go into the flow. Yeah, it is one of those games because of the the style of movement. It's it takes a bit to jump from cube to cube, and you have to like know the rhythm you get into a rhythm because yes. Hubert has a rhythm of yes. movement yeah this is a, uh, a, a, a characteristic of uh, some uh, two six uh, zero zero tips and uh, of my games of my game too and uh, yeah. I'm proud of this and you should be this is like the ultimate version of Qbert for the 2600 it's it's done nobody needs to touch Qbert anymore it's it's a beautiful beautiful version with so many so many options um, so so are there any um, other games that you're working on because after this I'm like oh my god yeah I can't wait for Silvio to make his next game so do you have any uh, other games that you've been uh, thinking about that you'd like to talk about uh, well, my first game uh, for the VCS was uh, in uh, 2005, if I remember. Yeah. So, so from the first to the second game, we uh, I had to wait uh, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little while. <laughs> yeah. So really, I had some ideas but uh, I don't know if uh, I uh, will uh, have the time to to make these uh, ideas reality but yeah uh, uh, I was working for a time on the on the Atari on computer version of Pixel Castles Ah, okay. With the, the uh, castle layout, uh, like the yes, version that uh, I really prefer. But uh, this uh, work uh, now is stuck, and uh, mm, okay. I would uh, like. I had. Uh, I have uh, a bit uh, code of the of space war uh, version for okay. PCS. Yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. I really like the physics of this game, and uh, I would like to do a version with uh, artificial intelligence. Oh. So I cannot uh, have to find uh, a friend to play the game. Uh, yeah. 
I have some code of this, but uh, it's stuck. So oh, let me see in the future. How? What can I do? What I will do? I would like yeah. to do another game uh, for sure, but uh, I have to 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 check uh, if uh, I we have time and. Uh, uh, I want to do it because uh, the result is uh, very uh, satisfying, but uh, the work is hard, especially on the choosing coding is uh, uh, com uh, is not uh, really uh, clean coding because you have to. To find all the dirty tricks and to make uh, the <laughs> things works work. Yeah, it, it is a very challenging challenging machine, and I, I think that's why people love to to code on it because of the challenge and the yeah. flexibility of it, yeah. and all the beautiful colors and yeah. and people are still able to turn out just unbelievable games despite the limitations yeah. of the twenty six hundred. So thank you so much for coming on. Uh, our stream and talking about your game and congratulations on the release of Ruby Q. I know there's a lot of fans of of Qbert out there that are just gonna love this game. Thank you very much to you. Uh, thank you for inviting me, inviting me for your show. And sorry yeah. for my English. Uh, it's <laughs> really, really poor. But uh, oh no, it's perfectly good. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, and we'll talk with you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> Unfortunately, I noticed that um, the Atari Vox was just, every time the Atari Vox talked, it it's cut out. Through? No, it it went through the webcam that is connected to the laptop, and it cut oh. out his voice. Oh. Because it thinks we're talking. It's quite loud. Even Can though we turn down, no way. Uh, yes. The Atari box. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll do that. If we can um, figure that out. <laughs> I think the next game doesn't have talking, but the one after does. Yes. So we'll we'll do that um, in a bit, probably between after the next game. Okay. Even though it's the same person, John will be fine. Okay. <laughs> thank you for gifting a sub, Atari 800XL. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. Who did you give it to? Dave M-A-Z. Nice. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, he did say Space War, and he was talking about um, coding AI, like a really good AI. Oh, nice. And that that would be a fun challenge. Yeah. And I think he also said Crystal Castles that he was going to work on. Oh, wow. And, oh, my God. If he is able to incorporate like rollerball support like actual rollerball oh, support for wow. crystal castles that would be killer yeah that'd be amazing and a really nice play field layout um for the um for the game for each level because each level has a really good layout yeah thank um, you sylvia yeah thank you so much sylvia <laughs> yeah okay we're going to we're in a little bit running behind today which yeah, is a little bit weird the opposite of yesterday we but were flying through but that's okay. okay that's okay so. hopefully people are not too uh that need to go anywhere oh, today yeah it's 120 so let's uh let's get john on the line all right right now so we can uh get to him Make sure to move the mouse out of the way and go full screen. Yeah. And Here hello, go. John. How'd you get this number? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, uh, we paid a lot of money to be able to get this number, and uh, now you cannot sign off. <laughs> How are you doing? Can you hear us? Good. Yes. All Let good? me uh, mute X. something here. Oh, sure. Yeah, make sure you mute Twitch so we're not feeding back and yep. looping. Is that better? looping, looping around so many times. Um, so how are you doing today, John? Good, good. been trying to rake leaves. I'm surrounded by like a hundred uh, <laughs> maples here and I've been raking leaves for like three oh. weekends uh, straight here. It's driving me insane. So. <laughs> well, it is that time of year mm -hmm. where uh, all the trees are uh, creating new... Uh, 
new layouts and colors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's beautiful, but messy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, your first game today that we're going to talk about is Kicks. Let me get that out right now, and we'll take a look at the uh, cover and artwork. This is another... Uh, Foreboding, desolate, beautiful cover by David Exton, if I believe. Oh, yes. If I'm correct. Yep, he did a great job with that. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. And at first, when I first saw this cover, when I think Al posted it, um, I thought it was done with watercolors. But um, I think you said that he works digitally on uh, on his artwork. Is that correct? Um, Yes, I believe that sounds right. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Dave, David would probably speak better than that. I thought he, I don't know. I think I said it, what I thought it was, and I was wrong, so I don't want to be wrong. I, <laughs> I, thought, yeah, I, I thought he hand-painted everything or did, I don't know. It, they had those things where they can paint on tablets. Um, yeah, there's there's great artwork programs and, and, and mm-hmm. uh, hardware for that as well. But it does a, a look yeah. a lot like a oil or acrylic painting. Like, it's really beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. He knocked and, out the uh, sure, yeah. Yeah. He did, and it kind of looks like almost a kite in the sky. Yeah. Yes, exactly, uh, Being yeah. flown in the sky. Yeah, that, yeah. I, I know. Did, yeah, when we talked about, well, he came up with, obviously, this, this idea, but he, what he wanted to capture was the... Uh, the stress that you feel or the <laughs> aloneness that you feel when you leave the safe um, border of of kicks. Oh, and you yeah. go out and you start drawing and you have the kicks right after you. So that was what he was trying to capture there, which I think he did wonderfully. Mm. So He really did. And he co- incorporated the the line artwork from from the game and uh, mixed it with like real world looking environments and it's just the colors are just gorgeous. He, mm-hmm. he he used the blue and the orange to such a great effect yes. to create the sky and the clouds. He's he's such an astounding artist. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. He did this yeah, oh. he he had worked on a robot war before this on so those uh those two in, in Avalanche's ball. So he's been on three of my games. So uh and each one has been pretty pretty amazing. So yeah, we're we're lucky to have him in the community to to uh, contribute yeah. all this amazing artwork yeah. to these these games. So it was nice. Yeah, uh, it, take a... yeah. This is the first time I'm seeing the box up front, so it's uh, it's looking nice. So <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the the that cartridge with the too. same yeah. artwork. Yeah. It's uh, so clean. Yeah. It's so beautiful yeah. as well. Very nice. Yeah. So. so let's uh, pop that in. Yeah. Let's hope the game. We'll take a yeah, look. Let's hope the game can do the uh, label some justice here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly, yeah. And we'll, we'll get to some questions about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and beautiful artwork in, in the interior as well, incorporating um, all the graphics using the, like, for the borders of the of the pages. Oh, my God, the design work. So he did all the, the interior design work as well? Yes, yep, yep. Yeah, it was uh, very creative how he, uh, you know, obviously all the text boxes or like boxes you would draw when if you were playing the game so we kind of incorporated that into it and uh made a good use of uh you know the colors for like that um page right there yeah and all, awesome. all the options and things like that so yeah so creative yeah, so he, oh my yeah he goodness. comes up i come up with the uh a lot of the uh um content as far as you know how to play the game the, the boring stuff and then he makes it look look like something people would actually want to buy so um, <laughs> So yeah, so yeah. you'd agree with that. And, uh... Oh my God, yeah. Just looking at this manual for the first time, I didn't get a chance at at PRG to take a look at it. But oh my goodness, this is this is astounding. Yeah, it this was funny because gorgeous. when you started it, it was like, well, how hard can this be? You know, it's kicked. You draw in a few lines, and then um, end up being like, <laughs> I don't know how long that thing's like sixteen pages, twenty. It's like because we have co-op yeah. mode, and we have so many stuff in there. It's a lot. Mm. It's it's funny I mean, when I started doing kicks. I didn't think it was a complicated game at all my, my, as far as how to play because I wasn't playing it right. It wasn't until I uh, dove into the <laughs> rules and stuff like that that you figure out that there's really a lot going on in this game and, you know, just the uh, yeah. amount of information. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. a lot of tactics and a lot of different ways and some some clever ways to, to trap uh, the enemies. And, yeah, it's, it's a lot more than what you see on the surface of just drawing boxes. Yeah, absolutely. So it's... Uh, and the uh, yeah the instruction manual is a testament to that. that it's, uh, it's yeah it's yeah fairly so, long. So well, let's see if it boots up. Yeah, let's turn yeah. it on. Fingers crossed. <laughs> 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 
Ready. There we go. Title screen kicks. That's beautiful. Drawing the title. That's excellent. That was fun. Yeah. Um, so, Kix is another game in the long line of ports of champ games where you can truly say you've made the impossible possible. <laughs> yeah, thanks. To because the this yeah, exactly, but uh, <laughs> exactly, and and like, um, I mean, even. Even without the arm chip, the, the the way it's drawn on the screen and the resolution of the 2600, you had some early hesitation about the playfield resolution to be enough for porting it to the 2600. Yep. So at at what point in development did you realize you were able to you know quell some of those concerns that you had? Yeah. Well, it started off. You know, I was getting a. You know, we have a Facebook page and a lot of people were commenting how they'd like to see kicks come to uh, 2600, which is easy to say when you don't know what the, you know, if you don't know the <laughs> limitations of the 2600, it's like, yeah, throw kicks on there, and dragons. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, oh, you know, so I'd always been intrigued by kicks. I'd only played it in um, on the 5200, and I always thought it was kind of cool, but, you know, I'd get through, like, a couple levels because you could try, and I was trying to draw as fast as I could, and then then that would be it. So I was like, well, you know, let's see if I can get this uh, drawing with uh, the playfield graphics. Um so I posted like uh, just uh, some pictures on uh, Facebook and Atari Age, saying, you know, what do people think? And um, obviously, the uh, the main drawback with using the play field is your resolution. Is that you know this is a was originally a forty by ninety six because um, to get the two colors, right. you know, you basically have to half your uh, vertical resolution as well. Which is nice. Right. Close. So every second, every second line, you have a different color to represent the two different colored boxes. Yes, and then they combine to draw the white or appear like a different color. It just happens to be that you know, uh, blue and uh, orange. Um, kind That's of, right. Kind and of I think you, you did that in uh, Ladybug yeah, to Ladybug the same arcade. kind of effect. Yeah, exactly. And again, yeah. I just got lucky there because it just happens to be green and purple. Purple is red and blue, so red, white, red, <laughs> um, blue, and green makes white. So it. it great on right so they're kind of lucky so yeah so that was the first um obstacle to get over is like is it going to be worth having such low resolution with this um, i did work with uh yeah. tj you know thomas yentz um at the beginning to see if we could come up with like a 96 pixel you know um, by 96 pixel uh, representation as well but um that would have right. been uh, and we did make some progress on that tom did a great job with a um, um a demo that I, we were working with oh well, he did most of it and it looked good. Yeah. The only drawback was that it was uh, it would have to be monochrome or close to monochrome. So, uh, okay. so since it's a 2600 game, I think one of the 2600 strengths is its color palette. Um, yep. So at that point, it was like, you know, I'd rather, and there were going to be a lot of other limitations as far as what we could represent um, using a monochrome uh, bitmap. So um, I decided, you know, I, I made the, uh, the call there that it would be better to have less resolution and have a kicks type game and be able to have all those colors and different sprites versus, uh, you know, something with a higher resolution. But only it'd have been like twice as much resolution going you know, horizontally. Yeah. But with all, I, the, I think you made the right call. Yeah, for so, sure. Exactly. So once I had the demo out and I posted it, you know, you tried it. A few other people tried it, and they said, "Hey, it feels it feels like kicks," and that's kind of all that matters. Um, and you know yeah because th there can be you know great graphics bad graphics great sound bad sound but it had the gameplay has to be there yes and and once once you once anybody starts playing kicks they can they can tell the feel is right on yeah. like um it, it feels right you know the the fast the slow movement the uh the ability to control your character is there's no problems whatsoever. Absolutely, yeah. So that, that's kind of how I felt about it too. And uh, Nathan uh, Strong, who I did all the graphics for this, he's I guess he's a big kicks guy too. So uh, he he did a lot of the early testing too, and he, he seemed to really enjoy it. He said that it felt really like the arcade as well. So I kind of uh, kind of tipped the scales. Cause, like, again, I, I don't want to. I wasn't a big kicks fan to begin with, just because I didn't understand how to play, but. You know, certainly I've grown to appreciate it much more now that uh, I'd spent a year developing this game. Um, 
<laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you got to get good at it, or and understand. Uh, you, you you grow to love it. Yeah, and I think I f I find that with when I'm playing games, like even games that I've dismissed initially, and I'm like, oh, I don't really like that game very much, or I felt that I didn't like that game, or whatever game it was. But then I'm I'm almost forced to play it on the show because I <laughs> I want to show off the hard work. Yes, of somebody. It's this isn't one of those games. I love kicks. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, 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 but once I start playing the game and I understand the the depth and con complexity and actually how to play it, then it reveals, it almost reveals itself to me and I go, oh, this is actually a really good game. Yes, exactly. That's kind of what, yeah, once I get the strategies going, you know, usually what I do is I, I start playing on MAME and then I, I dig through, they right. have, um, they have um, a lot of... Uh, articles out there i don't know if i've ever been to a strategy wiki is what it's called it's like a wiki but it's a strategy wiki for um yeah for video i go games. to that a lot yes, exactly. when i when i uh, debut a game and i want to talk about the game to any depth because i want to show off all those those really weird tricks that people have discovered or quirks about the game or you know um even bugs to yes. to try and replicate it and see if the developer put in the same bug from the arcade exactly yeah yeah i started using that back in the mappy days because i didn't really know mappy enough i knew it fairly well but you know once you dig into that it gives you all the nuances of the game that you may miss in a casual playthrough so um once i get that going and then i actually start playing like you know i found myself sitting down for a couple hours just playing this game going wow this is actually uh you know, it, it is it is a lot of fun. It's a different kind of game too. You know, it's a more of a puzzle game. You know, a lot of my games are more action oriented. That's why you know. That's right. Wearing my Gorp arcade T-shirt, and I feel felt bad because <laughs> I, I didn't put together a uh, T-shirt for kicks. But you know, it's such a mind game that it was like I didn't know what to put in the middle. Like, am I just going to draw a line there and expect people to say, yeah. ah? Just how exciting just is one that? <laughs> one single line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so kicks, unfortunately, didn't make the cut as far as that's concerned. But it does make for a cool poster, obviously, as, as we saw with what David oh. did through, So, Oh, my God. Yeah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful artwork. Yep. So. Um, so with this game, as per usual, you've gone above and beyond with adding in a, a simultaneous two-player option, which, you know, doesn't exist in the original arcade. Is, is this something that you actively think about as you develop for a game or do you con concentrate on the core gameplay first and then see what you have room for at the end yeah no, certainly with this game i wanted because um you know since it's it's a fairly simple game as far as you know the mechanics of it all i wanted to put something different to keep the replayability higher so that's why we added um different skill levels um you know we have the all yep. you know some other options that you can have with uh, the difficulty switches but um, I thought adding a co-op mode would have been kind of cool to see how it would work with, uh, um, you know, just again, give, give it another flavor for people to test. So as far as your question is concerned, uh, um, I did start considering that early in the process because there's a lot of, um, a lot of my coding needs to be dependent, especially with this, since uh, if you're going to do a co-op mode, I needed to make sure that, you know, I'd had separate instances of the players and the collision detection yes. would work for both players at the same time and um the drawing yep. would be able to interact with each other so early on i designed the framework and the engine to to support it and then when i was able to drop it in it was basically just create a new player set the color then all of a sudden it, it kind of worked you know r right out of the box just because of uh, what i had uh, done initially um that, 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 that makes a lot of sense because yes. it would be very difficult to, yeah, to shoehorn it in, add in sure. a second play yeah at, at the end yeah yep and i think uh i had a note here i think uh, tanya and you were the first to play the co-op mode um way back yeah. when so uh that certainly helped with the, the feedback as well so uh um i finally got to play i played against paul um he came to visit back in may we played for he goes i don't like kicks i went neither did i let's let's, <laughs> let's keep, give it a go give it a shot and before you know it we're playing for like an you know an hour like co-op mode he goes this is actually really fun i went yeah it actually is so it was, uh if, if you can convert paul for anyone so <laughs> <laughs> yeah the second player um adds adds a lot of dimension to a game i think i mentioned this yesterday where there's the human factor to it rather than uh, possibly a more predictable computer opponent or enemy 
where the the human opponent you're like well i don't know what they're going to do they're very ad the other person's very adaptive yep. to say, the strategy of the other person it's like okay well i know how you play and then now i can counter that yep absolutely right? yep and I, I did actually get to play um co-op at the um at, at prge um, nice against so, well, against some people and it was uh it was a lot of fun just to see you know how people were I saw a couple of people playing. They weren't like connecting the lines together for the most points, like their own lines. Um, uh, you know, so I kind yeah. of went by and I nudged them. Like, hey, you know, get a lot more points. We connect. Hey, this is great. And these just all of a sudden. So it's, uh, yeah, it opens up the world of what what kicks is about. And, yeah, and cool. uh, that that is really important. Like like we mentioned before, understanding the rules of a game and be able to play it to its uh, fullest extent yeah. rather than just you know draw a couple lines fill in the boxes and get the minimum to get to the next level but yeah maybe some people don't know about you know splitting split in the two kickses and then getting double and double again and double again for each successive level yeah yeah you can actually get that multiplier up to nine times so um, then you're really yeah. cranking in points um <laughs> that's so, right yeah and then, also uh um i added in um it started off with um uh, Galagon, you know, I added challenge mode because uh, Galaga has uh, Galagon, sorry, has the uh, all, <laughs> has all the what game, huh? Yeah, exactly. had all the challenge stages, so I'd put that in as for my own testing, so I could actually test all the challenge stages. Yes. I went, this actually be a kind of cool of a cool way to actually play. Just and I'll call it challenge. How how much? Uh, That's right. Exactly. I think I mentioned that yesterday. All these um, tests that the developers put in for themselves to like skip levels yes. or to get ahead to a certain level. And like you said, to all the challenge modes in a row because it takes a while to get to each successive challenge. And when you're t trying to test those, it's like, oh my god, okay, another half hour till I get to the fifth challenge level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so yeah, so I've carried that name challenge mode, kind of like a, the champ mode I used to have in my um, '90s game. Games, um, where it had new levels and new features, stuff like that. I did that with Ladybug right. Arcade, where I threw in like the, uh, um, you know, the um, co-op mode, but also the uh, the spider and a couple other things. Um, so mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I added challenge mode here as well, which adds uh, all those power ups, which is kind of cool. I think it keeps the uh, game fresh as well. So. Um, exactly. Yeah, so like people played the arcade game to the fullest extent, but then when they buy like your your games, there's all these extra things added in that really mix up the game and and change it into something that they've never played before. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And that's uh, it makes it fun for me too, because uh, you know, even yeah. though I yeah you know, I say I'm not a creative person, which maybe I'm not. And people <laughs> say you know I, I do a lot of ports and you know for the ease of it, but also the challenge, but. I do like to be uh, yeah. creative, and this is a good, good way to kind of have the best of both worlds. You know, I, I'll add some, uh, some challenge, uh, some different features um, to the game, um, so it's, it's, it keeps me fresh as well. So, and it may even inspire yeah. me to make a, you know, a, you know, a, a custom game myself someday. So. <laughs> yeah, we can't wait. We can't wait for that. Yeah. And, and I know that you have some in the plan, in, yes. the, in the works yes. that you, you've mentioned before. Yeah, there's always a uh, yeah. <laughs> so somebody already mentioned in the chat, but the sounds that Bob uh, DeCrescenzo contributed to Kicks are really incredible oh, and actually com yeah, yeah. comparable to the arcade yep. with their like crackling electricity that's happening. Yeah, Bob, um, Bob is, is the master for sure. He came on board and... Uh, um, the sounds are just really, really push us over the top. Obviously, uh, Nathan, will, he'll be the first to tell you. There's not much in the graphic department here, but what, what he did do is obviously, you know, because there's uh, it's lines and, you know, he yeah. did do that um, well, the, the warp in effect, which is amazing. So cause the one yes. I had was really bad. I just had like four sprites so, coming together. So keep going. Sorry. So even 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 when the, the, the graphics seem simple on here, there's the the challenge of making it work on the 2600 as well yes. it's not just you know the design of lines exactly. <laughs> on the screen it's like do we have enough time to do this or enough time to do that or we have to you know oh there's two colors how are we going to put two colors on the screen yep. side by side well that's impossible with play field or near impossible with a very crazy timing yes absolutely. well you, you divide it up one color one line next color the next line and combine the colors to do the outline it's 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 uh more than it appears you know if somebody says oh graphics in this game are simple well no they're not really that simple <laughs> no no yeah yeah the engine itself was uh yeah we use the same blending technique that we used in uh in uh ladybug arcade which you can disable i know i think it's on right now i can see the screen shivering but 
I think yeah, I think I think when, uh, yeah, I think when you play on the stream, you usually turn it off because it ends up sending the entire. Uh, it's the. It goes crazy. Yeah, it's oh the my right, God, yeah. Right, yeah, I think it's the right difficulty switch. Put in A and it turns it off. So, it just becomes more. Does that, this doesn't have that, does it? It does actually. Yes. Yeah, so. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think I've got it. Yep, there we go. Yeah, so you do that. So it obviously doesn't look as good in my opinion, but um, no. Uh, but like for streaming, are, it it goes nuts for streaming because it really it it has to draw the whole screen. screen and encode the whole screen and. It's not like modern games when you encode yeah. modern games because each frame is only slightly different from the next frame, so like shifted over. Yes, exactly. At 2600 games, I picked the wrong system <laughs> to do streams on. Yep. It, they it's a tough just one. wreak havoc on on video compression. Yep. Oh my god. Oh yeah, and a lot of, a lot of these games, such as these advanced games that are drawing the screen, every frame, you know, really depend on yes. at 60 frames per second to uh to look decent otherwise people are like i can't read what that text says it's like well you know believe me <laughs> yeah you know, you're only seeing half of it yeah, that's exactly. why so, uh, yeah um yeah so anyway back to bob i don't, I don't want to shortchange him on uh, the trade i wanted to give him is that the sound that he came up with uh, with kicks was you know amazing it really oh sets my god tone. yeah again kicks is a you know it's like a field game where it's like it's uh you know the movement of the kicks and you know the vibe and to have that yeah. soundtrack for lack of a better word, playing in the background, the humming, you know, really gives it that, uh, that, that, yeah. you know, the feel of the arcade, but also really sets the atmosphere for the, for the game itself. So it's, uh, it does, and it it captured the the arcade sounds just perfectly. It translated over so well. Yep. Um, but to continue continue on with that line of of, of thinking, um, in in your games, that your team is always able to pull off the best out of the twenty six hundred in terms of graphics and sounds and and the gameplay you you put into it. But, but when you're putting together your team uh, for each game. Uh, I know Nathan Strum is usually go to for graphics. I don't know how many games he hasn't done of yours. Is he's done, easier to yeah. He's done all of them actually. So uh, <laughs> all of them. Yeah. So there you go. You know, Nathan's <laughs> Nathan's the man for that. Yeah. Um, that's easy. But can you tell us how to how you put the the rest of your team together? How it usually comes together and yeah. and at what stage they come in on? Uh, do you contact them or they go? Oh, I can do sounds for that, or I already have something for that. Yeah, sound is usually it's usually a lot of begging going on with the sounding. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, uh, Bob has been extremely grace, uh, gracious with his time. You know, he, he did the original Ladybug. Yeah. He did uh, um, he did Ladybug Arcade, obviously. He did Kicks. Um, Gorf um, that yeah, we're going to look at yeah, in a second. I borrowed sound from S Scramble and Super R over uh, Cobra Arcade from him. Um, right. Yeah, he did, did Gorf. He did. Um, so yeah, it's really uh, potluck. Um, sound sound people are tough tough to come by. And I have Pat Brady <laughs> um, doing the sound for uh, um, Elevator Agent Action. Um, so he yep. started that. That's come along well. Robot War was kind of a freebie, quote unquote, just because I kind of <laughs> borrowed the right. 7800 uh, um, sounds and I, I did some myself. But you know, so it's really kind of patchwork. And then um, Mike Haas did the sounds for. Uh, um, uh, Mappy, um, yeah. So yeah, so he, that was, you know, he he volunteered for that, and and Wizard of War, you know, he did some sounds for as well. So, um, so that, yeah. that was helpful there. And then um, Ross Keenum did all the sounds for Galaga, and those happened to be done beforehand. So, and then he did some director. So, so yeah, right. so it's, yeah. So sound is really tough. So you know, people want to do sounds and they're interested and they want to be a part of Champ Games. You know, we are hiring. So. <laughs> yeah, Always hiring, lots got, of games yeah, so, coming up. Yeah, so for anyone on the stream or anyone that you ever see a game I'm working on, you think that you might want to contribute, yeah. you know, so it's an open door. You certainly welcome it, anyone who uh, that wants to participate. So, um, oh yeah, yeah. And then yeah. and testing, you know, I have uh, the usuals. You know, like you guys do a lot of testing in your your um, your yeah. show. Then we have uh, um, obviously yeah, there's a great yeah team of testers that there's there's like go to testers that are on. Uh, in the community, and yep, oh my god, exactly. there's some real experts at, at diving deep into these games. Yes, yeah. Steve Ramirez, he's done a lot of, ty of um, testing on my games. Um, so, yeah, uh, um, yeah so there's, there's tons of people. I got a list when we get to the brightest spot. <laughs> um, yeah, so you what bet. I've done in these last two games, kicks in a uh, Gorf, I set up a couple exclusive clubs on uh, Atari Age for uh, testers clubs. Um, so that's been helpful because it's a central part where I can post updates and people can comment and stuff like that. So, Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so that and uh, 
I want to mention him, Bomberman94. He's uh, Jorgen Oster. Um, he's done oh, tests yeah. for the last couple games for me uh, for Kicks nice. and Gorf Arcade. Um, so, and he's a PAL guy too, which helps. So he's, mm, you know, comp yes. on colors and how it runs on that system. And then, um, yeah, that's important. I always yeah. forget about that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, um, McAllister, it's Nathan Withy is his name. Um, he's done a lot of testing for me, did a lot of testing for Ladybug Arcade as well. So, uh, so those guys have been great. And then the last guy would be, uh, Tom, Tom Martin. He's, um, um, Machine is his, uh, um, ah. yeah, he's, he's great. Yep. He happened to have a guard. He happened to have a real Gorf arcade machine. So originally Nate wow. shout out to him for colors because apparently the main driver mm. for Gorf is really bad um, as far as the colors are concerned. Uh, so um, there was okay. a lot of back and forth there. And then he ended up joining the uh, testers club and, and um, he, uh, he uh, gave, gave a lot of feedback there as well. So I think he said yeah. that Gorf arcade is so good that he's going to sell his machine if anyone's interested in picking <laughs> one up. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I uh, I can attest to that after playing your games, I am so much better at the arcade versions. So the the feel of a Champ Games game is so it translates perfectly over to playing the arcade. I know my Gala ga game has stepped up um, <laughs> and any of the other games that that you've made as well and I play in the arcade it's like, yeah, I know how to play this now. Oh, it's, uh, that's wonderful it's, to hear. it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I found there's actually a kicks machine which is hard to find these days up in um me, uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Next to me, there's a, a barcade there, which is great. We stopped there, and it happened to have a, they had a Kicks and a Robotron right next to each other. And I, oh, I, wow. I never played Kicks in the arcade. I played, I got like 150 dollars my first game just because I, I never <laughs> went. Wow, this is so nice. <laughs> Getting on the board, exactly. yeah. Uh, Al says he's keeping his Robotron cabinet, though, oh, okay. so he's not ready to give that up yet. <laughs> oh. But yeah, Tanya and I played Robotron in Portland, yeah. and I'm like, oh my god, we're actually good at this game yeah, now. Exactly. Not, not great, but no. we're decent. Yeah. We can like can play it and get through a few levels. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was fun. So all thanks to you and, yeah. and your port of Robotron, it, it really uh, translates well. Oh, it's good to hear. Yeah, I played Robotron. I used to be in intimidated by that game, like when I walked by, oh, I'd my like, god. you know, forget this. Now it's, it's like, like no, okay. no. <laughs> Daddy's home. It's time to play. Yeah. <laughs> Clear some room. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, so so uh, before we move on to uh, Gorf Arcade, anything else you'd like to add about uh, Kicks um, um, before no, we just, go? Yeah, I move just on. wanted to thank everyone that was involved in, in developing it. Obviously, we already had a shout out to Nathan um, for the graphics yeah. um, and uh, Bob for the sound. Certainly, the whole Kicks. Uh, um, testers club as well and, and you guys as well for the time that you spent um debuting on your show and, um and of course uh, always happy yep and uh, pulling it all to together with packaging david Exton, and uh, of course i'm oh, sure yeah. al has been thanked probably a million times so certainly i'll thank him, <laughs> thank him one more time <laughs> ah, throw in another yeah, thing yeah, he, he won't that, mind yeah the effort <laughs> that he puts in just to getting these games together so, so yeah, yeah so yeah, excellent so that, that that's kick so Yep. Oh, so fun. If 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 people uh, have played it before and um, uh, really want to give it uh, give it a shot on the twenty six hundred, this this is uh, a really really good version of it. So great. Thanks. So let's pop that out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Got to move on. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have plenty of time to play it later. That's very true. <laughs> and. Uh, we will move on to the next game, Gorf Arcade. Oh, yes. Dreaded Gorf so Arcade. Here you go. <laughs> Dreaded. Oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> yeah. It's, this it's, game is actually, this is the first time. I haven't done any development. or well, just a little development here and there. Like, last month since PRGE because of this game. It drove me actually insane. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's, this one's like three years in the, in the, in the works. I was, uh, and that is a long time for a development for a Champ Games yes, game. Yeah, we started it a long time ago. And, you know, obviously there were a bunch of games in between. Um, big games, too. But uh, that one, you know, we started in... Uh, 2019, uh, Nathan and I, and uh, I had like the basic stuff going, and uh, um, it took uh, over three years to get this thing completed. So it's, and a lot of it was just trying to fit all five levels into 32K and have it be everything I wanted it to be. Because there's always something, oh, I'm not gonna be able to fit that, not gonna be able to fit that. But I managed to fit everything I wanted into the game, and it took. And I want to thank the 
Gorf Arcade Testers Club because I, I kept coming back with a new version just when we said, we're done. No, we're not done. <laughs> that's what I, <laughs> not that's, quite. That's what I had a dream about yesterday, how to get more ROM. This is what we're going to put in. So anyway. So. <laughs> wow. Uh, another gorgeous box art yeah, box from uh, yeah. Nathan. Yeah, this is from Nathan. Um, yeah, he did a wonderful job. And his theme here, which I thought was uh, very uh, clever, was that uh, since Gorf, you know, the big selling point is, uh, and you will meet a Gorf dude, by the way. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, you um, will. Is that, you know, the five games in one is really its, it's tagline. So um, if you are, if we're, the keen eye will notice that every uh, level is represented somewhere in the box, manual, or the cartridge oh. itself. So, um, nice. Well, we'll try and find some references yeah, exactly. as we open this up. So. <laughs> so here we go. There's the box. Nice. Let's take a look at the cartridge. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Yep. Those blue and complementary orange colors shooting out from the Gorf Arcade title. Yeah, this really is really quite dynamic. Yep, yep. I, I know when we uh, when Nathan first presented this, the first thing that came to mind to me was like one of those 70s um, cartoons. Um, mm. Just yeah. uh, the color palette, the way it's, uh, <laughs> that it's drawn. So it's uh, and. And, and, and as of note, this cartridge label is different than the cover. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So that's awesome. Yeah. So let's pop that in and take a look at the rest of the, the packaging here. So let's look at the manual. And different on the manual cover, too. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so if you notice, oh, that's it, great. The, the, the box art um, cover is the flagship. That is, that's a laser attack. You can see the lasers coming out. Mm. Um, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and the um, cartridge I believe is Space Warp, um, right? And then yeah. the back of the box is um, Astro Battles. I keep calling it something. What's mm. that called? Um, there we go. Or maybe that, that's Galaxian. That's Astro Battles. Yeah, the back of the manual oh, and, is uh, Galaxian. And then you can see all the different screens on the back of the manual yeah, as exactly. well. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. So it was wonderful. This. Uh, yeah, really uh, great use of all the different materials to represent all the different levels in it. And we'll take a quick flip through the manual so people can see the yeah artwork there. Nathan did a great oh, job in this nice. manual. Yeah, this is uh he'll he'll be able to talk better about this, but um or mention maybe well, he, I don't know if he's on the chat, um, but I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, this is based off of uh, an actual um, user's manual from the '80s. That was uh, oh. developed for the uh, um, the arcade game. Uh, it's like a strategy guide type. Uh, it's written as almost like a pilot's um, training manual. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so that's so it's kind of a merge of that. You know, so we took the things that were specific to the arcade out and put the stuff that's specific to our game into it, and um, you know, things for the Atari and stuff like that. So it's uh, been modified slightly, but uh, it is, uh, it's based off of that. And it was a very uh, ingenious idea by, uh, by Nathan to do that. So um, I, I, I love this. Like I'm not really a big manual guy as far as reading them. Um, as sure as a lot of us are, but this one I've actually read like three or four times. It's a, it's a great story and it's a, it really gets you into the uh, mood to play in my opinion. Um, um, so Anyway. That's great. And before I forget, here are the patches yes. that are available to get. Yes, please, please, battle for these patches. I have 790 of these things, um, <laughs> and would really like uh, people to start earning them. I think we've given away 10 so far. Well, not given away, but I have been earned. Um, um, has Has S Ramirez uh, got the top patch yet? I saw he <laughs> no. was challenging it already. Yeah, he's almost there. Um, that one's going to be a tough one to get for anyone, um, but it is possible. <laughs> but there are some. Not easy ones, but you know the novice one is a little bit easy. So, um, so there are. As yeah. Mara says, can't wait to receive mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Al, um, so Al and I and Nathan all worked on those. Nathan did the design. Um, um, I funded the patches, and um, um, I have a um, page on my Champ Game site. It's just basically Champ dot game slash Scorpion dash Legends. It's in the manual itself. That you can uh, visit. Nice. It basically has all the details of the rules and how to play. Um, and then Al um, volunteered um, to uh, um, graciously uh, actually take the patches and ship them out. So, um, um, yeah, so it's, uh, all three of us are working with this uh, promotion, which is what it is. And it's basically for it's a promotion in the sense that it's for people that own the actual cartridge of the game. Um, right. Yeah, so that's the only 
not that it's a caveat, but that's kind of a, um, a prerequisite. Yeah, prerequisite. <laughs> uh, you know, kind of a, a reason to, to buy the uh, cartridge version. Would be, uh, that yeah. You get to participate in this and earn those four patches if you want. So. And as of note, uh, the the poster that comes with it has a uh, language translator yes. on the backs for all the uh, different <laughs> phrases, I'm guessing, yes, that exactly are spoken with the Atari Vox. Yep, yep. Yeah, Nathan, uh, again, Nathan came up with this. Um, great idea. And In case you can't understand what the Atari Vox is saying. Yeah, it's actually, <laughs> he did a great job. It's uh, um, The voice is pretty clear, in my opinion. But, of course, I know what they're saying, yep. so it's... Uh, um, but, yeah, yeah. we did... Uh, Nathan came up with this idea, which I thought was a really unique uh, way to use the back of that. Um, um, plus, uh, yeah, very smart. Yeah, and uh, so for those wondering, it does contain those 30 arcade phrases um, that are all included. And then Nathan came up with 15 other ones that we include in specific parts of the game that um, weren't included in the arcade. So, like, if you get, if you run into, like, uh, if you shoot the Gorf guy on the top, it'll say something different that it doesn't say in the arcade, or you do certain oh, certain, certain nice. special things. So there's uh there's it keeps the game fresh and uh, um, really gives you the sense that you're getting taunted by the Gorfian Empire. And <laughs> we'll inspire you to yeah. get those patches. Please buy the patches. <laughs> oh, believe us, we'll we'll give it a, our attempt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we'll be able to get the first couple levels. But if S. Yeah. Ramirez is still struggling with the the top one, yeah. oh boy, yeah. we have no chance yeah. whatsoever. But sure we'll give it a try. Those. Yeah, but uh, um, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You know, scale down the amount as it goes up because yeah. uh, that might be a bit challenging. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna boot it up. I'm gonna make a slight adjustment to the voice because it does. It's interfering yeah, a little that. bit. That's yeah. Good. Uh, the people out there, it won't it won't change how loud it is for you out there, but it's interfering with the webcam's microphone, and we we don't want to cut out John yes, when yeah. he's talking. So we're gonna boot it up so we can get the voice going, and I can turn it down it? locally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. So let's uh, check it out and boot it up. Uh, go for it. Are you ready? I am the Morphian Empire. That was very clear. Yeah, very I am the Gorfian Empire. Okay, so I'm going to adjust it right now. Okay. So let me just uh, put out the first... Actually, we, let's not adjust it yet. So uh, we'll adjust it, but you play, and um, so we can get the voices in. Yeah. And uh, so we don't get interfering with what John's saying, because I don't want to miss anything. I mean, I do want to see the, the, the scrolling to... screen first, though. I mean... <laughs> sensitive so we'll take a look at the uh some of the credits yep. and uh some yeah. of the screens you always have great great screens in the intro um just like the track modes in the arcade yeah yeah i, I kind of design it so it can sit um at prg or any other convention and run by itself and get people to come by and say hey that looks kind of interesting so uh um so yeah it's demo mode and you know it just keeps the Hopefully it attracts people. Like that's the whole point of attracting them. So, so yeah. So you'll see uh, just a brief uh, part of each game for each uh, level. So. Even know you could hit him right at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, you get big points for that. So. I I uh, it was uh, somewhat accidental, but. <laughs> I'm just gonna reboot it so we can get the voice back. Oh. Huh? I hit Gorf right at the beginning. <laughs> Pretty good. Can you turn it off and turn it back on once more? Ready? Long live more. Okay. Good. Yep. There we go. I think we're pretty good with the levels now. Sorry about that, John. Oh, no problem. Looks good. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> looks really good. Um, so, uh, some people out there might be thinking, didn't Gorf already come out for the Atari 2600 back in 1982? Um, oh, yeah. but, but, what, but once you take a look at the new version that you've made, they'll understand why 
you were inspired to create the new port of the game, and why it has arcade in the title. Um, can, can you go over some of the, the highlights that your new version uh, has um, it, over top of the original 1982 version that was released? Oh, sure, yeah. I, I think I only played the 82 version a few times. I remember we actually had a place next to me that could uh, you could rent games. I rented the Gorf Arcade, ran home. Um, it's a decent port for, I think it's 4K. Um, for yeah. what it is, but you know, just like I think by that time I'd already been into uh, the 800, so uh, you know, my 13 or 14, 14 year old self expected more or wanted more anyway, so I kind of dismissed it. Um, so this is uh, Nathan's favorite game or one of his favorite games. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Nathan, you know, I mean, he's obviously done so much work with Champions of the Year, so when he wants a game done, um, certainly that, that, that kind of moves it. That, you, you, you'll oblige him. Yeah, yeah. that affects priority. And of course, you know, Gorf is an amazing game to begin with. So I, I have fun when we're playing this. Well, yeah, huge variety yep. of, of levels. You're never bored. It's like, okay, finish one level. Oh, this is completely different. Oh, my goodness. It's like, it, like you said, five games in one. Yes, exactly. So, uh, yeah, so as far as uh, I think the uh, 82 version had four of the levels. And I think a lot of the games or home levels only had four because of some issues including the Galaxium's level, like they yeah. owned it or whoever owned it, whatever, I'm not really sure. So that was uh, that was one of the big things that we added was all five levels. Um, the other thing, of course, is, you know, try to improve on the graphics and, and the sound, which I think we did again. Uh, um, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so Bob did uh, all the sounds for this, Nathan did all the graphics, so I, I think both came out amazing. But certainly we have more arcade-like gameplay. Um, I was able to uh, use the uh, uh, the uh, Galaga or Galagon engine that I used, which uh, right. which I used for actually two of these levels, the Astro Battles, um, which gives me allows me to do eight by three um, enemies. I think that the Atari one had you know six by three, so that's the right. original. One. And then of course we were able to put in most of that. Um, well, actually, enemies as well. So it's just good that we, I was able to share some code for that. So, um, and of course, you have the voice, which is a huge addition. Um, so, oh yeah, and, brings it much closer to the arcade yep. version. Yep. So we had done um, you know, the voice for which is War Arcade. So um, the good news, I had some experience with that, and uh, Nathan stepped in and uh, he did all the, uh, the voices for this as well. So um, it was great to be able to drop those in. I think they came out great. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. So th those are probably the big. Those are, those are the big changes. Um, we threw in a challenge mode and some additional um, enemies and, and uh, you know challenges, for lack of a better word. Um, certainly, I think this is a uh, much closer to the arcade, given that you know we certainly have more uh, RAM and ROM. We have the ARM chip, so certainly the uh, the technology behind it um, is, is modern. It's, it's meant to be a modern. You know, upgrade to what we had 40 years ago. I, th I think in that sense we succeeded. So, yeah, there's a lot of little details in here. Like the bottom of the screen has some terrain that's uneven at the bottom. It's 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 uh, you know it's not even a, a mirrored uh, terrain. It's it's uh, different on both sides. So it looks really good in the colors of the ships, uh, multicolored ships, the star field. A uh, 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 changing star field? Did I see it change? Oh. Um, yeah, it'll. Uh, I thought I saw it change. Yeah, it kind of glitters um, or flickers. Yeah. So yeah, there's like the face of drawing two star fields all fitting every frame. So um, yeah, what, um, one thing I ended up adding in is that if you look in the lower right corner, you see a star and a one. That's basically yes. the, uh, the level you're on. Uh, as far as what, what, what your rank is, so there's eight ranks. Oh, that, that's another thing we added. Um, the arcade had six ranks, stopping at Space Avenger. We've added yep. two more ranks, one you know, Space Master, and then the aptly named Space Champion. See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> ah, very clever. Exactly. So, <laughs> so again, that will give you a little bit more replay as far as, uh, um, you know, uh, versus the, the arcade. So you have uh, two more uh, badges to get. So, um, 
Yeah. So anyway, so yeah. And the little and the little touches, like when you shoot a ship and it and it gets destroyed, it it puts its points on the screen. Yeah. So you got to be um, careful not to run into those points because on. <laughs> yeah, because on. Really? Uh, yeah, on uh, arcade and challenge mode, and this is an arcade feature. Is that if you run into the score, you actually lose. Uh, you, you you lose a life. That's that's only for advanced because we meant advanced to be uh, right. um, so much of arcade. So. Deadly score, deadly, deadly. Yeah, exactly. So and actually, it's funny because Nathan actually came up with a uh, a, a saying for that. So if it does happen to you, it'll, it'll it may say something that you hadn't heard before, and it's uh, it's taunting. Uh, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, so so a lot of the um, um, I want to thank the whole Dwarf Arcade Testers Club because we spent almost all summer testing it and and really uh, tuning the uh, difficulty ramping. So that way, like, it's uh, still challenging, but I'm not going to be too frustrated. To him, so, so I want to thank that, that whole team. That would be Steve, Machine, you know, Tom, Nathan did a lot of testing, uh, Bomberman again, and Nathan uh, uh, with it as well. So, uh, their, their feedback really helped, uh, you know, really tune this game. It's probably the most tested game I've ever had. So, really, so, so right. that was very helpful. So. And, and it probably would uh, you would need to do a lot of testing because of the nature of how many levels this game has yes. and, and probably why uh, the development time was was longer than say other games because it, it really is multiple games in one and and quite I mean they're all space shooters but they're all quite different layouts they're different movements of the characters and they have different characteristics like this is shooting lasers it's like well that's completely different than other things and then the huge ship going across the screen completely different yeah uh, kind of kernel that you'd have to make absolutely yeah well, what i would find myself doing is working on one level you know certainly i got all five ready for the uh, demo which i think was last december perhaps i'm not sure when i originally released the first demo but i, I thought it was like last year like on new year's eve or something like that um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I got all five kind of in a playable state, but then what would happen is, you know, I'd spend uh, you know, two or three weeks just fine tuning one. And I went, okay, now I got to go show laser attacks <laughs> some love, you know, it hasn't, you know. So, yeah. 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 There was a lot going back to name. Actually, there was like a change I made right at the end for Astro Battles where how they were advancing was different than when I had. I played the arcade and went, wait a minute, this seems a little different. And then, uh, you know, so I sent yes. to the. the you know, the club saying, I made a huge change to Ash Metals. Please test this. Apologies. Please completely test it all over exactly. again. <laughs> but, you know, luckily we all agreed within a day that, you know, this is much better. And, uh, you know, certainly it's closer to the arcade. Business. That's great. Um, so, Bob DeCrescenzo let it slip yesterday that you're helping him out with some new 7800 titles. Oh, yes. Yep, uh, yep. Certainly after all, uh, <laughs> all Bob has done for, for me, um, this is the least I can do is try to help. So, yeah, I'm not really a 7800 yeah. developer. We have had a <laughs> Zoom call where he tried to explain to me, and uh, um, I kind of yeah. understand the basics of uh, how it works and DLIs and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of... It's all, right. it's all new for me, but luckily the underground, uh, you know, it's all assembly, which, you know, same right. to assembly, so I understand what's going on. It's, uh, um, so, yeah, so I'm helping out with uh, Defender, uh, and also That's right. and Nathan Strum and I are helping with, uh, with uh, Adventure 3 that he's working on as well. So right now it's just designed for that, but for Defender, it's really, I'm trying to help him up with, uh, like, a multitasking engine to uh, help uh, be able to move and process all 64 enemies in a frame. So, so mm. yeah, so we definitely have our work cut out for it. But uh, the good news is it'll expose me to 7800 uh, development, and you know, maybe one day, you know, I may uh, take That's that right. dive for you'll, games as well. You'll t turn to the dark side, yeah, and exactly. uh, we'll, so. we'll hear some pokey tunes come out of a uh, Champ Games game. Yep, that'd be kind of fun. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Be <laughs> no longer limited to the TIA. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so that'd be nice. Yeah. Well, that that is very exciting and and very interesting yep. to to possibly uh, see that in the future. Yeah, certainly seventy hundred. Want to get into and uh, also uh, you know at some point I want to get uh, get into uh, eight eight bit fifty two hundred album as well. So that's great. Just, uh, Cover all all the bases. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> try to keep things fresh. You know, Twenty six hundred. Just. With these two games, that gives me 13 games released, so it's a uh, um, fairly right. short amount of time. So it's uh, 
Oh yeah. Yeah, feeling. We can re re release all the games yet again on the next system, yeah. and then the next <laughs> system again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Trying to trying to balance between ports and you know make that dive into the uh, original game. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. You know, yeah. For next year, we basically and, have a uh, elevator agent and turbo arcade that I'd like to complete. So. Uh, um, yes, turbo arcade's pretty far far along. Yeah. Is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, turbo arcade's yeah pretty pretty. Playable. Um, we had it at a PRG. And people seem to be really interested in that one. And I meant to have a elevator agent or action ready for PRG. I just uh, just kind of ran out of time and uh, sanity. That yeah. One, so, uh, but, <laughs> uh, but I am I am hoping to try to get you know a playable version and have it. Hopefully, uh, if you guys have time on Zero Page Homebrew before the end end of the year. So. Yeah, we've got we've got quite a number of. I mean, we're going to take about a, a two week break before yeah. before the end of the year, but we have plenty and plenty of shows yeah, so, uh, before that happens. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying uh, to get back to that. So, uh, and then we're, obviously excellent. we're always working on you know four or five other little uh, secret or not so secret uh, um, projects as well. So I'm moving into one. So yeah, and, and like other ones that have been mentioned along the way like the baseball game the hockey game and yep. those are some of the original yep. ones like yep. the champs sports line that you've uh, uh taunted us with uh they look everything we've seen so far looks absolutely excellent so we're, i'm really excited about that personally oh wonderful i did actually start um champ sports hockey which you'll be happy to know oh. so yeah so oh wow a lot of that yeah, just, I would... uh, just kind of reverse engineering what they did in regular ice hockey because i want to use the missiles for your stick as well um so uh, so okay. i do have that work which is good so it's uh um, oh that's awesome yeah, so we have the players you know got the scrolling rink so it's going to be kind of like ice hockey Ooh. too i said it's going to be uh you know i love the rawness of the ice hockey too it's really hockey down to its basics but you know yeah point, ice hockey the is so much fun yes. the activision game yeah, yeah. So i want to retain that but also have options where you know you can have offsides and the blue line and you know uh fighting yeah fighting um <laughs> you know, checking you know uh, uh nice you know things like that so people that want to have more of a you know a simulation type game where it's uh, more like hockey have that option you can yeah. turn them off and just you know throw it on the gloves and start beating them. <laughs> that's great yes. and uh al asks about curling uh <laughs> yeah probably not <laughs> any probably not no, yeah, yeah but let, uh, let, you never know yeah if you want that you go uh, there's a great version for the 52 <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah that's right uh anything else you'd like to add before we let you go uh no just uh you know thanks everyone again for supporting champions it's appreciated um and, you know, thanks to the whole team i know thank them a few times I want to thank Al for his hard work. I know he's uh, diligently trying to get these games in the store. These people are peppering me with questions, asking when they can buy this cartridge. Um, this cartridge. Right. So you know, um, I, I know that's uh, that's coming soon. And you know, thanks to Al yep. for all his hard work for that. So, uh, and um, yeah, that's it. So um, if you do buy Gore, please try for the patches. Um, I think it's a good. Thing. Oh yeah. Uh, I also have. If you go to that web page. I'm also posting high scores too. So it's a global high score table as well. So. Oh, uh, excellent! Yeah, so That's not, great. Yeah. So anyone that does a, a patch, um, you'll get to see so see the game lights as well. And um, <laughs> that's it. And I do have. Um, if anyone's interested, I know you can't see it. I'm wearing a four five kid shirt right now, but. Uh, you can imagine um, it. Yeah, we do mind. have some shirts left. Um, if anyone's interested, just send me a pin. You know, and you have uh, general champ game shirts yes, as I well. Yeah, I have a bunch of those, I mean, um, and uh, just a few Corp Arcade ones that actually sold fairly well for PRG, but um, a few left, and I have sold a few already. So people are interested. Nice. So, and yeah, if you want a champion, so we have a black, blue, various sizes. So uh, um, again, it's, if people are interested, so if not, I'll <laughs> drag them along for the next PRG. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, and uh, Nathan Strom has posted some links in the chat uh, to the uh, patches for Garf Arcade. Oh, Thank wonderful. you so much, Nathan. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. And, and, and Steve uh, S. Ramirez is wearing his Garf Arcade shirt right now in, in honor <laughs> oh, right. of uh, us showing off your new game. Oh, awesome. Appreciate that. So. <laughs> well, thank you so much, John, yep. for joining us today. And congratulations on these two releases. They're both unbelievably excellent, as always. Great. And, th and thanks. Uh, thanks to you and Tanya for taking the time to show this off. And this whole 
Atari HD. I know Al appreciates it. I know the whole community appreciates it. It's a nice way for people oh, that don't, thank you. yeah, that don't get to go to the shows as well to see all these games up front and yeah. you know, hopefully that's right. Get out there and support your local developer. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good reference point for people wondering about the games mm-hmm. and some background about the games, and they can see a bit of gameplay as well. Yep, absolutely. All so, in one go. Okay. Well, thanks. So guys. thanks so much, John, and we'll talk with you soon. Wonderful. Thanks. Bye. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Excellent. We're catching up now. A little bit. <laughs> oh, cats. Pushing the... Oh, can you... T- <laughs> That's enough out of you, Long Gorf. live Gorf. Long live Gorf. <laughs> Haha, I've defeated Gorf by pulling it out of the cartridge slot. <laughs> Haha, I beat the game. <laughs> oh my goodness, so many games. Atari ages. Uh, ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding, ding time. Yeah, they are getting a bit antsy. Mm. So it might be time for some treats again for these cats. Let's, let's, after 10, he gets her treat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, a smart thing to do is to feed these cats. Because uh, both of them are kind of jumping around, especially, yep. especially Atari. Although, um... Oh, Sprite. Sprite is at her feet right now. Yeah, very he's pretty cuddly. calm. He's very cuddly. So. so if you want to get that out, yeah. and I'll uh, man the camera over here. Thank you for the reminder, Al. Yeah, they need their, they need their break time. They do. We'll try to set them up down here. And switch over to the webcam. No, don't bat that. Okay, let me come around that, to that side. Let's see how this works out. Sorry. I'm sit here. There we go. There we go. There's my feet. <laughs> have some treats. Okay, how about there? Oh. <laughs> He's on it. <laughs> yeah. Atari looks so much bigger from this angle. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're monster cats. Rawr. Ding, ding, ding. Who got well, that? that's a pretty good view, actually. There you go. Yeah. That's not bad. Atari. Atari is mischievous. He is. He's a naughty cat. He will. Yeah. Okay. You both hit it. I'll, I'll the this. worst thing he does is when we have cables out, like this whole setup. I'm. I forgot to post the picture, but I'll post the picture of our setup after, um, after the broadcast. He likes very specific types of cables. Not just any cables, they have to be braided cables. You know, the ones that have texture to them? And he will chew down on them, unfortunately. Atari didn't ring the bell. He kind of did. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt because... Oh, cat bum. Sprite is... Yeah, no kidding. Sprite is, like, taking over a little bit. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Atari, (laughs) there you go. Yeah, good, Sprite. Oh, you're so cute. Atari, yeah, we've, you gotta move your butt. We've tried to, like, Atari uh, was a bit chonky. Okay, move on this butt. side. Yeah, over there. Atari was a bit chonky uh, earlier, so we've kind of tried to put him on a little bit of a diet, yeah. and, and now he's down to a pretty good weight. Yeah, Atari, so are you gonna do it too? Good. Kids. No, we didn't find the other treat. We'll probably find it when we move, but at least they've stopped looking for it. Okay, are we good? We're good. We're yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Satiated yeah. cats. Satiated happy. for now. Good kitties. That was a nice shot. Yeah, not bad. We'll use that next time. <laughs> Excellent. So we are on to the next guest. If you want to reboot the laptop, actually, really quickly, immediately, right now. Like a reboot. heavy sixer. Reboot. That's, that's Can you the reboot kind of the laptop? Reboot it? Yeah, it's just because of the problems. Just, just Skype or the whole laptop? The whole laptop, please. All right. Just in case, because I think it's Skype that's crashing, but we no, don't really know. So our next game is Raptor, and we're gonna have Andrew Polly join us very shortly, as soon as the laptop reboots. It's reboot? quite quick, so. Mm. So let me get Raptor out. You can put uh, mm. Gorf Arcade down there if your hands are dry enough. I don't know if it came through yesterday. I was quite panicky about everything yesterday. Um, Because I was rushing around, trying to get everything set up, and it didn't help that we had an audio issue. 
Mm. I mean, everyone else out there could hear everything. Of course, because the mics here. we couldn't hear but... our guests. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. It's a problem with using Bluetooth. They don't last very long. No. So and I think for go... long broadcasts, we're going to go wired each time. Well, wired is for the For the single interviews, oh, that's it's fine. Because fine. Yeah. it goes for like two or three hours. Yeah. So. Yeah, the wire does. No, no, no. I'm okay. Oh, okay. I heard something crackle. No, That's all. No, so let's put the box up here. Okay. All rebooted. There we go. Cat, there's nothing over here for you. Nothing at all. Less snacks, more catnip. <laughs> yeah, we don't have the catnip. Uh, S. Ramirez says, uh, James, your voice is holding up very well over these past two days. Yeah. Uh, it was a tiny bit hoarse at the end of yesterday, but uh, today it, it recovered fairly well. And uh, I cut my finger yesterday setting up. I think it was when I was moving the computer in and out to connect things. Um, that's why I had a Band-Aid on yesterday, but it's fine today. I didn't have, don't have to have a Band-Aid. Right. I'm going to connect up. We're back. Andrew, we are going to call you. Is it coming through? Um, yeah. That looks weird. Oh, no. Let me reset it. It'll be fine in about one second. It's probably because we rebooted it. There we go. Connected. Oh, ah! Kitty! <laughs> Hello, Kitty. What's that Kitty's name? Uh, this is Mr. Bingley. Oh, hello, Mr. Bingley. How are you today, <laughs> fluffy cat? And Aww. Mr. Darcy's around here somewhere. He's usually the troublemaker. Nice. This is the oh, yeah. one. And believe it or not, this was the runt of the litter. Oh, oh boy. And right, no like more. This in the screen. Yeah. <laughs> He's a well-fed cat. Yeah. Happy, happy kitty. He just want to say hi. Hi, Hello, Mr. Kitty. Bingley. Well, we all love our cats, and yeah, uh, especially Jane Austen themed cats. <laughs> <laughs> ah, is that the uh, that the name? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much. Welcome to the stream, Andrew. Thank you once again for uh, talking with us about your your game. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So it is Raptor, and let's take a look at the box and doing some do some unboxing. Maybe you can tell us uh, a bit about the box and the artwork, and I believe you did the artwork uh, no. for everything. No. <laughs> no. Oh, I have you down for packaging. I am incorrect. Um, Herbie Holler, who also did Dog On It, um, did this. Um, he's my wife's cousin, and this is his. You know, this is what he does for a living. So I, oh. I just threw him some uh, what I call fancy beer money his way, and uh, <laughs> set some time out of his day and uh, do it together. I kind of like do out some rough ideas, and uh, he just um, kind of took off with it. I, I said I want an '80s looking, maybe Tron esque, you know, some kind of grid, and then he just kind of took it from there. Um, you know, even though I was paying him beer money, he was very professional about it. He would throw together some, uh, you know, sketches, and then like, hey, what do you think about this? And then, you know, it kind of advanced to what it is today. So the box. The original idea, and it kind of is that, is a recruitment poster. Ah. So the game is uh, like a simulation that the United States Air Force put together to find their next generation of pilots um, based on the 80s popularity of the Atari 2600. <laughs> so okay. we kind of will. It had a lot more text on it to begin with. I have my copy here. Uh, oh, um, wow. One of the few developers. Yeah, has a copy I was of their own game. To get RGE, so I bought I bought a couple of my own mm -hmm. game. Hope that's okay. Because uh, <laughs> I, I didn't have any, you know, here I was playing on my, uh, you know, Harmony cart. But um, so we took some of the text out, and, and it's, I think it's got a cleaner look with the some of the text removed. And then on the back, yeah, very clean. The, uh, yep. Kind of like a little story about how the recruitment program was a secret, but now you know a copy of the simulation was found in an abandoned warehouse and. Now it's for everybody uh, to know about. That's a great backstory. I always, I, I'm always interested in backstories of games. I mean, yours is a little bit more grounded than some space shooters with UFOs and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's a really uh, creative backstory for the game. 
And then the manual, I think Herbie did a really good job. Um, first of all, the spiral effect on the on the oh, body yeah. came out really nice. Um, he threw in some extra. Like, well, first of all, he made it weather looking. So like, yep. some of the text and the images are, are faded for uh, you know on purpose. And then like, there's the edge on the cover, um, like, like somewhat torn. Um, his idea was to put the newspaper clipping on the inside first page. And the coffee cup stain, he just threw all nice. that in there. It was really, really cool. Um, I was really pleased. My wife says this oh, is better yeah. than doggone. I have a soft spot for doggone, but she's like, this is <laughs> way course. better. So he has a lot of thought put into this, uh, and and right on theme. It's it's really gorgeous. I love the ring oh, binder. It, it really all looks realistic yeah, on camera. Yeah, it does. <laughs> like you can't tell on camera. This is not a ring bound book. Yeah. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, my copy. I mean, it just looks really good. I was really pleased. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep. There's some some of the other pages. Got some screenshots. We've got uh, the uh, enemies and rankings, or the rankings, not the enemies. Um, and there's so, the back. Yeah, so the classified. very last page. There's a paperclip, and uh, because it's supposed to be a book, and the manual has to be, you know. Uh, a multiple four there's a page missing right? uh, and, and then the back yeah. inside cover is missing so i'm like okay what do we do here so we decided to put a paper clip there to kind of like symbolize that you can't see the page um uh, and the inside okay. of the back cover. and i was going to be kind of mean and say uh cheat codes on the last page which we <laughs> but we, we didn't do that oh very clever very funny uh, I love the creativity um, of of this uh, manual and box art and all the creativity of all of these boxes and manuals. It's just off the charts, really. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really excellent. So let's power up the game and uh, take a look at it. Go for it. Um, so can you talk a little bit about your decision to make the game 4K. Um, it, was it motivated by the challenge to keep it confined to a smaller size or to work with something that you were comfortable with as doggone it was also a 4K game? I'm definitely more comfortable with the 4K game and I think I mentioned this at PRGE. It, it, it's a hard ceiling for me because if I, if I try to do more than 4K I, I would never get it done. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, and you know, I think that's what my wife likes. You know, we, when, when are you gonna be done? You know, um, <laughs> that's right. So stick to the smaller, simpler games that you have a, a not a time limit, but a space limit, which equals out to a time limit. Right, because then, I mean, I had a little bit of okay, what else can I fit in? But you kind of get more. All right, if I fit this in, I have to take this out. Um, yeah, I, th I think it'd be a bad thing for me to try to do something really, really large. Now, <laughs> I've read about bank switching. I think I could pull that off. Um, right. But, you know, for now, I think the 4K thing works really well for me. And um, it, it is a challenge. And, you know, it's, it, yep. it, it, it's kind of fun to, to keep it to that limit. And, and to squeeze out as much fun out of the game as you can within the 4K limit and to make it look as good and sound as good and have as much graphics in the 4K. And I think you've gone above and beyond. And it really um, harkens back to early days of Atari games where, you know, they were restricted not by, you know, they're restricted by time, but also by the cost of the... Uh, the memory that is able to be put into the cartridge so they really had to work within confines as well and uh this really reminds me of of those act like say activision games um that really squeezed out the fun out of uh, small cartridge sizes yeah i think i've read or you know they the atari employees have like six months and they say go make a game <laughs> for me i have to be a year right i took me about a year yeah after so <laughs> Well, it's, it's great that there's the extra time that you guys have as developers to, to work on these games so that there's there's no bugs and you get suggestions from, from you know, your beta testers and, and uh, 
other people, like some some people release the games into, oh my God, the cats are crazy, <laughs> onto the forums to get suggestions and feedback as well. So it, I, I really appreciate the extra time and there is more than enough games going around to, oh my God, <laughs> in, in the... Uh, in the community to keep everyone busy and happy and playing games all year long. Um, yeah, I think so one of the I, key things that uh, one of my teachers told me about was a status bar. And uh, I think uh, I mentioned yes. this previously, but it's like, I didn't even think about that. And he's like, I really want that status bar. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So it, the uh, overheat laser bar was one big one. So I had to split that up. Um, I'm not sure, I can't remember if I had to compromise something to make that work. I might have done some code reduction, um, but yeah. I'm really glad he pushed for it because I think it makes the game way better. Oh, oh so much better. It's, it's great to have as many displays on the screen as possible, especially with like a, a semi-simulation game. It's like having all the readouts if you were, yeah. if you were in something like the Raptor. You can see like, oh, how far along am I? How many points do I have? Am I overheating like Tanya's? <laughs> right now. I was now. showing that off. Yeah, she's just demonstrating I'm the just overheating. Demonstrating the yeah. overheating. <laughs> well, another thing I think I mentioned this previously is um, I had my brother come over and he, he was playing it. And I can't stress enough of live viewing a playtest. I mean, it's one thing to get feedback, yes. like, hey, this is really frustrating. You got to change this. But when I saw my brother playing it and like his blood pressure rising, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I can see exactly when. And uh, so, you know, we right. made, I made some changes based on that. That was just really valuable to sit here and watch him play. Oh, yeah. It's really great. And, and um, when I play the games on the show, I think that sometimes helps out the developers too like you said seeing live play testing instant instant feedback and i bet at like say prge when you were there um standing around and watching people play your game and seeing how they play it and probably a lot of them didn't say look at the instructions and right. they just st stepped right up to the game picked up the joystick and started playing it and uh i bet that that kind of feedback is invaluable yeah, I think that really tells you like how pick up and playable is it. And uh, I think John was mentioning he he nudged a couple of people on on kicks. And of course, Raptor is not as complicated yep. as kicks, but I, you know some people they struggle with it. Um, some of the finer elements like the bombs, because it's you know it's really yep. not self described in the game itself. You, you do have to know about that ahead of time. Yeah, uh, that's one reason that we got the manual all done before we released the the ROM. Just so I want all the yeah. information out there. Um, yeah, because the Atari only has one button, essentially, on its most basic form. So if it was a multiple button joystick, the, uh, the the special bomb in the game would be a little bit more obvious. But So it's very, very smart to, to have the manual ready before anybody uh, picks it up. Yeah, I spent a couple weeks on that bomb code because I was getting frustrated when it was going off accidentally, so... That's right, yeah. It's it's the, the nice balance that you have to strike between, uh, you know, the sensitivity of things right. in the game. Yeah, yeah, I have, like, two timers, so you have to push the button, let go, push the button, and then let go again before the bomb goes off. Because at right. the same time, you're trying not to overheat, so you're, you're pulsing your legs. <laughs> So it, That's right. at first it was, you hit it, let go, and hit it, but I kept setting it off. So adding that let go yes. again, within a certain time frame, um, I thought was the right balance. And then the difficulty switch allows you to either detonate it while you're, you're moving or not moving. So as uh, just yes. get used to it, do it, where, I think, on, um, on B, where it will not detonate if you're moving. And then it's kind of more of a conscious decision to, to set off the boomerang bomb. Yeah. And uh, how much time did you spend on the game balancing for the overheating as well? Because that is like a timed thing, how long you hold down the button and how fast it recovers as well. Uh, I don't remember exactly. I did play with, okay, I wanted the bar raft, you know, to be so big. So then it's like doing the math for, you know, to fill it up. Um, the, but I will say the game was actually done about a year ago. I finished sometime like yeah. early November, but we just kept playtesting it. 
and mm. uh, didn't find too many bugs. We found a few, but it was more like okay, the status bar. Let's add that back. Um, right. The mentioning of because then when we had the status bar, the laser bar got much smaller. So mm. doing that to make sure yep. that was right. Um, you know, try to make it come out to like I think it's exactly three seconds when you overheat. I mean, when mm -hmm. you overheat, you only have thirty seconds. Uh, no, no laser. Um, but then we spent probably a month or two trying to get the balance of the enemy uh, selection right and how it advanced and, and difficulty. So um, I don't know; it's hard to say. It's kind of all the blur, to be honest with you. <laughs> I bet it, it all merges into each other. And and there's a comment from uh, the chat from Dionoid from Dion uh, it says this is such a colorful game and it plays really smooth excellent and uh, that is one of the big factors in this game it really plays it's very responsive and very very um, really fun to play mm -hmm. like it's one of those games where you just want to pick it up and one more try one more mm -hmm. try right <laughs> And yeah, it actually turned out better than I thought, and I think I talked about the PRG too. Is like you're, you're, you know, you're programming, you're worried about graphics and glitches, and it's like, is this fun? And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as you're playing yourself over and over again, you might convince yourself it's fun, but that's why obviously you have play testers, and then you know, I have <laughs> kids. Right. I'm like, hey kids, what do you think? And of course they're like, oh, we want to play me, but jump daddy, you know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> they, they were into this. Shout out to Dion. Much. Yeah, he, he knows. Yeah. I, I met him at PRG. What a swell guy. Um, yeah, yeah. And for like load runner. Um, is yes. And I guess maybe oh, to all really your viewers is. now, this would be a good time to go to the bathroom. Because we had all these great games up until now. And after we <laughs> have all these great games. Take the bathroom break right now. Oh, no, 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 no. No, not now. Don't miss, don't miss this game. Um, so there's something very special you did with this game and offering a patch to people where they achieved a certain score in the game, like even before it was released um, uh, in box form. Um, did you yourself earn any of the Activision patches in the 80s or have any of them now? I and, didn't. Um, no, I, I, I think we tried. When I say we, yeah. I lived in a neighborhood and uh, we actually formed an Atari club. I can't remember what our name was. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. I had a next door neighbor. He was a little older than I was. And he had an Atari and on snow days, we'd go over and play, because he had, like, the the, the non-Atari games. He had the Magic games. Um, okay. I had the Activision ones. But I do remember we wrote Activision as a club, and they wrote back. And Ooh, sent, wow. uh, like, a catalog. And that was, like, really cool, you know. Uh, but no, I didn't. And um, I do remember I played Grand Prix over and over and over again oh, until yeah. I perfected to the best of my ability, the first level. And I did take a picture of it with a Polaroid. I don't remember what <laughs> I did. With the flash off? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't remember oh. what I did with it, but I do remember, yeah. I think that was one I was applying for a patch for, but I don't remember if I ever sent it in or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, talk a little bit about um, how people can achieve a patch uh, uh, by playing the game and, and uh, what score and how to get the patch. Yeah, so all you gotta do is score a thousand points. Um, and they send me a PM on Atari Age, send me a screenshot. Um, you can do it on an emulator if you want, I don't care. Um, <laughs> and then I'll send you a patch, no questions asked. Um, I can't remember now like how many countries and continents we've se I've sent patches to. Um, nice. you know, most of them are here in the United States, but uh, I got one in Germany, a couple in Australia, two in Chile, um, one in the UK. Um, Texas, if you consider that another country, sometimes they, <laughs> <laughs> they might consider yeah, it like, another country. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Ramirez, One day, maybe. Yeah, he really he crushed it. Um, oh yeah, of course, yeah. But yeah, I, it's just one of those things. You, you know, this is my second game. I just want, hey, I'll just do a patch game. Um, oh yeah. And I thought it fit really well. But one of the things I wanted to do too, and this game is kind of inspired by a couple of games that I played when I was younger. 
Um, one yep. being stampede, he kind of has that stampede element of getting it by you. Does with the multiple things going across the screen, you have to kind of manage them, and and some are going faster, some are going slower. I can see that connection. Yeah, yeah. and you know, there's no lot. I mean, it's lots of walls, but you lose like yeah. over life if they get by you. And then I, as a child, I love playing space attacks. Not, I know it's not the greatest game in the world, but the crosshairs where you're trying to shoot the objects flying around. So I really want to get okay. crosshairs. And then Star Raiders um, with a ranking. So, okay. And at the end of the game, you get a Predator ranking. And uh, I thought it would be kind of cool to do, and it turned out pretty well. But what I found is, like, with my kids, um, my son had a friend over yesterday, and they were playing Atari. And they did play Raptor, like, once or twice before moving on. But they were like, oh, yeah, Daddy, I, I got a Fox ranking. And, you know, and his friend only yeah. got Mantis because he only played it once or twice. But, you know, it kind of sets yeah. up this uh, hierarchy where you can, like, achieve, like, many goals. Like, you, you don't have to be a Raptor ranking and get a patch to be successful. You can kind of, like, oh, well, next thing I can get to Viper or Lion. So, you know, yeah. it's kind of a cool thing. And I, I don't think I've ever asked if it's of anyone, but you've already started sending out patches and you've set a certain score in the game uh how do you feel about the score you set for the patch now because i know early activision games the patch scores were really easy and by the end they, they even stopped doing patches but towards the end the patch scores got really hard and then you look at a magic patch scores impossible like i'm not even close to getting the magic patch scores uh, they all they almost seem like like, really, really impossible to get. So how do you feel about the score you set? Mm, I would say I probably felt a little on the harder side. I didn't want it to be too easy. I wanted it to be something like, okay, yeah. I really earned it. Um, now, I wanted yeah. it to be an even number. I wanted it to be 1,000. Like, right. I don't want to be, all right, yeah. 937 is the patch score. You know, that would be kind of odd. <laughs> That's kind of weird, right? Yeah. So, you know, it was kind of... I wanted it to be a thousand, and then it, I tried to make it such that it ramped up in a nice way. And once you get to about 700 or so points, it's based on the level. It really doesn't get any harder until you hit a thousand, right. and then you start sending the enemies um, a little bit faster. So it's probably a little on the hard side, but I think that's okay. Um, yeah. only, I ordered, only ordered a hundred patches, and I'm actually giving a lot of those away. And <laughs> like fr friends and family. Oh, I'll take a patch. You know, oh, okay. Oh, okay. But, yeah, because um, I was wondering how many you've sent out and how many you have left and you're feeling on like, oh, maybe I set it too low and I'm giving out way too many and I won't have any left. Because when I played the game, I thought I thought it was a pretty decent score that you set. It's You're not going to achieve it like maybe even in one sitting, possibly, depending on your skill level. So it, I feel it's it's achievable, but you have to work for it. I agree. And I think that, that's a really, yeah. Yeah, and I think one thing uh, people contact me. That's been pretty cool because people contact me. It's like, hey, I didn't know you, and you kind of start this, you know, uh, not relationship, but you get to know more people on the Atari age. And I just yeah. asked him. I said, how long did it take you? And I think he said, <laughs> like ten to twelve hours. And cool. I kind of blown yeah. away by like, wow, you spend that much time playing my game. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that, cool. that's another reason I like the patches because it gets people playing the game to at a really high level, like an intense level. They're really figuring out how to maximize their score or how to max use, you know, especially in your game, the the special bomb at the right points. Like, oh, I have to save it for there and oh this is a good tactic to do like um smoked uh 3d4 is asking is is there a reason that the aiming disappears occasionally yeah and so, um uh, yeah one of the enemies is a i call him a jammer it looks like he's got horns it's supposed to be like some kind of an antenna so the code only allows one jammer on the screen at a time but when the jammer's on there your um advanced targeting system as i call it disappears so the idea I kind of had was, well, that's going to make you use tracer fire to try to aim, which will then lead yeah. to overheating more more often. So that's usually right. try to get rid of the jammer first so you get your crosshairs back. Um, yeah, so that's that's like a tactic that I use. It's like you really want to get rid of that jammer as quickly yeah. as possible. And then there's the other vehicle where if you hit it, 
you're, you don't overheat at all. So that's another tactic. Like you want to go for that one immediately. Yeah. So you can just hold down the button and just strafe everything. Yeah, when you shoot the plutonium truck, you because the simulation is uh, you know some terrorist organization is trying to smuggle out plutonium, blah blah blah. So yeah. when you <laughs> shoot the plutonium truck, you get a power up, and uh, yeah. then you can't overheat. And then uh, of course the power up uh, time is showing where the laser overheat is going backwards and you turn blue. So it kind of makes you invincible. The key, to, I think, Raptor is you got to avoid the skyscraper, which makes you overheat. Yes. And, uh, yeah. It, That's a real you kind of have to like learn how to fly around it, and uh, you sometimes you let some enemies go and you catch up with them. The yeah. the raptor is always as fast or faster than all the enemies. The rocket yeah. truck is as fast, but it will you know it's it goes fast and it slows down. Oh, that's the tough one. That one drives me crazy. So and then when the shields um, come into play, it makes it obviously even harder. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, and I think the biggest tactic in this to learn is how long to hold down the button when you're shooting the enemies. It's, it's, you have to find the perfect amount of, like, I would call strafing, I guess. Yep. Um, you don't want to hold it too short because you're probably going to miss the vehicle as you kind of move by, move your reticle by it. But you don't want to hold it down too long because you're going to overheat. So there's a lot of tactics going on. Uh, in in what seems to be on the surface of a fairly simple point and shoot kind of shoot everything on the screen game, but it's not lat. It's it's there's a lot of tactics going on. Yeah, I usually I try straight up and down when you know they're kind of in a line. Um, but yes. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos of people playing. I'm like, well, oh, okay, they do a little bit differently, and they've had a lot of success <laughs> with it. So, um, yeah, just don't overheat and uh, don't let them get by you. It sounds simple, but I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it gets hard especially in the upper levels where there's areas where you can't shoot them they're they're safe areas uh for the for the enemy that's and they, then they start moving and then oh my god it gets out of control with those guys that speed up and slow down it it ramps up difficulty especially after a thousand points it's just like wow now one thing i'll throw out there uh once you get to a thousand when, when the power-ups are, uh, or the plutonium trucks are less often, but when you get one, mm. it's actually better because the enemies come at you faster. You can actually shoot more in the same amount of time. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. And then I'll throw out another little thing I kind of discovered is, once you get to a thousand points, they're all coming out. The basically there's a timer that randomizes when they come out. The timer gets shortened, so they'll come out mm. more faster. So what you want to do is get the skyscraper um, misaligned with them if they're in a line. So if the skyscraper and oh, they don't come out okay. in line one time, just go ahead and use a bomb and get the skyscraper off. And then as you shoot them, they kind of get more randomized. It's when they're all right, in the right. line is the big problem. Yeah, so. yeah. So uh, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, are there any uh, upcoming games you'd like to talk about that you're working on or thinking about or anything else you'd like to add about uh, Raptor? No, I'm playing Load Runner. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Occupied with Load Runner. All, yeah, all production has stopped with all developers. Everybody's playing Load Runner. <laughs> yeah. I picked that up at PRG. Um, playing Blocks. Picked that up at PRG. And uh, nice. no, I, I've got a couple ideas for a couple games. Um, I just want to kind of maybe pick something that's going to challenge myself a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, you know, all these guys are making these games. These are the smart guys. All these guys, you know, they are <laughs> software background, um, programmers background. I'm a mechanical engineer by background. So, like, I think differently, simply. Mm. Um, yeah. So I don't want to take anything away from these other guys, but I have to put a lot of work into my games to make them, <laughs> to make them work. And I see some well, it shows. On, well, I see some discussions on Atari Age, and it's like, over my head. <laughs> Especially when it comes to the hardware. So I've got a couple of games. I, I want to you know, push the envelope for Andrew Pauly, so we'll see. Yep. A couple of mechanics I want to try out. And it'll be a long, slow process, I'm sure. Well, but we're looking nothing, forward to it. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Dog on it, and I and I really enjoy this game. This is uh, a fun pick up and play type game that you just want to keep trying yeah. over and over. And you jump right into the gameplay. Yeah, there's no it's fiddling go. around. It's like you go, and it's and it's a challenge from the first screen. I find like you, it oh. ramps up 
as really well as yeah, well, too. Yeah, I want to say it that. It starts off a little easier, and then you're adding elements to it as you go up each level. And but it's never boring nope. right from when you play, no matter how good you are at the game. It's like, okay, we're in it. Go. Let's go. <laughs> there's no slowdown. There's no. no pauses. It's go, go, well, that's, go. Yeah, that's it's kind of really one of good. continuous experience. So it, they, uh, yeah. they're coming at you in waves, and then you have the, uh, you know, the boss, and then like the next wave comes, and then you know the boss mm -hmm. exits to the um, to the left if he escapes. So it's like just one ongoing thing. Um, but yeah, yeah. It, it turned out pretty well. I was pretty pleased. Well, thank you so much for coming on Thanks today, for Andrew. And uh, it's it's always a pleasure to talk to you. All and right. uh, looking forward to any upcoming games that you uh, might be working on. Thanks. Yeah, I'll take it easy. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Excellent. Yeah, such a fun game. Oh my god. How much fun can you pack into 4K? Well, yeah. a lot. A whole lot. And um, just like his last game, uh, doggone it, there's a lot of tactics. Because he uh, really understands putting in a lot of things going on in the game at once. Like you've got the top part of the screen and the bottom part of the screen and there's power-ups and so much going on so so we're only like a full half hour out <laughs> almost let's try and reduce it down <laughs> um so we have uh, stradivox next mm -hmm. with uh carlos centeno centeno um so let's get that out if you can kind of cue him up queued okay. up excellent mm -hmm. Let's not put that on. That noise. <laughs> no. That's a bit loud. <laughs> I'll wait till he's connected. Yay! Hello, Carlos. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. All good. We can hear you. Oh, if you can uh, uh, mute the yeah. uh, the stream. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm uh, fine. Thank you very much. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you so much for coming on the stream. Uh huh. I'm ready. So, <laughs> our, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the the packaging, the box, and uh, the artist that you worked with to create the box? Okay. Um, well, like uh, Silvio said, please forgive my English. Uh, I live in Puerto Rico, and I'm not used to speaking English, but I will do my best to speak with you today, okay? Oh, thank you so much for coming on and speaking with us. Okay. As you already know, uh, the art was created by uh, Corey Kramer. He was uh, contacted by Albert Jaruso, and between the three of us, we were sharing ideas and suggestions about the art to be used on the box, the instruction manual, and the game label. As I had already searched the internet for information on the original, original arcade game, I sent Corey the images I had found on the arcade game, like the marquee. Then Corey used the original images and colors of the arcade game marquee to create the art, which turned out to be almost identical to the arcade game art. I was in charge of making the text for the instructions manual with some screenshots and Albert was in charge of printing the box, the manual and the labels of the game. Now you can see the final result, so congratulations to Corey and Albert for doing an excellent job. You have the box right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it looks very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so Stratovox seems to be a, a fairly uncommon arcade game, ranking uh, only 16 out of 100 for how common it is <laughs> in the International Arcade Museum website. I know it only threw the 8-bit uh, computer port called Bandits, which I played on the Commodore 64. Um, what is your history with the arcade game? Well, the first time I saw Stratovox was at an arcade in which I worked when I was 12 years old. I remember that it was the first video game that somehow was talking, and I was very impressed with that. I played it 
almost every day, and that is why it became one of the arcade games that I remember the most. As you said, it is an unusual arcade game because it was not in every arcade that I visited. I didn't know that Bandit was a version of Stratobox for 8-bit computers, and even that I had a Commodore 64, I never had a chance to play it on that console. I never played Stratobox again until I found it on Main. It was one of the first arcade games that I considered to port for the Atari 2600, but I thought that it could be done because it has too many sprites on the screen at the same time. But after programming the end, I realized that it could be done, and that is why it is my second game for the Atari 2600. Yeah, you you do pick very rare games, so it's uh, it's it's very good that somebody like you is 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 getting is porting over these games that maybe not many people have seen. Um, so you were able to include uh, voices from the arcade game via the Atari Vox into uh, your port of the game. Was this something that you were insistent on having before releasing the game on cartridge? Yeah. The voice were something important that the game should have. Many people remember the game because it was the first arcade game that talked. I believe that it, it, it is an important part of the game and make, makes it more interesting. In addition, the, voice, the voices make the game feel much more like the original arcade game. It was very important for me to add the voices because Ready. I learned to program the Atari box using the Atari basic language and that was something that LB. I thought could not be done. It was not LB. an easy task with both with Albert help. I not only managed to include the, the voices or many voices in the game, but I also managed to save the highest scores using the Atari box. Yeah, it, it's always nice when people try to include the voices from the arcade, so it, it brings the arcade experience into the onto the 2600. So, um, porting over games from the arcade to the 2600 can sometimes require uh, compromises because it's not uh, you know not as capable a machine as the arcades. Doesn't have the high resolution graphics, the sounds. Um, were there any things that you had to change? Uh, from the arcade game to make it work on the uh, on the Atari 2600. Yes, there were some things that I could not include in the in the game. For example, the stars. I also could not include or get the astronauts to be in a green planet like in the arcade game. As you know, the Atari 2600 has very limited resources, and that does not allow the game to look exactly like the arcade game. However, for me, the most yes, important yes, thing yes, yes, is to keep yes, the feeling yes, and the action yes, of the game. Yes. Trying to preserve the most important thing is the best way, is, is what I always wanted to, to do. That's why I wanted to include the voices, because speech was something very rare in Atari 2600 games. <clears throat> yeah, and that's that's really important. Like you mentioned, gameplay is number one. If if the gameplay isn't good and the feel of the game isn't good, it doesn't matter how good the graphics are, how good the sound uh -huh. is, anything else. Gameplay is number one and everything else is extra. I mean, if the graphics are good and the sound is good, that's a great, awesome bonus, but it has to play really, really well. So, um, congratulations 
on your second game mm -hmm. coming out through Atari Age, the first one being The End and yeah. now Stratavox. Thank you. Um, are there any upcoming games that you, you want to talk about that you're working on? Any other super rare arcade games that nobody's heard of uh, that, that need to be shown to the public? Or anything else you'd like to add about, uh, about Stratavox? Yes, yeah. okay. This time I, I choose another game. Okay, uh, let me explain. In March of this year, <laughs> I started uh, my first game for the Atari 2600, the third one, if I can, uh, it was uh, from Art 777. That's right, great game, yeah. awesome game as well. Thank you. Okay, um, I always wanted to make a main game, similar to Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know how it was possible to make several enemies chase someone in a main. Mm. I checked some main games that have not been ported to the Atari 2600, such as Make Tracks. But because I am trying to learn something new, I decided to make one game that was already ported to the Atari 2600. But for many people, it was not a good port of the original arcade game. Therefore, I choose to make the game Lock and Chain. Now that I have 22. 32k available and, I'm, and I am using PPC Plus. Yes, I was yes, able to make yes, a very similar yes, port yes, of this ready. game for the Atari 2600. The game is 90% uh, complete. Oh wow. It is a, in a playable state with music and sound. I am working now with the door slot and the title screen. I still don't know what name to use for game that order. game, so maybe I will call it Lucky Chase or Lock and Ready. Chase Deluxe or maybe Lock and Chase Arcade. We will see. Mm. In fact, uh, yesterday, while I was watching the show, I was able to see the game Rock and Band for the mm -hmm. Atari 5200. Uh, and it turned, to, turned out to be a great job, uh, so I. Congratulations to Mr. Ryan Whitner for doing an excellent port of this game to that to the Atari 5200. It, it is a port of the Lock and Chase. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great uh, a great conversion. So that's that's excellent. It's a really fun game for the 2600, and and has as he said, he felt it was not not a, not up to standards either. So that's why he created the 5200 version. So that's really exciting to hear that you're you're working on an, an updated version that's yeah. that's uh, corrects all the the problems that you found on the original one. Yes, I think yes. that the the, yes. Yes. the original one lacks some things. It's, it's too simple. It's, it's a mm. good game, but it lacks things that should be there on the game. That's why I choose that one. That those things will be there in, in this version. Okay, and um, finally, I want to thank Albert for all the help he gave me to add the voices in Stratovox and to create the cartridge complete in both with box and instruction manual and show it at PRGE 2022. I also want to thank Corey Kramer for creating the art, the instructions, manual, and the game label for Stratovox. To Steve Ramirez for playtesting the game, I'm pretty sure that is something that he really likes to do and enjoy. <laughs> he and, does, yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and to you, James and Tanya, for inviting me to this great event and for playing Stratovox at the show. Thank you very much, and I hope we can meet in person at the next PRG E2023. Oh yeah, so we'd love to meet you in person. We'll definitely be there. We love PRGE and yeah. it would be awesome to meet you in person. And thank you so much for making these games that mm -hmm. may not have ever seen the light of day mm -hmm. on the 2600 because they're so obscure. And, and thank you for making them accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. also, thank you so much for coming on, on the stream and uh, okay, we now, will see you online. Now, if you have any questions, I can answer any yes or no questions. <laughs> if you have any or maybe in the, in the chat. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. And uh, S. Ramirez says it was a pleasure to test your game, Carlos. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, you. and it was very fun to play your game on so on our good. show as well. All yeah. three of your games. Yes. Okay. And uh, and I I really enjoyed the mechanics of Tomahawk Seven 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 with uh, the water levels and it's just these games I've never seen before and never played before. So it's it's really great that you're you're bringing them to the twenty six hundred. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the stream, and uh, congratulations yet again for this, your second game being physically released, Stratovox, and I hope people enjoy playing it. Okay, thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the forum. See you online. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, that was great to have Carlos on. Yes. And uh, so I, I sent him the questions ahead of time to make him more comfortable with answering them. So yeah. it was really great to be able to have him uh, yes. on the chat. Yes. Oh, we're almost caught up. Mm-hmm. Very, very close. Okay, let's pop this out and get ready for the next one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love when people uh, port games that are, are really, really unknown. So they're almost like brand new games for everyone. <laughs> that one's really challenging. I play Bandits it's, a lot. It's it's quite different because it's not a direct port. No. Uh, and it came out for the Atari and uh, Apple and C64. I played on the C64. It's it's quite different. It's almost its own game. Yeah, and it's it's challenging. It's a challenging game. Like, it, oh uh, my god, you, you gotta have, you're, time up the shots, and they're moving, and there's different distances. I think it's and, because there's so much happening on the screen. So yeah. as some ships come in, and then they go after the people on the side, yeah. more <laughs> ships come in, and you're trying to dodge the bullets, but like track where the person when yeah. they grab a person where they you are. You have to get that person because that's the number one dodge, goal. You have to <laughs> dodge the bullets. You have um, to keep shooting the guys that are coming out. You have yeah, to protect your people. There's so much happening at the same time. Even throughout my games, I was figuring it out. Okay, you know, you you can't chase them. No, because you, no. you move more or less the speed. You are, yeah. Of them, so you have to kind of time them as they come yeah. across you. Yeah, don't chase um, them. That's a losing game. But you kind of get one shot. It. Yeah really to get the ship with the dude on it so you really yes, get, you one shot get one to, to shot to get it yeah um uh, because once you're chasing them you won't catch up to them if so you're too late it's, it's quite over. a challenging game it's a really good game though it's really fun it's really yeah. fun it's, yeah it's a good twist on a space shooter because it's it's very tactical it's not just fire 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 no. fire oh i'll try it again after they loop over the screen no, no. you cannot you only get one your... shot as they come back across the screen so yeah and it's it's yeah is an interesting twist on lives because you don't really have lives you have people that you're protecting and when they're in a group of three or two they move more slowly but if it's just yeah. one they fly across <laughs> those are the ones you can't keep up with you, yeah. you get one shot to shoot them anyway excellent game yeah really 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 really, really fun <laughs> so the next uh next game we're going to be taking a look at is grizzards excellent. which is quite an intense game it's an rpg yeah. for the 2600 and there's a lot going on so let me get this out mm-hmm. if you want to queue up uh, robert pocock yes get uh, him on the line let's see is this on it is we can hear and see you oh. fantastic oh. I you were frozen, but I, I am antici- I'm anticipating you. Oh, your video is gone. So maybe turn that off and back on again. We can still hear you, though. Let's see. There, there we go. Ah, excellent. Go. <laughs> oh, so you have the same shirt as I do. <laughs> so I love that shirt. <laughs> did you buy that at PRGE? We did. Yeah. The- yes. Yeah. I think I we I got mine in 2019 from a little that, while ago, from, but the same booth. I same think. booth that has like really shiny shirts and tan. Was that the same? No, it was a different no. booth that you got the asteroids at. But yeah. they have a lot of great shirts. That, that well, I love that they have the foil shirts, which is really there's nice. There's a Vectrex one that really tempts me each time I go to their booth, and I'm like, <laughs> it's almost what I want out of a Vectrex shirt, but not quite. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, it was great talking to you at PRGE. 
Um, and it's great talking to you again about your brand new game, Grizzards. Wow, it's quite an undertaking, so I hope we can cover everything uh, that, that was involved in making this game in the short time we have, but uh, let's give it a try. And so let's talk about uh, the box and the packaging and the instruction manual. So can you talk a little bit about that and the uh, artist that contributed to making that? Well, actually, uh, my partner Zephyr did most of the artwork. Oh, it was... Um just out of camera <laughs> <laughs> he's hiding eh? and i don't know if you Whoop. are in camera yet there you are hi <laughs> oh just in the corner hey. yeah yeah just this, this is the uh, small sliver the first, of his first head we're seeing the box I, i'm actually mm -hmm. curious to see how the flaps came out oh is there something special in the flaps let's open it up without damaging it <laughs> oh i creased Always it a challenge did you? Oh yep. no! So, there's some oh, creatures wow. from the game. Very nice. Let's try and get the Very shine cool. off it. There okay. We go. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of terrified they'd end up getting their feet cut off or something interesting. <laughs> no, you, you gave enough uh, gave enough space around the edges. Yeah. You uh, conf conf conform to the uh, specifications very well. <laughs> yeah. So we. Um designed the three starter grizzards, Zeph actually came up with the idea Oh, um, that each of them represents a different uh, mammal because lizards are just not cute. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Aquac, the um, part platypus, uh, Derek's Aww. part cat, and Dirtex Aww. part ferret. <laughs> oh, very Aww. nice. <laughs> That's very, very cute. I was, I was wondering about that, where the, where the designs came from. Yeah. Oh, this 7800. Why do you vex me so? I'll, I'll do that oh, in a second. Is. Yeah, here. <laughs> Don't force it, but just no. kind of wiggle it yeah. a bit. So, uh, oh, what's this that came in this? Maybe you can talk about this uh, this card. Uh, is that the uh, map card, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, Afraid your Twitch is like 30 seconds behind you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, the, yeah, it's a map it's card map showing all the different to, uh, locations. Give you some sense of, of the orientation of where things are in the game. And then on the reverse is a quick reference to the combat controls, because we found uh, that was the part that people were the most uh, confused with. If you just sat down in front uh, of the game cold, okay. trying to figure out the uh, selecting a move, selecting a monster. And uh, importantly, it's to show your stats, because if you're using a, a one-button controller, you actually have to reach over to the console. Uh, Very careful uh, putting that back down. the second button on the uh, Genesis controllers yeah. or the uh, the Joy 2B pluses, like so. Ah, yes, okay. Yeah, you have various uh, styles of input and gameplay, because there's a lot going on in this game. And... Uh, I remembered like reading, looking at your PDFs and the many PDFs that you have for the different versions online and uh, looking at this manual, I'm surprised it's as small as it is because it's quite an extensive uh, instruction manual because there, it is an RPG and there's a lot going on, right? Yeah, we, we squeezed it down to 20 pages. I, I think the map card was actually partly uh, an outgrowth of just not having room to fit the map into the, uh, the oh. manual anymore. Oh, I was wondering what that sound was. It's like, oh my God, raid! Uh, raid's coming. Thank you, Doctor Moo Cows, for bringing twelve people over. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. Um, so uh, let's take a look at some of the other pages in the manual. Let's skip ahead to uh, the monsters. There's quite a variety of monsters. How many monsters are in the game? Uh, if you're counting boss varieties separately from regular varieties, there's about eighty. Wow. Uh, oh some of those goodness. are obviously like. You can see the first two are palette shifted oh. versions of the same outlines. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. But they each have their own stats and uh, attack, defense scores, hit points, etc. cetera. Uh, each of them has their own move set that they choose from. Yeah, so it's quite, quite a, a huge game. <laughs> <laughs> so let's. Uh, did you get it in? Or do you want me no, to? No, okay. Um, but pass me the manual as well, because. Uh, you want to look up some just stuff? In case, just in case. <laughs> yeah, some, r yeah, some yeah, reference yeah. I know there. It's, it's a, more, a more involved game than some of the other ones, so. Yeah, I had trouble with one of the other cartridges getting it in. I don't Probably know why. Probably my 7800. Some are made yeah. tighter 
than others. You don't want to force it though. That's no. The yeah. Is it no, the I, flap I'm, uh, that's not opening? Currently down an Uno cart because my 7800 broke off one of the little legs. I've got to get, get a fork? shell for that. A fork? <laughs> get a fork, please. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, because I have to. I think I have to manually uh, open this uh, cartridge slot. I don't think it's lining up with my 7800. Try squeezing the cart on the label and back of cart. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Al's giving some. Uh, yeah. There's a fork and an olive uh, pick. If either oh, of those yeah. are going to Olive pick's probably easier. Olive pick. Because I just need one. Very bougie here. <laughs> olive pick, yeah. There we go. Okay. Let's see if I can not. There we go! Hooray! Fantastic! I did it! That's, uh, if you know how those cartridges work, it's, uh, very helpful. <laughs> but I, I will fully blame it on my 7800, uh, because that's probably... Because I've had trouble, uh, certain cartridges plugging in, because I know some of them are tight, and some are misaligned, and... Okay, so let's get it started up. And we've got an Atari Vox plugged in, so we're fully ready for it. There we go. Because it will go. talk your ear off. <laughs> yes, it will. Lots of talking in this game. So, um, actually, let's, um, so it's a real, it's quite extremely expansive. So can you give us a rundown of stats for the game in terms of scope so people can understand how big it is? Oh my. And how, how long a person would expect a full game to last? Well, in testing it, our testers have been able to finish it in about six hours straight through. Um, but that okay. is with a, a cheat book that we produced <laughs> uh, in the style of, you know, the complete guide to whatever game that you can pick up at GameStop. Uh, all the maps, uh, handed them all the maps, all the stats for all the monsters, all the grizzards that you can uh, train and so forth. Um, Raw stats, I am terrible with remembering numbers here, but there's around 200 screens in the game. Wow. Uh, there's 30 distinct grizzards that you can have as your companion. It's, it's not exactly a party because you can only play with one at a time. You have to switch them out at the depot. Uh, there's about 30 non-player characters, depending on how you... Uh, a couple of them occur <laughs> in multiple places as you go through the game. Um, okay. Four music tracks. There's the title track, and then there's three different areas in the game, each with their own uh, theme music. And uh, there's sort of three to four difficulty settings, because the the game honors the difficulty switch for easy or hard mode, but you can also start a second quest type game, and everything is in hard mode by default, so you can pump it even harder with the difficulty switch on the second. <laughs> oh, that's great. Second. So it has a lot of replayability value if, if you uh, finish the easy level and then you can go to the harder version of it. Now I'm guessing you got a, uh, a pre-rolled game that someone started <laughs> a couple of slots on it for you. <laughs> It sh it sure looks like it. All looks of them have been started. <laughs> I'm not sure how that's possible. Fantastic! You, you may have gotten the PRG floor down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sure looks like it. There's some the, uh, a lot of random names board here. With this. Oh, let me go full screen on you for a second. There we go. The Batari Fred Quimby came up with with the uh, EEPROM chip on the board here that's marked with the X on mine. Uh, so it's actually got the save to cartridge tech. If you, um, let's see if I can remember, we intentionally made it hard to delete a save game, but uh, both <laughs> difficulty switches have to be in the hard position, the A position. Okay. And then you... Uh, yeah. Got it. Go to the uh, select screen, like uh, press a button from here. Yep. Yeah. And then, uh, let's see, pull down on the joystick, hold the button, and hold while on. you're holding the button, press forward. No, hold it. Right press one. There we go. <laughs> All right. Yay. Now we can start from the beginning. Start the beginning. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, who knows what some random PRG person <laughs> did. <laughs> right. So um, the cartridges have a save ability on them. Um, plus, 
what does the does the Atari Vox slash uh, save key also save? So no, the As, uh, the final game doesn't require the save key. It just okay. will use the Atari Vox for voice only when it's available, but it's it's totally optional. Uh, but if you do have the Atari Vox, you get complete narration of all of the uh, dialogue screens, whether it's reading a sign post or, or conversing with a character. Uh, there's actually a couple of narrator speaking events uh, where you can find an item that's been lost oh. or something, and, and there's just a, a, a sort of narration that pops up. Oh, very nice. And there's a question from uh, the chat. Will the book, I'm guessing the cheat book, oh. be made available? We collect strategy guides and have a guide for 2600 would be a real treat. Is that going to be something that may be released in the future after it's out for a bit? I'm thinking I'm going to finish it up and, and uh, polish it off a little, fix some inaccuracies that we found, with, among other things, some uh, maze walls that were missing. Um, and then probably drop it on the forum behind a spoiler mm -hmm. tag. Because <laughs> um, yeah. uh, some people, you know, I know in some games, uh, some expansive games, maybe some more modern games, you get stuck at a point and you're like, well, I can't figure it out and this is where the game ends and I don't mind... You know, if, if it can be called cheating, looking that up so I can continue on with the game because I want to see the rest of the game. So that's that's great that you might be releasing that. Yeah, but I, I've just flashed up one of the levels of one of the uh, mazes. On, so somebody oh, with freeze frame there you go. can uh, get a head start <laughs> on the graph paper mis uh, mission there. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty small in the corner, but uh, maybe if somebody can zoom in, if you want to show it again, I can show it full screen. Oh, oh goodness. Okay, let's see. Let me just hide the name. <laughs> oh, there you go. That should be big enough. Yep. Excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> That'll be helpful. There's your first uh, first uh, cheat. You killed him? Got a slime? Kill that slime. Um, so can you talk a, a bit about some of the influences and motivations behind uh, creating Grizzards? Because this seems to uh, be similar to other uh, uh, genres and empires that might exist out there. Yeah, it's uh, totally not inspired by anything in particular. But um, originally, actually, 15 years ago, I started working with some people in the Atari Age forums on what was going to be my first 2600 game that was going to be a, a party-based, turn-based RPG. Um, mm. Among other things, my house burned down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's that's a setback. Oh my god. And, and the, the project so got on the floor with all of the excitement of real life and uh, came back around, you know, 12, 13 years later in uh, 2021, uh, or 2020, I guess, uh, yep. and started piecing it back together from scratch. And the idea of the, uh, the party based system just wasn't going to fit in memory. As a matter of fact, the uh, the flickering on the map is a side effect of running out of memory to handle more intelligent flickering. The uh, yeah. game uses all 128 bytes of memory, most of them for multiple purposes, depending on what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite expansive. There's a lot going on, so I can understand that. But the uh, yeah, the idea of, of doing a sort of monster hunting collecting game came to mind but uh the main twist compared to most of the monster hunting games is that you learn your moves from the monsters but you don't actually collect the same monsters that you're defeating so mm, uh, right if you are combating a monster that knows a move that your character can learn they are right. very likely to pick it up from observing what the monster does and they can also sometimes just work it out on their own as they gain experience <laughs> points. Uh, mm. So they don't always learn it. And do they? Do they? Ha does the other monster have to demonstrate the move before you can learn yeah. it? Yeah, you'll you'll notice okay. from time to time uh, a monster will do a move, and immediately it'll pop up with you learned that exact move. Right. Uh, so don't kill them too quick. <laughs> you might want to learn some of their moves before you defeat them. But you also, as you gain experience points by murdering things, you can uh, <laughs> gain 
uh, not just levels, but also uh, moves that way as well. Mm. So can you talk a little bit about the beta testing and beta testers that you had for the game? Because I can, I can imagine a game as big as this uh, would need a one need a lot of beta testers and two would take a long time for them to get through the game was there any like um, things you ship them like here you start at this level please beta test the ha last half of the uh, game or I, I wish we had done more of that um, yeah uh, toward the end here we now there are like four different cheats in the game uh, well three cheats and a, a secret bonus thing but uh, toward the end, when we actually had the hardware in place, we were prying the uh, EEPROMs off of the <laughs> board, putting it in my chip programmer, editing the save files, and putting them back on the cartridge to, uh, to fast forward to different scenarios so we could test everything. Um, the last 48 hours was like 36 hours straight through, basically, of uh, working on... Uh, real overnighter <laughs> getting oh I bet getting it all ironed out and then uh, we shipped it to Al said it's all good to go start burning chips I woke up in the morning and started writing a forum post and went oh no it's not <laughs> oh. yeah well that's good that you caught it it does suck that you have to tell him stop stop the presses but uh, it's better that you catch it now than later um, I, I'm really intrigued by the the saving on cart. I think I I talked about that in some either to you or to somebody else that it it's not the first time that it's been done on Atari Twenty Six Hundred. I can't remember the other game it was done on. Star Castle does a high score table on the cart. Right. So, uh, can you talk a little bit about the technology? Uh, um, behind that and how it works and what it what it is. Yeah, I mean uh, The high level is Batari came up with a lovely thing. That's the CPLD chip Understands how to relay the commands from the code to the EEPROM, which is the same Family of chip as what's found in the save key or the Atari box uh, Okay, a little more technically it's it's mapping some high memory addresses that we uh, pretend to access in the same way that the bank switching works. Okay. Only they instead change the uh, voltage levels on some wires that are going to the legs of this chip. So we're directly communicating uh, bit by bit with the uh, the EEPROM, the erasable, uh, electronically erasable, programmable read-only memory okay that makes sense and and al mentions in the chat that the other two games had were oh. star castle and sorry yes i'm going to pronounce it incorrectly chitiri there we go yeah. thank you for pronouncing it first i always get it wrong and say it like cheddar or something cheddary <laughs> chitiri there we go <laughs> um let's see um so did you, with this saving on the cartridge, did you think about um, either keying it in at first with uh, on-screen things or using the save key? And, and why did you end up uh, going possibly a more expensive route? Or um, I, I can understand why you were like, okay, not everybody has a save key, but the, the on-screen uh, characters or letters and numbers. Maybe uh, talk about the decision yeah, for that. The, uh, the game, when I say we use all of the memory more than once, uh, it actually like pages to the EEPROM as you travel through the game world. So oh, uh, wow. I, I don't know if you've got the uh, music playing, but each time you hear the music change, you're actually switching like which ROM bank of maps you're in. There's the sort of underworld, there's the mainland, and there's the Port Lion Island. And okay. uh, each of them has their own bank of like flags indicating what missions you've completed, what uh, stage of different quests you're in, as well as what monsters. The, some of the monsters, you know, have permadeath. And once you kill them, they are gone forever. Some of them respawn. Um, right. So that memory is actually getting swapped out, as well as each of the 30 Grizzards has their own little mini file with their own stats. Wow. Okay. Um, 
Unlike uh, so, certain other franchises, we don't let you name all of your characters and so forth. So it actually fits <laughs> eight players into a 2K byte uh, memory chip. Right. But, so I, I, I imagine that uh, the option of keying all that information on the screen would just be longer than it would take to play the actual game itself. <laughs> yeah, and and trying to put in some kind of anti-cheat so you didn't just take like a low-level grizzard and apply it to a... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, high level. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like some CRC, you'd have to build in some CRC check as well to make sure that they're not uh, fudging the numbers when they're keying in things and they can't just put in anything and they've got some random game playing. Yeah, and, and this, this game definitely uh, uses up all available space on the 64K cartridge. The dialogue takes up an enormous amount of space. Um, Right. Uh, not necessarily the combat dialogue, but in addition, there's all of the the signposts, the NPCs that you encounter, the other events. Um, I think that's like four four K RAM banks of just a ROM banks of just uh, straight up dialogue. So if if you if you looked at like the dump of the the code, you could see just pages and pages of people talking over and over. Lightly compressed dialogue. Yep. <laughs> lightly compressed yeah it's it's stored in six bits per character instead of eight okay so it's yeah yeah there, there isn't uh there isn't room to decompress more than one line at a time um yeah a funny thing is the uh there's gaps between the lines of text it's not just for readability that's actually how long it takes the atari to decode the next line of text that it's oh. going to display on the 12 character wide <laughs> text displays <laughs> Like it's translating the six six bits into something into you can, graphic, you can uh, uh -oh, font characters wow. for the individual lettering. <laughs> oh wow! Um, so, given how big this game is, when did when did you start uh, developing this? And 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 I asked this earlier in the stream to somebody else. How many hours would you estimate you spent on this game? Because I can imagine this is this is huge. This is really yeah. Big. I, I started this notebook June eleventh, twenty twenty one. The okay, not too bad. The release build went out October 6th at 9 p.m. on uh, in 2022, and uh, then we had a patch at noon the next day <laughs> to, before <laughs> wow. the cartridges were fabricated. Um, wow. But yeah, this and was probably like three or four nights a week, a couple hours, a lot of it done while watching TV or... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a lot of other media was ingested while you were coding. I'm guessing. Yeah, there's there's nothing but pages of uh, documenting, trying to get the timings right on all these mm. the combat screens, and particularly on all three platforms. That they're uh, if somebody wants a CCAM version, I'm sure you'll have to email Al specially because I doubt it's going up in the store. But <laughs> like, if you want yeah, to see it in eight color glory, it does exist. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah, that's right. And and can you talk a little bit about your the oh, tons of different versions that you're posting on on your website? There's like save key, no save key, PAL, yeah, uh, NTSC, CCAM, and the choice to make multiple manuals for each one, which I, I never understood why it couldn't be compacted into one I, manual. I eventually, the uh, the Atari Age manual, of course, is compacted. Um, Originally, it had some switching on things like the names of colors for the different TV standards being swapped out in the different manuals. Uh, we used oh, the okay. black and white switch for pause, which on a CCAM Atari is not actually wired up to be fenced. So we oh. have to use the second difficulty switch for the pause button instead. Okay. Um, and yeah, the, consolidating it down was mostly a matter of just not mentioning specific colors. <laughs> in the manual okay. but there are a couple of yeah. things in there that are like if you're on pal it'll be purple and if you i, I think um yep the, and, uh, and you posted multiple versions of like the game you, you were posting builds nightly almost yeah um, well, I've, I've every my, day every day my build system set up to push directly to the website so we were doing oh, okay. sometimes multiple times a day whenever i did a build that seemed to be okay um yeah there's a no save version which 
doesn't allow you to switch grizzards, doesn't allow you to travel outside the first area, and it's okay. it's designed to fit in a 32k because that's the limit on the uh, original harmony card, not the encore. Um, right. Yeah. So that's the minimalist version that works. That's right. Almost <laughs> on the uh, handheld flashback as well. I have a oh, wow. slight variant that's a little better, but there's still lots of bugs on the, the emulation on the flashback handhelds. Um, yeah. I never figured out why the score doesn't appear. <laughs> but uh, there's the no save version. There's the 32K demo version, which does require the save key. And then there's the public build that's the 64K with save key and Atari Vox and whatnot. And now there's well, I, the Atari Age official build with the uh, save to cart. Right. So I, I do commend you on trying to uh, uh, up, make it available for every type of configuration and every type of zone. And Al just posted in the in the chat that he will add the CCAM version to the store, oh which is well. There we go. I I can't remember the last time I saw an option in the in the Atari Age store for a CCAM. So congratulations yeah. on the ability to service those. Uh, uh, handful of people no. probably you can count on one hand yeah most of the time the pal version will sort of play on ccam and you just get some psychedelic color scheme <laughs> uh, um, okay but because we're using Are the black 50 and white or switch 60 to pause, hertz? the game would just start up paused and never go anywhere <laughs> oh, okay and do you, uh, do, I'm, I'm not as educated on the ccam is it uh 50 or 60 hertz it's um, also 50 um 50 okay the the intention was that you just use pal software and it rather oh, than reading okay. the color codes it reads the brightness codes and translates them into colors so you get some really crazy psychedelic <laughs> garbage display out of, <laughs> out of some games um uh apologies to whoever uh <laughs> lives in CCAM, but <laughs> lives in France in the 1980s, I guess. Is yeah. that where CCAM was? Uh, yeah, yeah, French. I believe Eastern Europe and Africa to some degree. Yeah, uh, very, very few places. Yeah, and I don't know if they ever adopted like the 60 hertz because I know PAL 60 became something a little bit later, like a decade later. Yeah, in, I, in PAL in PAL land. This PAL version is a regular 50 hertz PAL, so there's oh okay. there's timing adjustment to some things uh, honestly most of the game isn't exactly uh, fast twitch so there's a place yeah. where we kind of just skirted the edge of, of correct timing and it's it's kind of close enough um yeah but like it's, it's a, the music. It's a oh yeah the music would be would be a concern but yeah it's not a it's not a twitch game it's an rpg it's a turn-based fighting so it's not that big of a concern about uh, 50 to 60 hertz timing is not going to make uh, make or break anything so uh thank you so much uh for coming on any uh i know this this game is quite expansive but i i dare to ask any other games that you're uh, you've started on, I know you just finished this one, I'm sure it took up 100% of your time almost, yeah. but do you have any uh, ideas for other games that were percolating in your brain? Yeah, we've just, uh, I just posted to the forums the preliminary thread for uh, Fantasia, which is an action RPG, so real-time combat, uh, for the oh, 7800. Okay. And uh, oh. I think I mentioned it to you a while back that we'll uh, we'll definitely leak you a copy as soon as it's <laughs> not just crashing at startup. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, but, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> it does exist. Oh, barely. Yes. Oh, yes. I did see that in the forum. <laughs> that the the title screen looks gorgeous. Thank you, cat. This cat is signaling to us that it is almost four o'clock, and he's very angry about not being fed <laughs> so um anything else you'd like to add that we didn't cover um talking about grizzards before we let you go no i uh, hope uh, folks find their way through it and uh if somebody's stumped uh, contact me on the forums and i'll give you some of the cheat codes <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah if you ever get stuck somewhere you know who to turn to <laughs> So thank you so much for coming on, and it was great talking Thanks with you at PRGE me. as well. Thanks for doing all of this. <laughs> oh, very welcome. Thank. Well, I couldn't do it without all the amazing developers making these incredible games. 
So uh, thank you as well. And of course, thank you to Zephyr, who is just off screen, <laughs> who poked, poked his head in for like two seconds. But uh, thank you both for making this amazing game. Thanks. Cheers. And uh, talk to you soon. Right. Cheers. So you definitely need to feed these cats. This I guy I is out of control. I something, so I don't know if okay. you have... Um... Uh, something to chat about for a second. Sure. Right <laughs> oh, do a song and dance. Do a song and dance. Put on your tap shoes. So it's really great that people are, there's such a variety. If you looked at all the games that we've been showing uh, over these past two days, um, you know, there's RPGs like this, there's space shooters, there's puzzle games. So there's uh, no lack of variety for people who like certain genres and um, and especially games that you can just pick up and play and uh, have fun with like um, Raptor that uh, you can just play immediately or if you want to sink your teeth into something that is like a long-term game like six hours or more that he said it is uh, really uh, great you have this variety, so there's no lack of types of games that you can play. And um, the next person we're going to be talking to is one of the most prolific uh, developers in the community. And uh, very extremely talented as well. Uh, VHZC, and we've got two games from VHZC uh, that we're going to be taking a look at today. Uh, one, the first one up is Uzi the Goose Slime Quest for the 2600, and after that, Slide Boy in Maze Land for the 7800, and I always look forward to playing VHZC's games. Um, they're also the type of game where you can just pick up and play it, and um, he very rarely, when he posts them in the Atari Age forums, he really just post them and there's like maybe one line of text to say hey here's my game enjoy there's no instruction so it's another uh type of game where uh you can just pick up and play it and enjoy it immediately and if you've played any of his games you can understand the next game because they kind of go together there's a lot of crossover and similarity between them and he brings portions of one game into the next so it's fun like pointing to the screen and go oh there's that thing there's the lightning bolt there's the skulls there's uh you know there's that character i like from the other game um so i always look forward to vh said uh posting new games and uh he's very prolific i i, I lose count really of how many games that he makes like i i usually read out oh okay we're gonna play this game by so and so Here's the four other games they've made, but VHZC, his list is so long, I just make some highlights. I just say, oh, here's a highlight. Oh, B.R. Pocock added just in the chat here. Apologies to, uh, but shout outs to Al, Fred, uh, Danny, and Philip, uh, who all contributed enormously. So let's uh, arrange some pillows here and uh, get to the next game. Let me fish out uh, Ooze of the Goo Slime Quest and uh, try and stall. Are you almost done? Almost ready? Sorry? Almost ready? Oh, a couple seconds here. I've been trying to You're stall. Crying. Can you not? <laughs> yeah, trying to stall, but it's uh, challenging. <laughs> So let's get, uh, Al says, I look forward to playing Grizzards full through multiple times once I have some time to do so. So sometime next year, 2023. After the, uh, after this release, shipping out this release, uh, getting the store up and going, preparing for the spring releases. Yeah, 2024, that's, that's more reasonable. There you go. <laughs> Actually, I always wonder how much time Al has to actually play all these games because uh, I can't imagine. I'm lucky where I can um, experience the games while playing them on the show. I have very little time to play any games outside of it. And I've actually stopped buying games, modern games, because I've just literally run out of time. They're just stacking up behind me 
if you uh, can probably see in the webcam when I switch over to it, a whole bunch of Switch games and PS4 games that I haven't even opened. <laughs> Al says he, he's an idiot uh, as well and he buys modern games he doesn't play. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an addiction that we can't kick the habit. But uh, I usually buy like the limited run games because I know they're not going to be available anywhere else. So I'm like, oh, I better buy this because it's going to be gone and it's the only chance I have to uh, buy this game or uh, I'll have to get it in digital form. And I really don't like digital games too much. I really like having the hardware. Almost ready? Yeah. I've run out of things to say. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to start staring at the camera oh, blankly. I like I have more to say either. So. No, but we can get to the next game. All right. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. The cats were being extremely uh, pushy about that. Yeah, they're food. naughty. Very naughty Very cats. Very pushy. So if you can get uh, uh, Vladimir yes. Zuniga on the chat, we will uh, chat with him. And we are a little bit behind time. But we're not too bad, so hopefully he's still around. Full screen. Remove the mouse. Oh, oh my god, that's so loud when I switch over. Apologies. Hello, Vladimir! Hello, oh, he's, Vladimir! He's, Oh, there I am. So we know the ping time <laughs> for Twitch. Oh, there I am. So we know the ping time. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Vladimir. Hi. How are you doing today? Hi, Phil. How are you? Oh, very, very good. Excellent. Thank you for coming on the coming on the stream. It's it's great to have you on the stream, and to talk about your two brand new physical releases. One for the twenty six hundred. One for the seventy eight hundred. Very exciting. Oh, make sure you um, mute uh, yeah, Twitch yeah. so you don't hear no, it come yeah. come back. I, I, uh, <laughs> No, I, yes. Uh, well, happy to be here. Uh, I apologize in advance, in advance for my awful English, you know, <laughs> but I will try my best to make it. Uh, oh, nope, no problem. Well, thank you just for coming on. It's it's always great to talk to you about your uh, really really fun games. Like I said, in the in the little break that we had. I, I always look forward to you releasing a new game because of uh, all the characters you bring from your other games over to the new ones and uh, the reuse of all your uh, uh, and reinvigoration of, of your your obstacles that you bring over, especially the lightning bolts. I love those especially. <laughs> yeah, I, I like uh, to have something like a mark a brand of of, of of the house for, for say it, uh, like uh, big house like on the nose square by like example the, where you can find the same element in totally different games i like that uh, yeah like, it's... Cameras, like oh <laughs> i know that guy from the other game <laughs> Yeah, it's so much fun. It's like, oh, the skulls, they're bouncing. There's those skulls again. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a Where's Waldo. You get to pick out all the all the things you recognize yeah. from other games. So yeah. so we have Uzi the Goo first up. Um, so if you could talk a little bit about um, uh, the look and the packaging. I know you do all your, you do everything for your games, start to finish. You do the programming, the graphics, the sound. Uh, the the box art, the manuals, everything, and you put out so many games uh, every year. It's it's actually unbelievable and astounding that you are able to do such high output and such quality work. Like uh, when you when you release the games, like even in early release candidates or beta testing your games they are rock solid i almost never find i'm sure other people find them but i almost never find any mistakes it never crashes never does anything wrong so uh, i commend you for the high quality of of workmanship that you put into your games 
uh, thanks for your kind words, but I have sometimes bad and bad, awful bad that other people have uh, found, so I am not so, so good. But uh, I try to, to uh, post a game where it's in a state where you can pick and play it. I don't like right. to, to sell for that one an expression that, that you use here, Venderumo. Um, I like to present a product that you can test it in in the moment. And I think have to do, uh, as I say in, in another conversation we have uh, previously, uh, it has to do that with the fact that I start with a sketch uh, with a concept of the game before a uh, uh, um, a project of programming. I draw uh, the character, I draw the, the, the idea, and then I convert that in code. Because I, I have I say, uh, uh, previously, I am a designer, I am not a programmer by profession. I am this, when actually I work a programmer, but I am not a programmer by formation. I am a designer, a graphic designer. So that is my <laughs> approach. I, right. I start with the graphic concept, and then I turn it in, in, in a game. Yeah, your graphic design and your, your artwork is, is always beautiful, and I've, I've bought a number of your t-shirts because they're, they're gorgeous as well. If, if people didn't know, uh, Vladimir has a, an online store as well with uh, an amazing a number of t-shirts that are really nice looking, so definitely go check out his store because I, I bought a number of his t-shirts. So here's, here's the manual. It's always fun to look at your manuals. They're very... They're very fun, and they have a lot of cute little characters in them. And uh, here's some some looks, and and you can uh, outlines what's in the game, and it tells you what happens when you when you collect it. And uh, it's always kind of fun uh, discovering your games because, as I said in the break, when you post your games online, you give no information <laughs> on how to play the game, no information on anything. So I, I love that sense of discovery. Um, with your games, but they're always made at a level where it's not frustrating, it's not hard, it's not easy either uh, to, to get to the end and complete the games. It's always fun. It's, it's, you always want to try and get to the end and finish it, and it's always very doable, um, but you, uh, it, it, it is a lot of fun playing those games. So let's, let's actually fire up the game and uh, check it out. A VHZC game. A oh, very nice animation. Um, so, you're like I said, you're a very prolific programmer with quite a number of games you finish every year. And you have two games coming out in this batch. Can you talk a little bit about your process of uh, programming, the tools you use to program, and how you find the time to work on so many projects? Uh, well, as I said, my, my process has to do with, I start with a graphic concept. I always start with a graphic concept uh, and and some little bit of the mechanic that I want to implement. And, and the tools that I use are, uh, for the coding itself, I use uh, uh, any editor, no, no, not like uh, great ID or similar, um, and the language I compile that I use is Batavi Basic in, in, in the case of uh, 2600, and yeah. uh, for the design of the of the sprite, for the design of the play field, I use the gym that is a uh, Graphical tools similar to Photoshop, but open source. Huh? Where yeah, I yeah, draw yeah, yeah. With, with the mouse uh, in a normal way, but then the PNGs I pass them through uh, some script that I wrote to convert the PNG directly to code. Yeah? Okay. That yep. saves a lot of time. Yeah? Uh, right. 
Τώρα, τι βασικά είναι η My Process. Αν θυμίσαι, εγώ έχω ένα... Ναι, για να έχω μια χαρμονία, οπότε όλα τα τεστίνα ήταν φτιάξεις για τους βοηθούς του φόρου. Οπότε, θα πω σε ευχαριστώ για τους. Yeah, it's a great community that, that right. I mean, it's it's not that much of a stretch to, to uh, play some enjoy, enjoyable games. It's so much fun to, to beta test these games and, and play through them. So I, I imagine you have a lot of eager volunteers to help you uh, try out your games. Mm. So, um, so you've done platformers, you've done shooters, you've done endless runners, and uh, other styles of games, but I believe this is the first type of uh, physical release of a game of this uh, type with a maze perspective uh, in it. Um, can you talk a little bit about the different styles of games that you create? Are you a fan of each of these? of these types of gameplay? Do, like, do, you, do you like endless runners? Do you like um, the, the space shooters? Or do you just like trying different styles to challenge yourself? It's a mix of both. For example, I am not a fan of runner, but I made I want to, to test the specific uh, uh, a kernel that allowed to have multicolored sprite. That is why I made that game. But uh, in, okay. in the case of, of this game, this game is uh, I I wanted to make a sort of homage of genres that I like in, in video games. It's a homage to adventure, but it right. has a batch of, of metroidvanias. I, I, I it it had uh, it had uh, a little of Kirby in some part in changing forms. Uh, right. So it's a uh, it's, it's that an homage of the genres that I work well with. Yeah, yeah. Um, if people have followed along with your vast number of games, they may see reoccurring characters uh, as they play your games. Can you t talk a little bit th about the world of VHZC games and your reoccurring themes and traps and characters? Um, uh, do you bring them over to from one game to another because you just you just love that character or that type of trap, like the knives coming down or the 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 skulls or um, the lightning bolts? Uh, like, talk a little bit about. Why you bring over characters from one game to another? Uh, in part, I uh, regularize the uh, asset or regularize uh, mechanic because uh, when it works, it's a waste to not do it again. But, <laughs> but uh, also, in uh, at least in my mind, there is a sort of lore that a uh, group. All my games, all my games are in the same universe. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> but simply That's I right. didn't uh, write, wrote, or express that in another form. But is now is kind of this. All my games are in the same universe. Right, and I, cer I certainly enjoy it. I I'm sure other people enjoy, you know, seeing your games and going, oh, that one's from that one. Oh, there, there is a good example right there is the Pong. And I know you try and include a, a Pong room or a Pong style uh, uh, portion of your game. So uh, that's always a fun thing to look at. There's the Pong, <laughs> uh, the, the bat and the ball moving around. So that's, it's really great. And the variety of enemies and dangers in your game mm -hmm. keep you on your toes. And that's that's something I, I love about your games as well. Um, uh, before we move on to the, your next game, uh, is there anything else you want to say about uh, about this game? Um, well, this game, in this game, I, I am using 
some things that I have used also in Game of the Bear and similar, that it's a, a, it's a, a, a approach that is making my game a little more accessible, I, I think, that I am not yes. using lives in the formal way, but I am using yes. time or energy or etc. <laughs> uh, in that way, yeah. uh, every player uh, doesn't matter if suck at it, uh, it have guaranteed some time of play. He, yes. he will play my game for a while, no, no, <laughs> maybe, maybe it, it can finish it, but uh, it, will, it will not be expelled automatically uh, for, for lost three life or, or in a short period of time. Also, uh, having time as life, but also as a score, uh, bring more replayability. Mm. You have something to aim for. Uh, to have a better time to uh, um, to find a better road. Uh, also, it's easily clear how you have the score. <laughs> you have the score yes. going faster through the mass, through the maze. Yeah. Yep. That that's a very very good point. That um, some games you start up and you're just like dead, 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 and it's game over. And and I think you've mentioned it before in another interview where you cater your games a little bit towards maybe kids so that they can have fun with your games. And I can see it in this game. It has very cute characters. Uh, and you said you, you base it on time. So they're guaranteed to play for qu quite a while. They can, you can pick up and play this game and explore. And you don't feel like, oh, I'm in danger all the time. Um, it's game over so quick. Um, and also, I see a lot of people posting in the forum, playing your games, oh, I got X time uh, left in the game, and it's, uh, it's quite variable. So it, it, it uh, works for speedrunners who want to really push the limits of how, how well they can play your game. So it's a very smart way of constructing, uh, say, a score, where the score also works as your lives. Oh, Tanya's just about to finish level one. Yay! Yay. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad she's playing it. Mazes are not my, uh, my uh, forte. <laughs> so Yay. it's great that she's playing it. So that's, uh, that's great. Let's move on to your next game, which is Slide Boy in Mazeland. This is super, super fun game. I love playing Slide Boy in Mazeland. It is like, like every screen is a new challenge. Let's see, let's get this out and uh, unpackage it. Let me get it out of the plastic. Uh, Al Nefer in the chat says, my, my kids have a lot of fun with his games. And uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, would ring true for a lot of people because you have such cute characters, especially the bear. Um, the, in the game of the bear, that's the cutest character ever. So let's take a look at the box of Slide Boy in Maze Land. Really great design there. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the 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 artwork for uh, Slide Boy in Maze Land. It's great representation of the game. Um. I think I will. I was for the easy road in, in this. It's, it's a maze. <laughs> so <laughs> that is the thing. There, there was no, no more than this. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know Are you probably... what more can they say? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's it's very appropriate um, to the style of game and it's beautiful colors. The purple and blue looks really, really nice. Let's take a look at the cartridge and I'm, I'm sure you're, I, I saw you looking at the screen and like, this is probably the first time you've seen the box as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's really fun to unpackage these things. So let's take a look at the cartridge. Yeah, really nice looking. Very, very nice. Yeah, there we go. I like the teeth on the... <laughs> yeah, the spaced out teeth. That's yeah. really cute. It's very cute. Yeah, your designs are 
are so cute every time. So here's the manual, game instructions. I always look forward to looking at your manuals uh, because they're really nicely laid out. There's a lot of white space uh, with your manuals. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really fun look like it's a, um, like it's a comic book almost. It's, it's more like a, a storybook than anything else. And you, and you get introduced to the characters and you talk about them and, and uh, you can see, like you give illustrations for every action as well. It's like, oh, he's falling into the pit and then there's a button to activate switches. Slide Boy has to collide with them. In, in general, my games have so simple mechanics that I have to fill the manual with <laughs> well, <laughs> so I, I take the chairs and that uh, illustration and decorate to to fill the space because <laughs> there is no more complexity of my game than in, in this case it, this game is very very easy to to learn you you move the thing with the joystick and <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right avoid the bad things get to the end yeah. <laughs> the even button is is used use it here so ready uh, there we go excellent beautiful uh title screen slide boy maze land normal easy survivor very straightforward here's your options um so you're you're known for creating original games and not ports um but do you have uh, did you have any influences um, from other games for the sliding mechanic of this game? Or is it something that you just uh, came up with? Um, did you see this sliding mechanic in any other type of game? Um, I think... I probably have uh, uh, input, but not consciously, <laughs> because I have played a lot of games, but I am not um, directly influenced by uh, a game in particular. Uh, but I think right. in this point of game story, every game has influence, so I, I <laughs> yeah. call it say, it's hard, this is totally hard. original, but it's impossible, I think. Um, but I am not uh, direct influence but no, no game in particular yeah I couldn't come up with another game that I've seen this style of gameplay have you ever seen like sliding around there's super meat boy which was a like but, a but you jump in that one do you? like this one you can't stop Very until true. you hit a wall and I mm -hmm. can't I can't think of a game oh a star okay yeah a star has a very similar mechanic I forgot about that one um, so yes, there there are other ones, but um, but if you weren't thinking about that one, it, it wasn't a direct influence. That's for sure. Um, so you've made games for the 2600, 7800, and 8-bit systems. Can you talk a little bit about why you're drawn to these particular systems, like the Atari line of game of consoles uh, and and computer line of, of as well? And have you developed other games for other platforms, uh, like other consoles, and maybe expanding out uh, beyond to other Atari platforms, like the Lynx or Jaguar or you know even C64 or <coughs> any other systems? <coughs> Well, I, I chose uh, Atari because that was the system we, I grown with, but uh, I have um, uh, code every game for a, a lot of, of other platforms, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, NES, um, but I think I keep in, in, in Atari particularly because it's the system that I like most, but uh, also because it's where I have I have the chance to to publish my games. Yeah? I right. have distribu distributor uh, for NES or for my other uh, game, but uh, because not all systems have uh, its own all. All is, is the reason because I, I, <laughs> I am here. So yes, uh, but I I like to my bit test my hand with uh, programming something for Java or Linux, but I have no experience with the system not even playing, so I have not uh, the the fond memories of them. 
uh, see if I try something in those in those system will it be more uh, experimental <laughs> experience that uh, <laughs> uh, uh, fun uh, experience. Yeah, yeah. It, it. I think a lot of people are drawn to making 2600 and 7800 and and the other games that are distributed through Atari Age because of Atari Age, because of Al, because of the community, the support, the knowledge base that is out there. And you just get sucked in because of, you know, how awesome everybody is and how sharing they are and the feedback you get uh, from the community. So I can completely understand why you come back time and time again to the 2600 and 7800 systems. There's a, there's a huge support base and of course the high quality of the releases that are put out by Al, not only in the development side, but uh, in the boxes. Like they're top notch. You can put this head to head with any game that has come out at any time throughout the history of home gaming. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so you created Slide Boy and Maze Land for the 2600 first, mm -hmm. and then for the 7800 afterwards. Can you talk a little bit about the, the differences between the two versions and your motivation for releasing the version for the 7800 on cartridge? And uh, as a follow-up, are you thinking about releasing the 2600 version in physical form at some point, or are you happy with the 7800? Uh well, I, I have a, a lot of games in, in bench for, say, uh, uh, waiting for the, the slot for to be released. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the 2600 version is uh, in, in that list. Uh, and I, I probably I will try to release it in the next uh, uh, release. Um, the difference... Uh, the 2600 version is more simple because it, it, the system is simpler. Uh, yeah. But the thing are a lot or, or use a lot less space in, in that system. So the 2600 version have more screen than this version. Oh. Because uh, I don't use I didn't use. Um, uh, Multiband cartridge for this version. This version is a forty-eight the card. Right. Yeah. But also this version had a more complex uh, mechanic and some part, and have a boss, a final boss at the. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, it's kind of the, the same. Uh, it's like boy in my code, but I think I should have. Change a, a little the name uh, when I release. I changed that in in Osi the Wu. In Osi the Wu, I have a, a twenty six hundred version and and an American forty system. And in this in this case, Osi the Wu is the twenty six hundred version, and the other version is called Guiding. <laughs> Osi the mm. Wu Guiding. That mean it's the same game, but not the same game. It's a new adventure. Right. Literally, that uh, means in Japanese. A new adventure, right. another adventure. That's that's very cool. That it's the same game, but you get a different experience <laughs> playing the seventy eight hundred and the twenty six hundred. Like you said, this one has a boss, but the twenty six hundred version has more levels. So it's beneficial to get both of them if you have both yeah. of the systems. That's that's really cool. Yeah, I think uh, it's it's. Uh, I think that Atari didn't make and should uh, had made it with a lot of games uh, because. Uh, in Atari, you can have centipede for this system, centipede for this, for this another system, and it's the same game. They, they <laughs> sold the same game over and over. It might be right. a, a better uh, uh, approach will be to make different version with different history or different mechanics for different system. Yeah. So uh, you got a lot of support in the in the for in the uh, chat here that uh, Cyrano is. Uh, oh, where's the comment here? If you ever wanted to go over to uh, the uh, the Jaguar uh, 
Cyrano says, would love to help you if you wanted to try JAG Studio. So just like I was saying, there's a lot of support from the community. Somebody's ready to help you out with making your first Jaguar game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, eh, I know you have a ton of upcoming games that uh, you want to release. Like you said, you you are the back, you have the backlog of games and it's waiting for the slots because you don't want to release like five games from VHZC all at once because you don't want to flood the market too much. But uh, <laughs> yeah. so we're looking looking forward to uh, many of your games as they get released because they're all so much fun. I know we love playing them on the show whenever they're ready and uh, and then trying to finish them too. Yes. And yes. they're they're very doable. Like they're very finishable. Yeah. It takes a couple times, takes yeah. maybe a couple hours to get through them, but they are doable yeah. and it, we have a lot of fun yeah. uh, getting through them. Yeah. Um, so anything else you'd like to add about this game or anything else or I know you do everything start to finish, so uh, there's no people to thank for graphics or anything but uh, anybody that you'd like to thank or anything else you'd like to add before we let you go uh, well i i want to say thank uh, people of, of different platform of different uh, of different uh, website facebook group that uh, i have helped me and i have uh, collaborated with in different projects um, uh, say uh, thank uh, to all, all evidently uh, to to you yeah. to you also, uh, but also to my uh, Scott Dayton from the Twenty Six Hundred Hombre Group in Facebook. With him, uh, I collaborated with. Uh, uh, he made a hack of the Twenty Six Hundred version of this game. Um, yes, I saw that. I, I, yeah, I saw the yeah, hack of it. I was uh, like, "Hey, I know that game." <laughs> <laughs> he will, uh, that will be released in uh, in Florida, uh, free play Florida, next okay. uh, weekend. Uh, also, uh, the people of uh, Atari Age Forum, Atari Age uh, Facebook group, um, <clears throat> and also I have. I want to say thank the uh, people of Atari War Italia group. Uh, mm. oh, I, I I will make will make this correctly. <clears throat> Anche voglio salutare il gruppo Atari War Italia. Eh, Filippo, che sia stato quien mi ha invitato a quello gruppo, e eh, anche a Silvio Silvio Moño, con chi ho collaborato en la eh, en el design de la escatola de manuales para el suo bellísimo Yoko eh, Ruby Q que tú has presentado <risa> eh, tiempo a. y también quiero saludar al grupo Atari World de Chile un saludo para los cabros y eso well, eh, that's, that is, is all. <laughs> well thank you so much and a great shout out to the Italian group there yes um, I recognize some of the words in there <laughs> um, so thank you once again for coming on the stream and making your awesome games and I look forward to all your upcoming games that you're going to make um, so uh, I will see you in the forums yeah uh, so thank you and thank uh, have you. a good day no, thank bye 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 Oh, that's great. And uh, yes, yes, everybody uh, thanking Al, definitely, uh, for sure. He makes everything happen. Yep. Um, so now we're going to switch systems. Mm. We're going to switch over to that's the, very exciting. the Jaguar. Mm -hmm. We're going to up the bits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a little bit drink, of a drink here. Mm -hmm. mm. For the developers, Night Guy Quest for something still being developed. Oh, that's a good question, because um, I know he started on that. I don't know uh, how far he's got, because uh, I haven't seen anything uh, talked about that for a little while. Roar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, package this up and switch over, some, uh, switch over to the system. Next system. I love, I love the turquoise, purple, and pink packaging of Slyboy, too. Oh, it's great. I, I, uh, it's beautiful. I like that aesthetic a lot. Yeah. yeah. The colors that people are using on these boxes are just, they just pop. They're like, so graphic. Like, and if you all lined them all up, it'd be have like kind a... kind of been uh, more unique oh, boxes. Grizzards doesn't work with the... Oh, uh, the green There's screen. too much green in yeah. Grizzards. 
<laughs> Looks kind of cool, though. It does. Let's try That's and get really this. That's really funny. It's kind of it's see-through. It's going see-through, yeah. Ooh. Uh, yeah, that Fun. is kind of funny. <laughs> it, it's it's kind of yellowy green. Yeah. yeah. But Put everything uh, has such a graphic um, appeal and look to them. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the first game up for the Jaguar is, uh, let's see, Gods uh, by uh, Lawrence Astavely, mm -hmm. also known as Cyrano J, who's in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get that Gods. And I'll switch over my uh, switcher to uh, Jaguar. To the SCART input. There, we can see something on the screen. Excellent. Good stuff. Oh, not this controller. Nope, you're done with that nope. controller. Here's the six six button oh, look at Jaguar. So oh, I didn't get the one with the hat. So hopefully. The hat. Yeah, I kind of like the oh. hat one. Oh, the the. Uh, well, we'll see the, how it goes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it'll be okay. Okay, let's uh, get this box on the screen. Everybody can see the packaging. These beautiful Jaguar games. Okay. One second. There we are. Move that over a bit. Uh, the cat's very, probably very moved it. Nice. Yeah, beautiful. Angle that down just a little bit. Okay, so this is Gods by Lawrence Stavely. Um, he sent in, mm -hmm. uh, his interview, uh, via text. I'm just going to read out the top here. First of all, I would like to apologize, this is from him, uh, for not being on video call or recording anything. Myself and family have all contracted COVID this week. And Sorry. I don't think chatting yeah. about the new games while struggling to look awake and sneezing and coughing yeah. into the camera would be pleasant for viewers yes. or myself. Sorry to hear that, Lawrence. I yeah. Yeah. Meryl, what's on the mend? Yeah. Yeah. Meryl, Doug, Doug, Thank you, Andrew Davey, for oh. subscribing. Nope. Uh, oh, it was Atari given. Atari 800 XL rules. Oh, gifted. my goodness. So to generous Andrew today. Davey. Very, very generous. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so he said, so with that, I've put together some responses here. So let's just okay. take a look at the packaging mm -hmm. of gods for the Jaguar. Let's open the, Let's take a look at the box first. Lawrence, hopefully everyone Beautiful. there is feeling good. And uh, we went through that ourselves a couple months ago. So um, mm -hmm. it's not a fun time. Um, if you could read out sure. um, the part for packaging for gods there while I open it up. Okay, so... Um, well, there's a video. Oh, oh. sorry, no. Our... Yeah. Um, actually, we could do that. Did I download that? Mm, That's okay. I think I did. But I can I'm not still. Sure. I can still. Uh... Actually, could you? Oh, it's a direct link. Yeah, if you could look up um, Jaguar Gar God's artwork. Sure on uh, YouTube there, and we'll yeah. just pipe it in through that. Sure. Shall I close this? This is Yeah, it's done. Unneeded right now. Dan says, finally, Jaguar. Yeah, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Nostalgic says, thank you so much for putting the show together. So many good games and talented developers being showcased here. Yeah, just the sheer amount of talent that uh, we're going through in these two days is, is astounding. Absolutely amazing. Come on, focus on the box. You can do it. Oh. I think it's the reflection that's messing with it a bit. Yeah, it's a reflection. It's thinking that it's something more distant than it is. Just mute it. If it's not already muted, then just go full screen. Is this the correct one? It looks like it. Looks like it. Yep. That's Great the one. Name. Yep. Name. Full screen. Yep. Yep. That's the dude. Hey, I'll put hey, hey, this back hey. on. It's going to be slightly cut off, I think. Uh, Is it? It's fine. Okay. It's fine. All right. So you can play it right now. It's five minutes. Move the mouse, please. I think it'll probably go away. Uh, I can hear it, so if you can mute it, please. You can hear it? Can you mute it? Where? On there? I'll mute it. I'll mute, mute it on it. here. Why, why would it? you hear it here? Yeah, I can hear it. I can't now. There's a, a volume button in the bottom left, if you can mute it. 
Oh, you don't want to hear that. Yeah, just oh. mute it. Sorry. Excellent. Uh, can you move the mouse so it doesn't have that thing up? Just put it up to the top there. Thank you. Excellent. So we can see the artwork here uh, that's being made. This is kind of cool, actually. It is cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you could sure. continue reading that out. So the packaging for this game is absolutely stunning. William Thorup once again came through with a knockout design. We wanted this game and Chaos Engine to stand out against other Jaguar games, and he certainly achieved that. William came up with several rough sketches, and it was incredibly difficult to pick the final one, as they were all so good, to the point that the unused ones were incorporated into the manual, which honestly I have yet to see. I only have a PDF. <laughs> but from photos, it looks fantastic. Uh, William has spoken about being apprehensive about taking on the responsibility for the artwork for these games, Gods and Chaos Engine, as they are such well-known and loved games. What he produced is both new and refreshing, but completely honors the games themselves and will look stunning on people's shelves. Look at that. I love... Really nice. Wonderful it? stylized font of Gods there. Yeah. The packaging has, as always, been put together by Albert at Atari Age. Nothing more needs to be said about that to describe the quality and attention to detail that goes into the titles produced by Albert, but I will anyway. Uh, if you want your games to be brought to the, to the public with a no-nonsense, quality-first attitude to the final product, then in my opinion, there is no other option than Atari Age. Albert is a stickler for details, always with the goal of making the end result better. I'm sure I'm not the first person to have said that today, and likely won't be the last. We're all saying it for a reason, and he should take a bow again. So lots of thanks to Albert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he deserves it. Every yeah. single word Look of at it. this. Oh, I love the dark background with the white oh, uh, reflections. font on the manual. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Really nice. The brick background. I love Look at how that. Uh, people are incorporate the game so much, like the feel of the game and parts of the game into the manual. Mm. It just looks so gorgeous. There we go. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there's something bonus. There's a bonus in here. Let's take a look at this. Might be better to go to the, our full screen again for this, actually. The full screen? Yeah, the video's still running, though, but... Yeah. Yeah. We'll just switch over to this for a second. We'll Keep it going. Pause it? Pause it? Uh, pause it, yeah. So, get a nice, nice God's poster Very nice. with it. Beautiful. Excellent artwork. It reflects the, the front of the uh, box. Looks really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll switch back to that. And you can actually just keep that going and we can uh, Yeah, it's um get in the get into the game. Yeah. It's just drawing. It's it's actively drawing. Oh, wow. The main image, which is really cool. Okay. Really, really cool. Let's start up the game and I will continue on. It doesn't usually come through the headphones, does it? No. I mean, it's registering that they're hearing it, so it must be just turned down a bit. Um, do you have the... A little bit. Can manual? I just see the manual really sure. quick? I just want to make sure I've got the <laughs> controls <laughs> correct. Can't stand start jumping in. There we go. That's a little bit louder for you. Machine GEX says Atari Age does set the bar when it comes to quality. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Which actually, I don't need these anymore. Not listening to anything. Hooray! Unplug that. So you don't need your headphones in anymore. No. Nope. Oh, that's true. <laughs> uh, I would put them here in view of cats or hide Just them. Hide them. That's a good idea. The... Okay. All oh, right. Um, so uh, I asked uh, Lawrence, what drew you to gods by uh, the Bitmap Brothers? Um, so I will turn off that now. Laptop. Here. No, it's good. It's good? Yeah. 
So what drew you to God by the Bitmap Brothers to port over to the Jaguar? Uh, so after Xenon 2 and Speedball 2, Gods was the next classic game from them on the list. It's a game more complex than it looks on, a, on face value as it appears to be a simple platform game. But right from the start, you are thrown puzzles that need to be solved. Later on, there are sections where you have to bring certain objects in a sequence to progress. It's fiendishly puzzling and challenging and, like all Bitmap Brothers games, looks amazing while doing that. So we did play this game on the show, if Tanya doesn't uh, get too far into it. Because there are... Uh, we did, I do remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, there are some a bunch of controls that you need to know about. Yeah. Um, so when choosing games to port over, this is my question to Lawrence, when choosing games to port over from the Atari ST for the Jaguar, are there any special limitations or considerations you have to keep in mind? Or are the ports uh, solely based on the games you're interested in? He answered, uh, when I start to do ports from the ST, I initially had some very strict hardware limitations for the games I was doing. No complex interrupts or fancy tricks to generate the screen. Games that loaded everything in one go with no further disk access, etc. This was to keep things relatively simple. As time has progressed, the restraints have all for the most part gone. Mostly the ports are games that I'm interested in or have a connection to from growing up and playing with my father. Lots of memories. Bringing them to a new audience is rewarding. So Cyrano is in the chat. So if you have any uh, questions for Cyrano um, that I don't cover, definitely um, just type it into the chat and uh, he'll be able to answer that for you. Or he'll attempt to answer it for you. He's sick, so you'll have to give him some slack there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, next question. Do you sometimes take into consideration requests from the community for additional features, or do you strive to keep the experience as close to the original game as possible? Uh, sometimes yes. However, I do like to keep things as close to the original as possible. Remember, there's no source code available for these games, so the less changes that have to be made, the less chance of inadvertently breaking something. There are com complex commercial games from back in the day. They have already, one would hope, been through a rigorous testing procedure before release. So no knowingly ship it bugged and zero day patch back then, which thank goodness uh, for that, because really there's no, there's no correcting it. They really had to make sure that uh, games were good before they shipped them. I mean, if you look at like, um, Binaries from games is me just interjecting random stuff. Uh, if you looked at uh, binaries that people have um, ripped from cartridges, you'll sometimes see like version 1 and version 1.1, and they would uh, do fixes for games um, that you would see. Um, but in the like the, the average consumer wouldn't know about these these bug fixes. It would just be like, oh, here's the cartridge in 92, and there's another one in 93, and now it's fixed. Keep interjecting, I didn't write enough to fill a half hour. Yeah, I'm almost almost through talking about this game uh, from your answers. I mean, it's hard to type out so much and much easier to do it uh, when you're talking directly with the person. But that's okay, we're, how far, how good are we with time? Actually, we're right on time, which is good. Might even finish early. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say about God's boxed release or any, or thank anyone else involved? Uh, yes, like nearly all the Bitmap Brothers games, Gods used licensed music, which, due to the licensing having expired many years ago, I was unable to bring to the Jaguar. Uh, the title track has been completely replaced by a new song. Each world of the game has its own music. The Atari ST version was silent in-game, other than uh, sound effects. The new track for Gods was composed by DST, and I would like to thank him for their use. So let me actually read out the credits uh, for this game. Um, so uh, God's Port was, um, the original code is from the Bitmap Brothers and uh, Lawrence Stavely, uh, AKA Cyrano J on the Atari Age forums. Uh, he did the port for the game. Cat, really? Do you want to play the game? 
I know it's a Jaguar game, and it's named after a cat, but you're like right up in Tanya's business. Yeah. You come over here. You come over here on my lap. He's like, no, I don't think so. That's not happening today. I don't know what he's sniffing. Um, uh, DST for the music, like Lawrence uh, said, and William Thorup, uh, known as Bitjag on the Atari Age forums for the packaging. So. so we did play this game. I, I don't know how long we played it for. We played it for quite a while on the show. So if you want to see a more complete playthrough, you can look at that show, but definitely look at like other people playing it on other systems for a, a full playthrough. Trying to pick up the key. Yeah, I remember uh, it was something... It's weird. No, no, it explained it, but then I dropped it immediately. Oh, I see. Uh, you have to switch the... Something weird. <laughs> jaguar, Jaguar, Jaguar! Crouch, B, select an empty box. That's what I'm having trouble with. Oh, okay. Because I see the boxes coming B. up. Oh, you got it. How do I select? Nope, you got it. How oh, do I, I see. select an empty box? Oh, I see. Now it's nothing. What? But then it looks like I dropped it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Crouch? How do you select an empty box? B. And then... Oh, you hit B. Okay. Oh, okay. That's how you do it. Crouch. There we go. Oh, okay. Oh, go. I see. Switch you over to, to you an have empty to, box. You have to swi switch, yeah. Oh, I see. That's what because I, being that's what on, I couldn't quite figure being out. Being on the box, I guess, uses the object. Yeah, at and the I, time. I couldn't quite. Oh, you made it! Good job. Ah, ah, flying monkeys! <laughs> oh, goodness. Other way. Oh, no, he's too. I want that. Too high. Oh, yeah, you do want that. Did that kill me? Yeah, you can't. I don't think you can't fall too far in this game. I don't think you can. You can fall a little bit, but not too far. But you did make that uh, jump at the yeah, end. I have like no health left here. No, got a tiny bit of little potion. His loincloth has only one room for one key. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of uh, pockets, it looks like. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on to the next game. Are we? We've run out of things to say. Okay. <laughs> and we've, we've kind of played through this game on the show and that's all you'd be seeing again is us uh, trying to figure out the game. Oh, it's a great game. It, it, really, it really is. It's is. stunning looking. It's beautiful. Ah! ah! Oh, just in time. Duck, duck. Oh, oh exploded okay, into good time. screaming skulls. <laughs> okay. Really fantastic looking game, though. Yeah, looking yeah. forward to playing it some more on fantastic the show. Fantastic looking game. So glad I have sorry, a working sorry, Jaguar now. Sorry, it's not more time, but we're, we've got... Uh, what's next? Chaos Engine? Chaos Engine. Sweet. And somebody just recently released a um, 8-bit port of sorts in the ABBUC games. Oh. Uh, we haven't played it on the show yet. Okay. Um, so it's, uh, we'll be playing it soon. And it looks pretty good. It's like a scaled-down version of it. This one is uh, much... Uh, yeah. Tracks. That's the name. Thank you for. I was like, what's the name of it? Because it's not Chaos Engine. <laughs> they didn't use that name. There Excellent. You go. Thank you. So, let's get out Chaos Engine and take a look at the artwork. Let's see if he um, recommended a video for this. Uh, he did. So, if oh. you can uh, do a search for this one, Chaos Engine artwork, we can play that in the background. Very cool. Yes, it's a nice little addition. Yeah, I like that a lot. Good call, Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Chaos Engine artwork. That looks about it. Seven minutes? Yep. Very nice. There we go. Okay. Go for it. So let's take a look at the box and you can read out All right. what Lawrence has to say about the box. Okay. Everything I said about gods is true for this title and more. I don't want to repeat what I said earlier, so I'll just focus on the box art design. William initially drew several ideas for the box, which you can see at the start of the video, and I, I can see that coming up already. Yeah. 
um, we decided to go with the guns on the rack idea as this was the most unique and just stood out to us immediately composed of the signature weapons for each character in the game. What he produced is, in my honest opinion, the most striking and unique box art for a Jaguar game to date. I think it looks stunning. Yeah, I can see the rack of guns, which yeah. is beautiful. And then all that kind of brass and black metal mesh in the background gives it almost a steampunky vibe. Yes, it does. That's true. I like true. that a lot. Well, I guess, yeah. Who wears armor that doesn't come or cover any limbs? Oh yeah, every superhero right. ever. <laughs> yeah. And more so for uh, female superheroes. Or, or... They're 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 in all the armor and their heads completely exposed because you have to see their face. That so, too. That's right. Also not helpful. <laughs> yeah, well you got to see the movie star. That's true. <laughs> Pop that in and we'll take a look at the manual here. Yeah, there's the guns. Very very nice. Uh, the Jaguar scratches on the back. Nothing, Love it. Nothing on the back, really. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, beautiful artwork inside. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Just gorgeous. I always love these animations of how people draw images. Oh, yeah. It's fascinating. I'm, it's like you, you actually can learn. I love art. From, from watching it. Yeah, I love art, and I'm just a ter terrible at hand drawing things. Oh, me so too. So I'm just so impressed with people who can... Draw can, from nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not bad at putting things together that already exist. But creating from scratch, just yeah. zero, zero ability to actually draw. I like painting and I like color blending. Yeah. But I'm still not good with a lot of detail work, so. You're working on it, though. I You've am. done some painting. I, yeah. I do. I practice. <laughs> I'm not very good. Especially people work from, like, absolutely nothing. Like, um, or from something in their head. Yeah, something in their like head. Like they they're so practiced that they're like, yeah, I want this, and they they can get the proportions down without looking at a reference. That really impresses me. But I. I'm, and here's another yeah. poster you get with this release. Another beautiful mini poster for the front artwork of the cover of the box art. Beautiful, beautiful. It's great that. These posters are included for like people them. who really yeah. want to see like a close-up, high-resolution resolution version image of, of it. Yeah, 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 it's gorgeous. So let's get into the game. Yes. This one's a little bit more straightforward in uh, playing. Playing. Mm. It's just running around and shooting. Running around. A lot and of shooting. fun. So grab the. Grab the controller and we'll get. Do I need the manual for this one? I should probably I have a quick don't look. Think I don't so. I haven't played this. Have we played this game? We have played it on the stream. Have I played you it? You may have not played it. It's running around oh, and shooting. Oh, no, I do remember this yeah. game. Probably just the name doesn't. Uh, I, we play so many games. Sometimes <laughs> I do have to remind myself. Like literally, of what we a have minimum like six a week. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll or I'll recognize. Brand new every time. I'll recognize the name, or I'll recognize the game, but I can't always put the two together, which is which is always my trouble. I'm gonna crank up the music yes, as yes, per yes, request yes, from yes. Cyrano. So give you time to read the manual. Yeah, no, I just just the controls. That's all. But... Oh, I can't very, see very. I, I do remember playing this. I apologize for it cutting off some of the sides. The sides? Yeah. Oh, there's not. Yeah, I'm not cutting off too much in the image. Yeah, beautiful movie intro. At the beginning. Gorgeous graphics. So don't miss anything yet. Oh. Let it run through. Look Cause, at that. Because, yeah, I usually have multiple different settings for each system because some are wider, some are taller than others. So, this is just generally set. So, it did cut off a bit in the beginning. This was a two player game, too, wasn't it? Uh, does this one allow two players? I think. I think it did. Yes. Yeah, this is a two-player, which I always love. When we can both play at once. Mm -hmm. One of us doesn't have to sit there and twiddle their thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> or wait for their turn. 
Yes, two player co op. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. Wish we could hear it. <laughs> I guess we can crack this up now. Oh, true. Oh, just finished. That's fine. Boo! One player and CPU versus two players. One player right now. Start a new game. Okay, I'll turn down the volume a bit so you can hear me. My answers, not my answers. Lawrence's answers. Two. Oh, it does cut off the sides a bit. Does it? Yeah, a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, so I asked him, what drew you to the uh, title of Chaos Engine to port over to the Jaguar? Chaos Engine is a stone cold classic. If you asked a group of people what their favorite Bitmap Brothers game is, there's a high probability they will say Chaos Engine. It's a large game. There are multiple characters, multiple weapons, power-ups, bonuses, shortcuts, hidden things. It has everything. And there is a multiplayer cooperative. Uh, he says, Gauntlet with guns and puzzles and more. Oh no, Cyrano's in a advert timeout now. You must have been bad in a former life for it to interrupt you with an ad in the middle of uh, your game. Um, along with Gods, this is the second title from Bitmap Brothers being released by, this is my question, being released by Atari Age this round. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with the Bitmap Brothers? Uh, this starts with Xenon 2 Mega Blast, another awesome game, very hard. Uh, Mike Montgomery, the owner of Bitmap Brothers at the time, allowed us to release the game. This was the first licensed release of an ST port that I had done. Mike has always been very supportive of bringing his games to new platforms. And it was, and it's been a privilege, let me just turn it down a little bit. And it's been a privilege and an honor to be able to do this for the Jaguar. Since then, I have continued to have a very good relationship with the company, porting over Speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe, also available from Atari Age, hint, he says, as William has said about being apprehensive, taking on the responsibility for the artwork of these games, I have felt the same about bringing them to the Jaguar. I've poured endless hours into the games and I hope people like what they see. The Bitmap Brothers are now owned by Rebellion, and it is fantastic to be able to continue to bring these games to the Jaguar. And even more fantastic that to once again see the Rebellion logo on new Jaguar games in 2022. As for the future, well, who knows what magical things are still hiding in my pockets. That sounds like a very, very big hint for people who know this genre and realm of games that uh, Lawrence... Uh, um, uh, uh, ports over and makes. So if anybody is really uh, knowledgeable about uh, what, who knows what magical things are still hiding in my pockets, that would be a very good hint. Uh, I'm sure, because it was italicized. <laughs> um, uh, my question, can you talk a little bit about working with Roald Strauss and what led you to add music to the port of Chaos Engine? Rold has provided the musical soundtrack for nearly everything I've released recently. He has a knack for making four-channel mod music sound, well, not like mod music. He runs a website called IndieGameMusic.com, built around helping indie game developers find music for their projects. He has provided music for Gravitic Minds, Stormbringer, Typo, Dr. Typo Collection, Brawn and Brains, uh, which are all in the Atari Age store as well as some freeware games that I have released. And he provides a link to uh, another YouTube um, video that we may want to uh, play. Oh, no, that would be music, so that would be very difficult to, uh, to do. May have to skip that. Yeah, or play it while, uh, is it just music or it's is it just described? It's just music as well, uh, maybe described. Um, well, you can hear the music. Here. You can. He, he, he linked to something called uh, Chaos Engine slash Sunset Rebels, if anybody wants to look that up. Oh, Magic Pockets. Well, there, there was a very obvious hint for people who know. I'll have to uh, check out that, uh, that game. 
after and uh, see what that's about because I'm not familiar with that. Um, he continues on. So as I previously said, the licenses for the original soundtracks are long expired and the music had to be replaced. I asked Roald if he would compose new tracks for Chaos Engine, but he was unavailable at the time and suggested several songs uh, from his back catalog. We settled all uh, on eight tracks, one for each world plus the intro, menu, equipment screen, and final screen. The track that replaced the intro sequence, Sunset Rebels, is one of my favorite tracks from him and perfectly matches the intro. He has also provided the tracks for our upcoming game, Jumping at Shadows, and I look forward to working with him again in the future. I hope more people get to hear his music from the game and check out his site and other works. I'm looking forward to playing uh, Jumping at Shadows on the stream very soon, now that we're kind of over PRG and, and, and we'll be done this today, so we'll be back into the regular swing of things and we can uh, start highlighting some new, new games because there's a mm -hmm. bunch that we've missed in the past little bit. And a bunch of uh, premieres that we're going to be doing as well. Uh, ever considered calling this the Atari Age stream? Atari Age um, releases a lot of games. <laughs> and we're very happy to show them off. Um, they, they pretty much, uh, well, they have the forum and they release tons of games. We do uh, play a lot of uh, games from other distributors as well. Um, especially uh, Brazilian uh, distributors too. It's a big, big scene in, in Brazil. And we do a lot of premieres of Brazil games. Um, last question, is there anything else you'd like to say about the Chaos Engine boxed release uh, or thank anyone involved? Um, it, I would just like to thank Mike Montgomery, uh, Bitmap Brothers, for his support, Rebellion for allowing the Bitmap Brothers titles to continue to be brought to the Jaguar, and Albert, William, and Roald for helping uh, make these games the best they can be on the Jaguar. That's excellent. So you've uh, made it a little bit in the game? A little bit. Yeah. This is a fun game, and I can't wait to continue on playing it. Oh, I'm going to die. Ah. You're almost out of energy. Thank God there's no friendly fire in this game. That oh. would be a nightmare. There you go. One more to go. Oh, he didn't shoot it out. Oh, yeah. He's just standing there. He's like, yeah, you do it. <laughs> he, he shoots enemies, but not necessarily those things. Okay, I saw him I saw him uh, shoot it. Uh, yes, it's on the Jaguar, so technically it's 64 bit. 32 plus 32. <laughs> Okay, perfect timing. We're gonna jump to the Made next. Made it through game. the first level. Yes. 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 Okay. Oh, level two, Mud Rivers. World one, level two. Very, very cool looking game. Yes. Really, oh, really I fun. love shooters like this. Really, really uh, fun. Especially cooperative ones. Yes. So great. So yeah, this, this is definitely uh, an After Dark game that we'll be uh, revisiting once again. Is the glue sixty-four bit? Yep. It is. It's all 64 bit. <laughs> what glue? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's after dark now. Oh. Oh, it is. Yeah. Very yeah. Much. Yeah. Yeah, it's I would say. Dark out there. Yeah. What time is it? Five o'clock almost. Five o'clock. Here. Yeah. yeah, I would say it's dark. Yes. There you go. All if you right. Can. And we are on our last game. Yes. Congratulations, everyone, yes. for making it through. Uh, let's get it out. It is Stormbringer. Let's get this out of the packaging here. I don't know if we recommended a video for this one. Uh, no. So no. we're all good okay. there. Yeah. So let's get this out of the packaging. Said 6.55 in Illinois. <laughs> Everybody's posting Everyone their time. Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can tell what time zone you're in by. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Cyrano, it's 11.25. I'm guessing that is in Australia. <laughs> if that's the morning time. Did he say AM? Yeah. Oh, AM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Australia. Yeah. That's, uh, okay. that's quite Let's a time go to the difference. webcam. So here is, mm. if you want to read that out. Front cover of the box. Gorgeous artwork there. Do you want to read out what he said, please? Sure. 
All right, where are we here? Down at the bottom. This one goes back to an earlier release, Brawn and Brains. Once I saw the box art for this one, I knew the style would be perfect for Stormbringer. Albert asked if Benedict uh, at Cabbage on AA was available, and from there we have this great box art and design. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. One of the challenges for this one is that none of the original artwork could be used. David Jones owns the games, but not the artwork. Another challenge was the manual, or rather, lack of one. <laughs> oh, really? Um, the original, let's generously say, documentation for the game consisted of how to load it and what keys to press. <laughs> oh boy, very scant information. There. Yeah. This was typical for budget games at the time, but even more so for graphical adventure mm -hmm. games where the player was supposed to work things out for themselves. Well, that's fair. I am more than happy with what was produced for this one. It captures the spirit wow. of everything that is a Magic Knight game. There we go. Oh, look at that. Wow. Very nice, nice goblin goblin in the bottom there. Yeah, some screenshots. Oh, that's it. So, like they said, there's not much to work with uh, Work with uh, in terms of making a manual. Yeah. So, this had to be completely invented. <laughs> um, I think it was the ZX Spectrum we were looking this up. Uh, was one of the 8-bit systems yes, it was Yes, ZX Spectrum. Um, the Atari, what was it? ST, this ST. is ported from, yeah. yeah. So, let's switch over and uh, start up the game. Do these games use the number pad overlays? Not that I'm aware uh, of. It didn't include an overlay, so I'm guessing it doesn't uh, no. use the overlay. No. Yeah. Alrighty. Now, oh, nice intro. Love that Jaguar. Yep. Rawr. Now, I didn't know until um, I did a little bit of research into this that this is of the fourth game in a series of games from the 1980s. Yeah. And I actually played the first game yes. in this series on my Commodore 64. Mm -hmm. The name escapes me right now, if anybody wants to type it into the chat. Yeah. It it was a very interesting game. Mm -hmm. um, very much like a lot of the 8-bit game, computer games in that era, for like 8-bit European games. It consisted of a lot of um, different screens, and you would pick up items, take those items, finders keepers, yes. And um, I, as well, I didn't have any instructions for finders keepers, so it took a long time to figure out what I had to do and to bring it to this place and this place. Oh, it's much more visible that it's cutting off on this one. Apologies again. <laughs> I don't know if I can fix that too easily. Well, I might as well actually fix it right now, because I can. Oh, it's going to pause it for a second. Oh, maybe not. Filters, render delay, no. Uh, oh, I know where it is. Crop and pad, there we go. Wrong one, but... There, I found it. So we want the left and right to be bigger. There we go. And then the right. I have to move that over actually now. Just slam it right up against us. Expand the right. Yeah. Oh, now we've hit the edge. Perfect. There, now you can see the whole thing. I can move it over the center of it. There, that makes me feel better. <laughs> Uh, Cyrano says, uh, we also didn't have a walkthrough for this game and David didn't have one either. So our testers had to solve the entire game. The other walkthroughs from the Spectrum didn't match up. Oh my God. Gameplay looks similar to Dizzy Games. 
um, but with enhanced or am I wrong? Yeah, there's a whole kind of line of those types of games that I, I would say they're European type of games where they're screens and then you go to another screen and there's platforms. What are you smiling about there? Oh no, it just oh. it's crediting uh oh, the yeah, Atari who made Age the game. and all cute. the people that contributed to it. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah. Um okay. never played this game because I'm like, what is this? What is this? What is this object to? Yeah, it's kind of an adventure it game. It is, yeah. And really could be a text game. Like going north, south, east, west, picking up something, give something, examine, mm -hmm. except it's all menu based and it's graphical. Music on, music off, load game, save game. Okay, now I know how oh, that cool. works. Um, okay. Uh, what drew you to the title of Stormbringer to port over to the Jaguar? Stormbringer is a unique game. There's nothing else quite like it on the Jaguar, and it is a pretty small group of similar games on other systems. Stormbringer is actually the third game to feature the ma oh sorry, this is the third game he says to feature the Magic Knight character, but the only one to make it the DR Atari ST. I've always enjoyed playing Magic Knight games and still can remember buying the original game Magic Pockets in a local shop. A chemist's. You could buy budget games of all kinds of shop of all kinds in shops in the UK at the time. And these budget games usually came on tape because tapes were um, very cheap to produce. And you also very cheap to buy the players and you could just use your home cassette player to feed into your 8-bit system in Europe. So in North America, discs really took off, but they kept with tapes a lot in Europe. Very, very interesting. Um, the, the, this number one factor for this port for me was nostalgia. It was for the feels. And the graphics are really nice. Like, look at the very cartoonish um, knight character. There's nothing here. So you can't get that rose? It's no. just for no, background. I can do. Throw it at him. <laughs> take him. Take the object. Um, my question, you've stated that this is an officially licensed game from David Jones. Can you talk a bit about working with David Jones to bring this game over to the Jaguar? Uh, his answer was, it took a while to track down David and make contact, and he's been nothing but supportive and encouraging towards bringing one of his games to a new audience. David has some novels being published shortly, so I'd recommend people check those out. Oh, he says, smell something. Did you smell the flower? Uh, I didn't know that was an option there. I oh, I was going to do that. Oh, we should go back to smell the flower. That seems like a natural thing. Like, how many things can you smell in a game? <laughs> Thank you for the suggestion. Um, question, what kind of factors are involved in determining how long any particular game will port over from the Atari ST to the Jaguar? Uh, this one is quite a can of worms question. Technically, I've started some that I suspect would be relatively simple, only to find parts that have been taking a long time to resolve, and then others that I suspect would be a nightmare to have them complete a much quicker than uh, expected. Did you smell it? No, you can't. Uh, you can only smell what you're holding on to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I did try that. I was like, did oh I? Oh my god. That is frightening. <laughs> That like looks very menacing. Get too close. Is that a paintbrush with paint on it? Because I remember playing Finders Keepers and you can only pick up so many objects. A lot of them meant nothing and didn't do anything in the game. So yeah. you're like carrying around this thing that you would think would be useful for the whole game. And you're like, I didn't use it at all. Mm. Uh, and Mother adds very cheap to pirate in terms of the cassettes as well. Maybe you have to drop something to pick up the flower. Did it say that you oh. were? Oh, God. The bear Splashes wolf lashes. Oh. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so you have a disguise that you can put on? I didn't mean on? to actually run into him. Oh. Um, were you full when you tried to pick up the flower? Or no, I dropped say... something. Uh, oh. No, no, no. It, it wouldn't let me. Oh, OK. Smell bear wolf. Mm, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> This would look like a very fun game to do in an after dark and getting suggestions from the crowd. Because whenever we, uh, from the chat, because whenever we play a game like this, where it's like a little bit slower paced and there's multiple paths to do and multiple things and puzzles to solve, it's really fun to 
have the, the, the chat really kind of help us out when we get stuck. Don't get too close. He's got some claws and he's drooling. It's not your fault. No! Uh. <laughs> what was that? It's uh, dropping off. Trying to drop something else. That. It's very sensitive. Oh, uh, okay. Very, very sensitive. Like it doubles, goes over to. I didn't mean to jump! Like, that's what happened last time. It's, <laughs> oh, no. It, no, it's the D pad. Oh, the D pad. It's very sensitive. Like, you hit a direction yeah. you don't mean to. I like the time. aftermarket. Um, um, Even that's sensitive, too, though. It is very sensitive. Yeah, yeah it's. it's very small amount of travel on the D-pads. Yeah, you just have to be very, very... Like, like I'm hitting it once and it's jumping twice. Oh, uh, okay. Examine object. Oh, okay. <laughs> paintbrush. Oh, it gives you a lot of stats. You Wait. can read it. You can read the paintbrush. I guess read means multiple things. Well, it means there's something on it. There is no writing on it. That is so funny. But you can read it. You can doesn't read say it. you can't read it, but you can read it and there's nothing. Um, uh, continuing on about the factors of uh, porting games. In short, there's no real way of knowing until it's attempted. There are two finished games, both currently unreleased, that have taken on and off over three years each of development time. That's development time, he said. Not just three years. However, the techniques created for these titles go into the toolkit of things for other games, so with each, each difficulty overcome, more games become possible. Technical challenges aside, free time is the main factor. I've got a quite a bit going on, and right now jumping at shadows is my main focus. Oh my god, the volume is really high in this game. Sorry, probably can't even hear me. Maybe don't even care <laughs> what I'm saying, but there we go. Oh my goodness, that was loud. Good music, though. Mm. Oh, the flower. Guess you can't interact at all with the flower. Not. Maybe I need something to love. To the pick graphics the in this game, so good. So when he um, mm -hmm. touches you, did it bring up the menu automatically? No, no. You have oh, to bring it okay. up. I have to. Like I can examine him. Oh, okay, character. character. And it says strength is good, happiness pretty is high, happy. magic, food level is fifty percent. Oh, he's got lots of magic. Over 100%. He's hungry. 50%. That's kind of cool, because you can think, oh, this person's not happy. You give them something that might make them happy, right? So take an object. Ooh. Oh, something they have. Oh, did oh, I get it? I think so. Examine. Oh, you did. What is it? Ooh. Magic wand. Wand of command, so you can make Ooh. people do things? Hmm, cool. Um, next question. Is there anything else you'd like to say about uh, the Stor Stormbringer boxed release or thank anyone involved? Um, yes, I would like to thank Andrew Shore. He did the port of the game to the ST. I've spoken with him several times and he's always been supportive and polite. So a huge shout out to Andrew because without an ST port, there would be no Jaguar port. And not just for Stormbringer, but for all the games, I would like to extend thanks to each and every one of the people in my testing group who have played, crashed, played, crashed, and played again the games, so to ensure that we get a stable release at the end. I'd especially like to shout out to Atari Age user Saturn uh, for extensive testing of Stormbringer. Uh, Atari 800 XL Rule says, never knew this type of adventure style game was on the Jag. Very cool. And I think he said this is a very rare type of release for the Jaguar. So this might be the only type of game like this. Because mm. it doesn't seem like a natural fit for the Jaguar. Um, but with the great graphics on here, yeah. it really enhances like the look of the game with all the objects and the scenery. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Saturn is a Stormbringer hero. He completed it. And like you said, he didn't have any instructions. It's totally different than the ZX Spectrum version of it. So you had to start from scratch and figure it out. Uh, the Dizzy games are the closest uh, for this type of games uh, on the Jaguar. Yeah. So that is very cool. Thank you so much, Cyrano J, uh, for all your answers, Lawrence. Um, for all your answers and uh, porting over three games in this batch. It's absolutely amazing uh, the amount of work 
uh, you do for the Jaguar community. He pretty much almost single-handedly <laughs> uh, makes all the games for the Jaguar or, or has a hand in all the games for the Jaguar. So um, thank you so much for, for making these. Uh, no apologies necessary. You didn't plan to get sick. You don't want to be sick. So uh, we'll get you next time on video so you can talk about these amazing games mm. that uh, you've ported over. Oh, that's a scary tree. I love the just random objects. It's like, yeah, there's a banana in this haunted forest. This seems like a game where you would do a lot of writing down, especially after you discover something. Yes. It's like, oh, that person likes this or it's this combination. And I've also discovered in these types of games, like with Finders Keepers, you can actually give something to somebody that may misuse the object and you didn't actually want to give it to them. Um, and that happens in text adventures as well. It's like, oh my god, I just wrecked my whole game by doing this and going to this too early. Examine the chicken. Words to live by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Smell the banana, Hugh Jass says. Is that an option? Oh, smell Oh, there's something. a banana on the... I didn't even see that. Oh, what can smell you smell? Smell the chicken. No noticeable smell. Yeah, you should smell the banana. Yes, you have... To you have to have it in your possession before you can yeah. do something with it. Sounds like it. We well, should wear the. Uh, did I you try wearing the glasses with the oh, what, mustache? The... No, I haven't yet. Does it take it out of your inventory if you wear it? Probably not. Oh, okay, wear and underwear. Because that looks like something to put on. Oh, you can. Oh, you can pick what type of disguise. Is that what it's yes. implying? Oh, oh, you can change your nice. whole appearance. It's not just a, a mask. Oh my god. Oh, my hands are still full. I still need the. So I can wear. I'm wear back to myself. There we right. go. I need to drop something. Oh, I've got a golden egg. Oh, that's pretty cool. Smell that banana. Smell it. Nope, nope. No, you want to pick up the no, banana? No, I don't want. I'm gonna. I'm oh. gonna drop the uh, the chicken. <laughs> I, I think what if I've the got... chicken's important? No, I got the egg from the chicken. Oh, okay. <laughs> smell the paint to get high. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna smell the paint next. Cyrano says, "I uh, I have no idea who peep. Oh, which people would see this game? It's just so out of left field for the system. It is okay. smell the lawn. We're just gonna smell the banana." Oh, I oh I get it. You have to have an empty slot to wear yeah. the disguise. What Did you I... smell the banana? Oh, I haven't smelled the banana yet. Hold on. Have to smell the banana before we go. Oh, I keep pick up. You're messing me up here. I didn't do anything. No, yeah, All I'm did. doing is telling you to smell the banana, smell and you keep doing something. other things. <laughs> A fruity whiff assails your nostrils. Perfect. It actually did something. Banana for scale. At the. I that ran a... out of energy just because I crossed its path. Wow, can you get past it? I guess you can't. Oh, what are you trying to get past? No, the storm cloud just... Oh, me. so there's actual real-time no, dangers. This, yeah, the storm cl cloud is coming for you, so you have to get a, stay ahead of uh, it, I guess. Boing. Okay, we're gonna... we're gonna. I know you want to keep playing this. I do want to keep playing. It's the first time I've played it before. <laughs> yeah, me <laughs> too. I've never seen yeah, this. Yeah, let's have the drink. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Teddy, you want to keep... <laughs> Keeps playing it. What is burger? I'm gonna eat the burger too. Can you? I don't know. Oh, because you have. Do you have stats yourself in terms of hunger and health? You and, do. Okay, so those, the food objects would come into play there. Backseat adventurer. Five hours later, Cyrano says, "Well, it's a sign that you picked the exact right game Ooh, to port." It gave me strength. Oh, what did you eat? What did you the, do? The drink. I had the drink. Oh, well. Good, good suggestion from the chat then. Examine yourself. Strength's at 99. Pretty happy. Now. Food level's 50. Yeah. Strength 99. Your stats are pretty good. Nine hours. Oh, there's a time limit too. Oh my god. Nine hours is a long time. I wonder if it's real world time or if it's like in game time. Turn this into an After Dark episode, James. I want to see more of this. Yes, this is. Tanya will not put this down for sure. I'll, I'll be the note taker. Tanya will play this one. 
I think. I think that's how it's going to work for this game. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, no, <laughs> we can work it both ways. And no, she's going to be not like, that give me the control. I want to do this. Do that. <gasps> the bottle broke. Oh, no. Oh, it's a no. Bottle. Oh, maybe there's liquid that, that came no, out of it. Anyway, we have to stop. Okay. Okay. Unless okay. there's a, an idea for that big bear <laughs> thing you have. That's uh, probably like the next level that you get yeah. to after you cross, cross the bear. Cats are found. Oh. <laughs> Um, oh. So, this was a lot of fun. It was long, but it was a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, today flew by, thankfully. Yes. Um, yeah, it was really a lot of fun checking out all the games. Yes. Um, talking to all the developers. Yes. Learning about the background and the, the work that goes into all these games. All the games are awesome. We'll just use this <laughs> soundtrack as the background as we... Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's nice, nice it music. It is nice music. Um, so I want to thank today uh, Dion Olsthorn, mm. Silvio Magno, John Champo, uh, Andrew Pauly, Carlos Centeno, Bruce Robert Pocock, and uh, half of the head of Zephyr Sauls, uh, Vladimir Zuniga, and uh, Lauren Stavely nice. <laughs> for um, all coming on the show yeah. and talking about their games. They're all such amazing games. Mm -hmm. Such a variety of games too. So That's what fun. I love about it. It's not just like all platformers, all shooters, all puzzle games. Mm -hmm. It's it's such a variety. So there's something for everyone. Yeah. Um, so and of course I want to thank Al at Atari Age for organizing all these games to be put out. Yeah. And putting together all the packaging and distributing them. And getting copies to us, too, so we yes. can show them off. It's yeah. amazing. It's, it's wonderful to be able to put something together like this. Yeah. So that people can see it all at once and get a good overview of the games. Mm -hmm. And really know the people behind the games yeah. that put all the effort into it. And and I'm just having on the the developer, yeah. who's kind of organized the, the team, usually... Um, but there's so many other people behind the de the the developer of the game. Yeah. Um, you know, there's graphics, there's sound, there's the box art, and all the game testers, like they said, and just oodles and oodles of other people that that, that you hear people thank. So, yeah, Al Yankovic, that's that's the guy. He's cool too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, it's been a fun 12 hours. Yes. <laughs> uh, finished Very up 519, fun. so almost exactly 12 yeah, hours. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Between yesterday and today, yeah. 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 That's okay. um, so thank you for playing all these games. How was it for you? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's easy for me. You have, you you have a lot of the work. <laughs> I can ask questions. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, usually I just get to play the games, and then you have, you're organizing all the questions and everything. So Yeah, it's, it's a lot it's, of work. It's pretty easy on me. So I, this is I just... 12 hours of real time, but yeah. behind the scenes? Oh, oh yeah, God. there's a lot more. And writing into it. questions for 24 different games? Oh my god. <laughs> Al, you gotta space it out <laughs> throughout the year. Thank God he said um, he's gonna, he's planning on having on three. Rolling it out a little bit Yeah, more. spring, summer, fall. That's nice. Next yeah. year, which is, which is yeah, nice. Yeah, that'll so. be helpful, I think. Yeah. Um, and let's work on Next it. time we'll do 48. <laughs> yes, double every year. Yeah. That's awesome. It'll be four days then. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna break everyone's wallets with four, 48. <laughs> That's very true. Tanya should be a good beta tester for retro games. Sh oh, yeah. Send her puzzle games. She'll be oh, all over it. Oh, I love me the puzzle games. Yeah, that's that's yeah. her forte. Yeah. Uh, shooters and platformers yeah, for like me. Those. I like adventure uh, games and RPG games too. All of that. Like yes. Grizzards, right up my alley. Yes. Um, yeah, I love exactly. games like that. So yeah. Yeah. Le fun. Less real time games, more strategy type games. Yeah. Where it's it's not Twitch games. It's okay. I can pause, think about this. Yeah, I I, I mean I, I can play those too, but yep. I think that's I gravitate to the puzzle games and like the RPGs. Mm -hmm. I love that genre of mm -hmm. game. Al says RPGs are my favorite genre no as well. No isometric puzzle. No, games. yeah, that's not my favorite. I'll, I'll do those. I'll yeah. play the isometric. I mean, Cubert, it, it, the the port of Cubert was fantastic. Oh yeah. And uh, I always find my it just takes me a while to get used to it. And there's something about the controls that that I well, find. Well, this is I an eight-way joystick, and yes. I know you like four-way joysticks for those type of games. I yeah. do have a four-way. Yeah. So when we do play games like that, I usually try and bring it out for Tanya. Yeah. And just in general, a four-way joystick is better. It just that. takes some time to get your brain into into the into the the diagonals. I find. Yeah. It, yeah. It 
you have to yeah. reconfigure your your, your brain it's very for forty five degrees. But it's like okay, what 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 is the precise diagonal? So yeah, you know. But they're not my favorite. <laughs> so if you missed yesterday's, yeah. uh, um, I did put those two parts where it cut off and I put them together. Oh, so good. that'll be up tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. And today's show will be up on Tuesday. On Tuesday, okay. And if I get all this stuff back downstairs, we should be able to have a Tuesday show. Okay, good. I don't know what... Uh, I don't have any of my notes in front of me <laughs> for what's coming up on the show, but we have a lot of premieres. A lot of new games lot of coming new up games for 2600, 7800, yeah. 8-bit. Um, my 5200 system is going to come back from ITC. Mm. I briefly glanced at his messages. He's got it all working. Oh, good. Um, so my television is going to come back from him as well. Yeah. All upgraded with the newest RGB board. So we'll be able to put 5200 games into the mix. Ryan Whitmer is going to be super happy about oh, good. that. Yeah. Finally be able to play his On backlog of games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Taco Tuesday. Taco yeah. Tuesday. We should make Taco Ooh. Tuesday. We never make like tacos that. here. I, it's because I like I like authentic tacos, and you like like the old North El Paso American pit tacos. tacos yeah. Which I find gross because I think I ate too much. I think we can pit. compromise. I think and, we could compromise and get the soft ones. I love the soft tacos. Well, it's, it's the it's the the stuff that's it's put the in it. It's filling. I know you're picky on the filling, and I just I don't like that kind of filling. <laughs> so we'll find a nice filling. But we'll anyway, we're arguing about tacos. Who knew yeah. Taco Tuesday was so controversial in yeah. our home? But yeah, it, it is. is. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the Amico. Yeah, as soon as it comes out, no. well, I'll be all over the Amico. No, the original in television yeah. is the one we're talking about. I don't think there's much chance of the Amico coming out at this point. Mm. Uh, you never know. Mm. Um. Yeah, I think we're done. I think so too. I think the cats are done. They're asleep, Thank melted God. on the floor. This little black kitten has has made it a habit of sleeping on James's feet. Hi, baby, come here. Yeah. I just want to say say it goodbye to everyone. Yeah, he He's is very sleepy. Right now. He's had a lot of treats. They had their dinner. They're very oh, happy. Got too. fluff on your head. There you go. Good little kitty. Flautas, oh, yeah, flautas for the win. Flautas, oh, I oh, love flautas. Yeah, flautas oh, are good. so good. There was a restaurant nearby that used to make flautas. Yep. And, and now like they veg- don't anymore. A vegetarian version that you could eat, and now yep. they don't make them, unfortunately. Oh my god, they were so good. They're potato flautas. Yeah. And their menus completely changed. Yeah, they well they changed their menu all yeah. the time, but yeah. But yeah, they were. They were fancy, so fancy good. restaurant. Fancy, fancy stuff. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm going to make soup. Yeah. And it's dinner time. That's why we're probably talking about food because I'm really hungry. Yeah. Um, so thank you, everybody, yeah. um, for sticking through this 12-hour marathon of amazing Atari Age Day Fall Edition mm-hmm. uh, games. So they will be out in the store eventually. So if you want a full rundown of exactly when they'll be out, uh, Al gives a kind of a rundown in the first in his interview on the first day mm-hmm. of the steps that need to happen before they're in the store. But keep a watch out. Sign up to the newsletter um, because he said he'll send out a newsletter uh, letting everybody know when they're going to be in the store. Mm-hmm. And I look forward to some After Darks coming up where we oh, uh, yeah. play our... Especially, I really want to play Stormbringer, actually, because <laughs> I, I yeah. haven't... This is the first time I've touched it or seen it whereas yeah. a lot of the other games we've played before we played a little bit yeah so this one i'm looking forward to to giving it a yeah a i see this being uh taking a while this game um i don't know how long it is it Did depends say... how long it is yeah i don't know screens? if these are super long but um i don't know uh but anyway yeah it yeah. looks like a good time so. yeah i'm <laughs> eyeing a bunch of these games for for after dark like right away oh yeah 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 so we're gonna dedicate some after darks coming up soon to some of these games yeah so absolutely. watch out for those in the schedule mm-hmm. um and uh bring bring stormer bring yeah. stormer <laughs> stormbringer so thank you for tuning in and uh probably be back on tuesday um, so okay. uh, we we'll will see, see everybody there. then. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. And for those of you who stuck around for the whole show, we're very, very grateful. Yeah. Um, and Great yeah, we'll, we'll see you out there. Yep. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.